Spot is out back time. Roll the intro. Say goodbye to Rehemis, please. Looking for my friends on a Saturday. Where's Fantastic Lady? Chip and Journey. Beckerman and Robbie Fatstacks. And they're like, don't you watch Matt Spidey's out back? Well, let me show up just like that. Live chat here with you tubers. You better sub, bring a comic cover. Bad down, bitches. <laughs> gobble, gobble, whack, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> My best mate, Lee Simon Sorrow. A Lee meme with some muscle. On here, you better watch your language. Or you won't get any of his Vegemite sandwich. Freaky Sid, I come from Spidey's Outback. Talking comics and some smack. Welcome all to Mass Spidey's Outback. You better sub, bring a comic cover, yeah. Yes, it's Spidey's Outback time. Uh, I was almost running late because... After only slabs this morning, I dozed off and I forgot to set an alarm. <laughs> so I, I literally just made it. I'm like, oh, there's people waiting in the background. I'm like, oh, crap. Uh, all right. Let's get some illustrious guests on. Uh, the man that loves waving with his middle finger, Mr. Papa Wheelie. That's the boy. Hope you're doing well, brother. Uh, and we also have the man that I was just watching the show this morning. Mr. Rob Fatstax of Comics. I don't know what you're complaining about. It's like 10 o'clock in the morning there. <laughs> I know, but I try and get some sleep between only sleep and running the show, and I'm like, oh, crap. and I didn't fall asleep till like midnight last night, so I'm running on about four and a half hours sleep, I reckon, at the most. It sounds like my Fridays. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, finish this stream now, now I see the next one. Yeah, finish this one, now go on to this one. Oh, that's right, i got to do some work in there somewhere too. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they want me to be paying attention too. Oh, these bastards! <laughs> All right, well, we'll do our obligatory say hello to the chat as we always. I mean, do. at work, I try to do the papa, but they don't fucking like that. <laughs> yeah, that, that my boss calls and I go, and they're like, "Oh, nah, no, 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 I don't think so." <laughs> that would go down like a lead balloon. Yeah, Mister Les Crucius at. 1.30 in the morning, my time. So, yeah, long yeah, long time ago. Nice and early. Kev from Entropy. Hope you're doing well, mate. Uh, let's crucious, let's crucious. Mr. John's comments with kids. Uh, you do have a link, John, if you're around and you want to jump on. Eli, hope you're doing well. Hello from the, not Outback, but it could be the Californian Outback, which is what, suburbs, concrete, cars. No, no, we actually have, we have a, what well, the equivalent of an outback here? Hmm. You know, wil wilder you know, uh, the areas of the wilderness where people don't live. Yeah, yeah. And That's we also have forest. a desert too, so we have both. Oh, there you go. So we have a desert outback, and we have a heavily forested wet outback. Hmm. So they have the best of all the outbacks, I suppose. Yeah, whichever yeah. you want. Yeah. So there we go. Then we have outback in my backyard where we have a couple grills, smoker, you know. Hey, nice, lovely canopies. Hello from the outback of the cornfields. There you go. Yeah. Oh, I'll send Carlito the link just in case. Oh. So, so how, many, how many times has Matt been on Only Slabs? Is this his second or third appearance? Second. Second appearance. For some reason, I could have sworn it was... Uh, could have sworn it was three, but... Mm, I'm pretty sure it was just a second. Hmm. I don't know. I, 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 can't, I can't keep track. It's hello for the beaches from Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, it's all as Crucius's fault. He, he's the one that uh, the start of the, you know, hello from New Mexico. So we all just, you know, follow that train of thought. And... Well, maybe. But yeah, say hello. Yeah. 
But the beaches of Kansas, that'd be like the riverbanks, I assume. There is, isn't that like in the middle of the country or something? Yes. City? Yeah. yeah. It's like right in the middle of the country. So there, there might be a creek or something. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they have rivers and whatnot, but I mean, it's, mm. and they probably, and they have lakes, I'm sure, in the state of Kansas, mm. but they just don't have uh, ocean. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, so you guys, oh, yeah, you've heard. I, I literally only saw that last night. I was actually flicking around on YouTube and it came up as a like a news feed thing. Um, oh, for was, sending thoughts and prayers, did somebody, did somebody pull an American? Some guy, uh, was erratically wandering around a shopping center, like uh -huh. a, a, sh a shopping mall sort of thing. And he started stabbing people and throwing, oh. like, like swinging a knife around. He didn't, he didn't have a gun, so he couldn't pull the Americans who did the next best thing. Stabbing yeah, he, he went, this is easier to conceal or to carry oh, wow. around or less noise. And he ended up, um, he so killed killed six people. Hmm. Uh, um, and then a he ended up, yeah, getting killed by the uh, by the police. So, which. Personally, I, I'm not. I don't condone violence in any kind. But yeah, I think that's. I, I think I'd rather him rot in jail. But you know, unless he got his just deserves, I suppose. But you know, well, but you got to protect themselves too. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, what's what's this say? It's Riviera, the Riviera. Yeah, okay. Sorry, Mister Fancy Riviera Pants. He's he's out there in his speedo and nothing else, down by the. Down in the Riviera of Missouri. Mm. And his bow tie. Come on, so I strike a bug's body with the wrestling talk. No, not happening. <laughs> Roscoe! I'll send Roscoe a link just in case he's... Uh, he can jump on. The the ever-disappearing Roscoe. That's right. The, sh the vanishing Roscoe. Yeah, where are we? There we go. Yeah, Mr. Roscoe. Done. He's a modern day shrinky dink. <laughs> uh, you guys are making it really hard for me to come in with a joke this stream. Oh, if you start off with a serious topic, yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I are, but um bl blame Carlito. He brought it up. Uh, uh, and we're all caught up in the chat. Beautiful. It, it, that's only if you want to have a you know humor that's not in bad taste. They are. I mean, if you want to have humor that's in bad taste, I mean, well then, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be the only fat guy left in the community. Pretty inconsiderate of you, if you ask. <laughs> oh, you know, I haven't figured out how to start losing my weight yet, Beckerman. So, but I know you. I'm not. You you like as you like to say I'm nothing. Uh, yeah, I'm not looking forward to it at all. Um, I, I didn't I didn't even enjoy the first one, except for the last like ten minutes when he went absolutely nuts. But yeah, no, I'm not. Uh, I, I'd like <laughs> I Joaquin I Phoenix made a really good, like like he was brilliant in it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I just it was just a, a hard watch for me. Sorry, Rob, what were you going to say? I was going to say, Carlito, I wish I was 250. Mm. Oh, I don't know what I am. So, does my, so does my doctor. Mm. <laughs> I, I, like I, I have lost a lot of weight over, like not for a while, but I did obviously with a lot of the, the personal stuff that went on, you know, within the last sort of 12 months, 18 months or whatever like that due to stress. But um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I am. I don't know what the ratio is from kilograms. Well, to I'll pounds. tell you what. I'm just under 21 stones. No, we don't do stones. You sound like my old my old man. Like still talks in stones, and I'm like, come on, <laughs> talking kilos. Fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Uh, pounds to kilograms. Which I should have gone the other way around. Uh, uh, yeah, killing rams, pounds. There we go. Uh, 
Okay, I'm 194. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> that's like that's like just barely more than my like best weight when I was like in college running miles in military school and <laughs> Okay, I'll shut up there. <laughs> I mean, 190, you got, 190 was what I considered my fighting weight, man. That'd be like <laughs> insane. I'd never, I'll never be that weight again. Except when I'm dead. What do you got, Papa? Fraggle, oh, Rock. Fraggle Rock. I guess I love that show. Fraggle Rock was awesome. There, yeah, you go. there we go. That's magic. Best book you've ever shown. There, there's the uh, that's the money maker there. Yeah, well, st I, I stand by what I said. Movie. Even though those are both beautiful newsstand copies, I still stand by my statement that the Spider-Man book's the best book you ever shown. <laughs> and Lacey's showing the original series, not the not the new one, because I hear a yeah, lot of people both newsies too. So you know, mm. hear a lot of people whinging about the uh, the new series. Any more well, Papa, or it's not a great it's no. not a great read. No, it's oh no, not that one. Apparently, the art's not all the greatest either. Covers are nice, apparently, but the interior is apparently not that nice. That's what Dynamite's all about, right? Flashy covers, yeah, especially the uh, the T and A covers, yeah, that's for sure. Uh, I guess I could take a stab at a joke. Send the letters to a. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See, there you go. You, you can't, you can't help yourself. You, you, you really can't. You, you've got to let something rip. Okay, finding ways to lose weight. Then KFC figures out a new way to fry a chicken. <laughs> oh God. It's a console panel. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is a stone? It, it's a really like before I think it was like four pounds before kilograms. It was like it's a, an English. It's around the same way that you developed your units of measures of your foot and your hand, right? Mm. You know, a foot used to be you measured it by your pacing out with your feet, and yeah, it varied by person to person, and eventually it got standardized. And a hand, mm. the same thing, you measured it, you know, there. And an inch came from being, you know, two fingers across, um, came from that stuff. And then your stone, yeah, it basically took an average size stone. And that was considered, you know, I think it's like, what, one stone is like what, 21 pounds or something like that? Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not quite sure. Two well, pounds. that's that's like uh, the old the old 14. tradesman. So it's one, one pound, one stone is 14 pounds. Mm -hmm. So, or if we go into kilograms... Uh, six point three five kilo. Mm. So you you that's you measured up. Boom. You know, so, mm. but not the only people who use it still are the English because they use well as much as they like to tell us how great they are. They use such the menage, menagerie of measurements. I mean, they say they're metric, but then they talk in miles, miles per hour, stones. They still friggin measure horses by the hand um you know <laughs> oh. at least here in america we have the decency to use the imperial method unless it's for science and drug dealing then mm. we're metric but so basically if you use a triple beam balance you use the metric system here in america otherwise it's inches feet pounds everything else yeah it's like my old man being an old an old tradie or whatever he was like you know like that that's six that's six inches so if you want to measure a foot you know you put the the two together or whatever like that and that'll give you you know so if you don't have like a, a tape measure or a ruler or something like that he's like yep that'll that'll be that'll be a foot and just measure it with your hands i'm like okay yeah more or less close enough. well my foot for me it was always easy enough because my foot is actually a foot long so yeah. but uh roscoe no i didn't i'm actually not reading this edge of spider verse series at all i got so tired of them for every for so long that i just said I'm not wasting the money anymore it, as it is I'm... it's funny you say that because like the only one that i i somehow missed the one 
where it had that like that number six issue that got hot for a minute that had like a million first appearances in it. That's about the only Spider Verse like mini series that I didn't I didn't for some reason missed. I don't know how I missed that and. It- it just keep it was one thing when it was just a, a little thing now it's just like a reason to introduce more and more first Spider appearances people. that aren't going to go anywhere or mm. might just show up in the spider-verse movie so everyone's like oh oh I, this character might pop up in the background for f- three frames so i better spec on this book if, no forget it i'm not i'm not playing the game i can barely even buy amazing spider-man anymore because it's a, a it's uh, it's up and down. It's uneven. I'm not entirely vested in the story. Ultimate Spider-Man's got me for now. It's the saving grace. Oh, okay, that's weird. Yeah, I was trying to catch up with the chat. Even the Spider-Man 2099 stuff that they've been doing has been not been good for so long that it's like I the symbiote Spider-Man stuff. I'm not. I'm not even. Nope. Nope. Sorry. Found another Gumby for Scotty. Hmm. Another Gumby book. Uh, Summer fun. Oh, that goes with your other one. The other one was a winter fun, wasn't it? Yeah, there you go. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> I hit the... Um, hey, Kyle. What is it, this? Just on play. I didn't start picking... Like, actually, it's like the same thing's happened even, like, with Batman. I'm not happy with like the fail-safe stuff that's been going on. And so it's like when I actually I was picked up a couple of the covers of the Batman and Robin recently, and she was reading it. It's like I actually had more enjoyment reading the Batman and Robin story than I am getting out of the regular Batman run because at least it's back to kind of it's a little bit more normal and what I'm used to, and the the interaction between Batman and Robin is kind of fun. What I've really been liking, Roscoe, is actually watching the um, on Vice. They ha- they have a thing of a, a, they've been running a uh, series icons unearthed or something, and it's like one of them is on Batman, and so they've been running multiple. It's like the f- first issue, the first episode was all focused on just getting Batman the movie, the f- the eighty nine movie done, and then mm. the sequel, then. The th- most recently was like the um, the Schumacher film. Or was it Schumacher? No, it wasn't Schumacher. Oh, Chris, Christopher Nolan films? Or? No, 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 no. The Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. Who was the director on those? Uh, was that Joel? Was that Joel Silver? No. Oh. Joel Schumacher. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the Joel part right. Yeah, when I, mean, I got the Schumacher right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hey, see, Bizzle. I for some reason when I said it, it didn't sound right because I was thinking the Schumacher, which was a race race car driver. Yeah, I, that, that's where my head went. I'm like, Michael Schumacher is that what he means? I'm like, he doesn't direct movies. <laughs> was was interesting though. Is like watching. Not only has it been a very interesting uh, s- series of mm-hmm. um, uh, on this whole thing with the ups and downs of the, you can get these things filmed, um, but uh, it's like when you're watching it, it's like I was like, oh. I forgot, you know, whether or not Schumacher was alive or not, but I'm watching it. I'm like, oh, Schumacher must be dead. These people are talking some uh, shady things about this director. And Hollywood folks don't talk shady shit about directors unless <laughs> they're not afraid of never getting <laughs> work from them again or something. Or it's implying, after the after the it, fact that they've been arrested and it's like, oh, now we right, can talk bad about it. Right. Well, they were implying there were some impl- implications that Schumacher was. Um, inappropriate with some of the guys so so another another weinstein but you know yeah he was like telling like the costume guy uh oh you don't have why don't you keep your hair down you can wear shorts get some cutoffs and be comfortable and like Uh, (laughs) like, (laughs) interesting but anywho it's a fun series nonetheless i think it's a I've. It's funny because I don't think of. Uh, is, know, it, is it all pop culture based, or is it very broad range? Well, I mean, this particular series is just focused yeah. so far on the movies, 
So it's ah, like okay. it kind of goes into like how this how the guy got the acquisition or acquired the rights to Batman the movie, uh, or the movies for Batman because Warner Brothers was like hands off, did not have faith in it because of the campy '60s show had basically mm. killed things, and then how they got the rights, they got his struggles to get. So it's all about the struggles of getting the movies made and going through it once it got once it got approved. Um, then talking about you know some of the stuff on set with the actors and um, you know, then it's like, Oh, okay, great. Tim Burton, you made us a great movie. Now you next to the next movie, you can do whatever you want. So he does make it super dark and it's like, Oh, you made it too dark and scary. So now we couldn't sell toys. So uh, we don't want you back. Schumacher, come make a movie and make it all about selling toys and make it light. So all of a sudden you had glowy light pastels with, freaking 18 billion different gadgets and whatnot so you could sell all these toys and you know and then you go went to the next level even higher on the fourth movie and it's like oh you went too far now we don't want you to we don't want you <laughs> well that's that's how they like they sort of did obviously the same sort of thing with that series on netflix that um the 80s, like they did like He-Man and Ninja Turtles. Yeah, and, all the, the toys we played with and stuff. Yeah, or, or yeah those movies. ones. And they're like, you know, we're, we're building this to sell toys. And then, oh, like, you know, quite often the, the cartoon stuff came a lot later as an afterthought or... or yeah, the cartoons were commercials. They yeah. were straight up. They were straight up commercials to the kids to get you to play with those, to, to go buy those toys and want those toys. <laughs> Oh, well, I went from no comics to sell uh, a quarter mile. The um, yeah. So, anyways, it's been it's been an interesting series. I I think if you're if you're if you're interested in things like uh, well, I'm a big movie buff, so but it's whether yeah. I can get I can get it over here or not. Yeah, I don't know thing. what you know. Vice is. It is available or their programming is available elsewhere internationally because mm. um, i know it's um because a few guys have been talking about there's a documentary about dave stevens and apparently it's on netflix but i cannot find it on my on my netflix at all and i know, I know we don't get the full the full range of uh programs we have a cut down version same with a lot of the the rest of the world they have different percentages of cut down versions of netflix so there might be like a thousand movies we might get 600 movies sort of things like that sort of stuff but um yeah i've been trying to look keep an eye at it because i'd be interested to watch it um so it may be the same deal possibly or it might be just on a streaming service we don't get at all yeah i unless i like yeah. you know do it through a vpn or something like that but I'm trying to see if I can find out from the. I'm looking at their website to see if they have any information about like availability or something. Hmm. Yeah, it sounds. It sounds like something I'd definitely be um, interested in watching. That's for sure. Because they're also doing one on. Um, the lady F would probably watch if she isn't already watching it on. Um, Lord of the Rings. Oh, don't get us started. <laughs> hey, kitty. <laughs> oh, God. Let's see here. Let me try just typing a simple question. Let me go to the AI. Let's get. Um, and... Yeah, it's like a community type sort of station um papa it's um yeah that's oh yeah well, i suppose if that's um yes yeah, so if it's on sbs might be able to get it is it just called vice or is it vice land well vice is the is the name of the is vice tv is the name of the you know, I'm, I'm asking, let's see, via, there isn't a dedicated Vice streaming service available in Australia. However, you can still watch some Vice content in Australia free with ads. You can stream certain shows on SBS and Tubi um, or for purchase or rent some Vice on platforms such as Apple TV or the Google Play Store. Mm. 
So okay, so yeah, I might I might be able to track it down because the SBS is just a standard like free to air TV. It's no yeah, no cable, no streaming, no nothing sort of service. So yeah, so here I'll just put it. I'm going to put in the private chat the uh, name of the show so you can look at. Mm. Oops, my phone just went funny. Icons unearthed, and then Batman. There you go. You can look and check. Ah, awesome. Thank you. Sir. See, that was a those are the more complicated questions. Like when I ask instead of trying to Google it up, I ask the AI and the AI then comes back and does the research and with a question that makes with an answer that makes more sense. Mm. Anyways. Plus TV. Plus produce content. Yeah, there you go. Ah, cool. There we go. Yeah, no, I do. Uh, I'm one of those people, like, for certain things, like, especially collecting physical media and things like that. Like, I do like watching a lot of, you know, special features of, you know, like, obviously, my favorite still is gag reel, but I do like, you know, watching the behind the scenes sort of making of movies and, you know things like that i'm not i'm not a commentary guy like i can't watch a whole movie with like a director's commentary i think that's just annoying uh but i do love like makings of and, and things Those like are okay that, so. if it's a movie you're really really into but mm. if it's a movie i'm not like super into mm. uh, i'm like no nah, i don't care mm. yeah like i'll always i'll always watch like superhero type behind the scenes stuff or movies that i really love and things like that but yeah not the uh yeah not just a movie that i'm just watching for the sake of watching a movie i'm not going to bother with behind the scenes -y type stuff too much so, uh, what's this uh, i haven't seen that i've watched vice's dark side of comedy that's a good show okay i'll i'll, I'll keep an eye out though for the uh icons yeah. unearthed i'm sure that lady f would probably like the the one on the Lord of the Rings. I'm guessing only because she's in the Lord of the Rings. I could be completely wrong because I haven't watched a single episode of it myself. So mm. that's completely stereotyping on my part. Mm. <laughs> uh, I love director's commentary. I think I remember famously the South Park guys doing their movies commentary on mushrooms. That wouldn't surprise me. That would not that would not surprise me in the slightest. Those guys are very wacky. And quite possibly mentally deranged, but you know, you'd you'd have to be to uh to make a uh a, a program like South Park, but, but you know, it is what it is. So Yeah, no, I'll definitely uh I'll definitely check it out. See if I can find it. I don't go on free to wear TV that much anymore. Like I used to back in the day. I'm usually watching some sort of physical media or something on the computer or something like that. I don't watch a lot of, like, besides the news that, like, which is always on around dinner time. That's about the only sort of free to wear stuff I'll ever watch. Um, so, yeah. free to wear is almost is, a uh, dying I get, uh, I get it on my Hulu. So, hmm. I know you guys don't. Hulu's not that for you, but yeah, you we. Uh, I think we get we get bits and pieces. I think of Hulu. Plus. Uh, yeah, Disney Plus, and it's the same with HBO Max or just Max, whatever the hell they call it now. We get bits and pieces on a streaming service called Binge. Mm. So, hey, Kenny Bird. No, oh, he kept his promise. I told you I will. <laughs> joining, joining from the car. You see, you get the car. They get, you know, they get the broken PC. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know which one's the better, but the better of the two. The, the car. Because <laughs> that PC has been five months getting repaired, and he still haven't repaired it. Oh, God. Yeah. Why don't you take, take it to somebody good? I took it to the manufacturer. That's what I mean. Why don't you take it to somebody good? <laughs> uh, you have no idea that the headache that's been giving me. So, uh, how's everybody doing? 
doing all right, mate. Doing all right. Uh, Here's a question: Is he when you said compete? It was it a PC or is it an Apple? It's a desktop. It's a desktop PC. So it's a it's a gamer PC, but I don't I don't use it for gaming. So I'm a, since I I use After Effects and Premiere Pro and all those graphics, um, programs. I, I wanted I needed something that had a lot of juice. And, you know, theoretically, they're supposed to, but for some reason, we, we, they can't seem to figure out why it just crashes. Like, it, I don't, you know, you could be doing something, and it's so sporadic, too. It's not like it's, you know, the minute you do this, it crashes. It just crashes when it feels like it. So, and no one can figure it out. They've changed the CPU, the GPU. They changed the motherboard. They practically changed every single part, and it's still doing it. And then we're saying that it's software based, not hardware based. It probably is software based, but still, it's supposed to handle the software. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. So if it, if it's not handling the software, then what's the what's going on? And they can't, and no one figures it out. And I, you didn't, I don't know if you saw the invoice that I showed in the show. It's like the invoice literally says sometimes when you remove, change, and remove parts, it works. It's like. That's your action. <laughs> well, they're not, not going to. They're not going to do like a you know a week long test. They're going to like probably chuck it on, give it a bit of a you know quick you know quick run for like an hour or two at the most, and then if everything's yeah. fine, it, they'll be like, "Well, this is fine. I don't know what you're talking about." Yeah, and that's and that's part of the problem is like they're not testing to see what's really causing the problem. If you try so, plugging it in. Yeah, right. <laughs> Is the power turned on? Yeah, just turn it off and turn it on again. Everything will be fine. Uh, so, you know, it, it's really annoying when you're trying to render a video and it just crashes while you're rendering. So, Just make sure you have autosave on everything. Well, yeah, I do, but I, I, you, I'm at the point now that I'm just saving everything. I'm like, save, 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 save. Mm. So... You're saving, yeah. saving, saving more than creating. Yeah, just you know, con you know, control less, control less, control less, control less. Mm. So, so yeah, it's the worst. Well, yeah, I, I don't, I don't miss. I, I did used to sell uh, computers back in the day, and I do not miss those days because it's. Uh, you know, now nowadays it's like you can't live with them and you can't live without them, sort of thing. It's they're either a, yeah. a blessing or a curse. It's yeah, you just it, it just goes. It just and, cuts and off. Have to... Go ahead. It just crashes and go, turns off, or it gives you. It just crashes. Credit. It just crashes and then restarts itself. Mm. On some some on sometimes they'll give me a blue screen. But the blue screen goes out so fast that I can't see what's the what's the, the the blue screen. And then when I go check to see what it was, it doesn't have it recorded. So I can't really determine what it is. It I want to say it's the graphics card in some way because that's the only thing I could think it could possibly be. But that's been replaced too. So they they at this point I'm at, I'm I'm with them like just get me another pc yeah, right. you know what i mean like the amount of t the amount of money you're spending on labor and parts you could have just given me a new pc but no they can't do that kind of stuff <laughs> so yeah uh, eh, it's life i would yeah. i would be cooking out more videos if it wasn't for that because because of the amount of speed that computer has, you know what I mean? So I could turn <laughs> pretty quickly if it was the case. But <laughs> is he still talking about that dang computer? Cliff, yeah. we asked him about it. You did? Mm. I, I I only caught like the first bit of uh Tony's show, whatever like that, and then I uh I dozed <laughs> off again and then went, Oh crap, I gotta run my own show, I better get up. And then, uh, yeah, so I, I missed all that talk. Yeah, don't worry. I didn't talk you about did. it in the Tony show that much. Hmm. We were too busy. I was too busy crying over X Men. I don't know why <laughs> everyone. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was. Uh, it was quite heart wrenching. It. Uh, 
the end Come of that on. episode. He's not dead. No, they're no, saying he, they're saying he's dead, dead. Like he'll, he, uh, yeah, like everything else, he'll be back. But they're saying he's not going to be back for a while. I, I, I had, I had to do it, Durs, because, like, Rob's show is four thirty in the morning. My show's at ten at the morning at the moment. So I, I need that, that sleep in between because I didn't fall asleep till like midnight last night. So I'm running on about four hours sleep at the moment. <laughs> So I, I needed something, so I had to. <laughs> oh. But yeah. Oof. Oof, you felt? Okay. Yeah. Off. There you Off. go. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not New Zealand or Canadian. <laughs> not New Zealand or Canadian? <laughs> well, well, New Zealand is like our, our, like our Canada. You make fun of their accents and, you know, and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much how it works. Yeah. The only difference is that New Zealand's a small is a lot smaller, when Canada is a lot bigger than us. True, by geographical area. Yeah, geographically speaking. Not by population. Not, not, not by population. Mass, not, by population. Uh, not even close. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just, it's what? How many people are in Canada? Like three? Three or four? You know, you got Chris, Travis, <laughs> Adrian, um, Jean, and that's about it, right? Did, did, well, did I miss anybody? Well, war, Canadian survivalist. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Real James Willie, you know. Oh yeah, so so about twelve. Okay, it's about twelve. Rob, Rob, Rob sent stuff to them all, so he knows where they all are. <laughs> <laughs> Canada has uh, thirty-nine million people. <laughs> all right, okay. That's, that's pretty. That's that's pretty good because they they've got more than we do, and you know they've got us probably more wilderness than we do. They have a lot more wilderness. We're like the second largest country on them. Yeah. So, so how many people are in Australia? Uh, I think we're at twenty. I'd like to say around sort of twenty-seven, twenty-eight million, something like okay. that. I think. And half of you are called Simon. No, only, only just uh, one, one legend and one imposter. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, lady. Hey, Izzy. Are you so? <laughs> Australia's at 26 million. Uh, oh, 26. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing. You know how it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Canada's got you, got you by the extra 30%. Hmm. Uh, that's the U.S. is 334 million. Uh, that's it? So just, just a couple more. Just a few so, more. Uh, so just roughly 300 million more people than <laughs> Canada. <laughs> Just a log. It's just like a one log. Yeah. It's a little bit more popular. But what does China have? Well, but here's the, inter oh, here's the interesting part. Millions. We have, we have 334 million people, but we also have 334 billion guns. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> a billion. So here's the question. So here's the question about that. Is that number counting... Those that are undocumented. I, I was gonna say, how These many are, extra? <laughs> this is well. We could so arm China. When you when Everyone's, they do sen well, first of all, when they do censuses, right? They they count everybody regardless of whether or not whether or not you're a citizen or not. It's counting the people that are there because you need to count try. count for. They try the best they can, right? Because it needs to count. Yeah. They need to account for people that need services or whatever else. Yeah, um, of course. So this is basically. Uh, as to, you know, from the base, this takes the latest census and then it estimates based on uh, projected population uh, growth, mm -hmm. and it, and then it adjusts for today. So it's an unofficial, the latest estimate as of today, based on that uh, you know that estimated growth based since the last official uh, census four years ago. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
So. Right. <laughs> oh, um, nerd. So. so, Lady F, when do you have to move? Um, so I just extended my close date to June 1st instead of May 1st because... May 1st is awfully quick. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's not realistic, but... Whatever. It's like two, two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> exactly. That'd be all. No, no. Yeah, no. Um, I'll, I'll figure it out. I mean, because they're going to let me extend it for a little bit. Um, I've got to purchase this place. The lady that I want to purchase the property from is moving out. So I'm hoping like in the next six weeks we can try and wrap this up. But I mean, maybe that's optimistic. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but the cool thing is, is like, I don't, I don't have to do like I sold my condo as is. So nice. like I literally don't have to do shit. You don't have to clean nothing. No, I could just like leave shit that I don't want here. Which is that's like the best way to leave. That's the best way to sell it, right? Yep. And like we did it without a fucking realtor's fee, like a bunch of shit. So yeah. I'm glad that I got it done and, and yeah. We'll see. It's a lot. I don't really want to think about it except for like little baby steps because it's going to be overwhelming. Yeah. Is, is it a bigger place? What is what? Is the, is the new place a bigger place, better oh, yeah. place? It's about 2.5x larger. So Ooh, nice. Yeah, I'll be um, having an extra bedroom now where I'll get to make like I can do like comic. I can decorate it and store my comic nerd stuff and like get a desk where I can like live stream and decorate um, and then have my bedroom and then an actual living room. Like it, it's a lot of space here. I mean, the location's not as good. It's further out of town, but um, it's so much nicer in terms of space, which is what I want good i'm happy for you Danka. um it's in the same uh condo uh, uh complex that my mom has a place in and my brother and i'm actually getting a place right in a chase next to my mom so it's like we'll own half the building oh so you get staying close to family too that's always cool it's good um like it's not like i want to be up in my mom's business every other minute but like she lives, she lives the majority of the time in New York. She's a contractor, a computer programmer that does contract work with Corning, and yeah. um, so she's up she's there. Up wow. Yeah, she's up in Ithaca or around there. Okay. Oh, um, so she's up there. She's more close to where Cliff is. Yeah, yeah, she's upstate. Um, in, there you go. There you go. Uh, you send your computer to Caroline's mom to get fixed. She's a nerd. <laughs> she, she's a digi baby. I think um, my computer's possessed. I'm be honest with you. To my mom and my brother, they're both like that. But um, yeah, so I'll be able to kind of look over that place. My brother's got a place that's other way, but it's just like you know, if they need something, whatever. And sometimes all you have is like family, so it's good, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's nice when you need, when you need, oh, I need an egg. Yeah. I, need, I need a half a cup of sugar. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And just like, you know, if one's sick, you know, you can go and like dump some food and some meds at their doorstep and like say, okay, you know. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do not seeing me streaming from my, I know it's going to be wild and crazy. You're going to have to hold on nice. to your horses yeah um streaming the streaming the move yeah I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do uh pops if you didn't have like your uh massive collection in the background i'd feel weird i'd be like this is not. So i'm gonna have to claim up my background but, um, yeah. i just didn't want to do comic stuff in my living room uh, you know I'd like to have my own, like, relegated to a room because I don't want to, like, let people know my secret. When people come in, yeah, they're going to go, what the hell? It's not like my house. They walk in, the first thing they yeah. see is, like, this shit. And they yeah. Go, like, this bitch is uh, a college student. I can't take her seriously. Wow. 
See, I got the, I got I got a different problem. I want my living room to be all comic book based. Yeah, but you're a boy, and that's understandable. But, but my wife won't let me. It's different. It's different when you're married. Ugh. It was overrated. See, you know, you get certain people come over and they go like, "Oh, you're," in and they start talking about it, and then it's like, "Oh yeah." And the next thing you know, we disappear to the garage where there's the big, all the walls and stuff in there, and then we we're gone, out of the way. I love it. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, exactly. I'm gonna have all kinds of little nooks and crannies, be like dead cats under my boxes and shit. Well, yeah, we already talked about it. yeah, your, your woman, like, your oh. woman cave, yeah. My lady gave, yeah. I gotta show you something, Matt Spidey. I oh. got a pretty nice specimen in uh, the mail uh, on Friday, which was yesterday, I think. Um, oh. oh! Nice. I think I, I, know, actually, I think I might actually have that. I love the chubby diabetes Wilford Brimley. Um, uh, I'm watcher. Like, I'm saying, like, He's so chubby. It's My chubby, it's chubby baby watcher. Puppy monkey baby. Uh huh. It's a preozimbic uh, watcher. <laughs> watcher does a lot of watching. And so. Oh, yeah. the, couch, the couch potato watcher. You, you would think that the watcher would be like slightly, over, will be overweighted because he's technically. You know, a couch potato. Yeah. And he's on the moon. He doesn't even have full gravity to work against. So him. there's that. Exactly. But maybe that's why he overeats and he doesn't realize that he's gaining weight because there's no gravity. So he's like, I feel fine. But that's, limited, why, limited. that's, all the but that's why all the weight goes to the head. Limited that's gravity. Grows and the rest of the body stays thin because yeah. of the, the gravitational pull just keeps it up. His BMI on his body is like nothing, but then his head is like seventy percent fat. No, I, I, yeah. I love I love all those uh, like the astonish and suspense, the strange tales. Like I love all those. And it's those so sports. hard to find them in nice shape, you know. And they're well, not. I'm not just about nice shape. I just want to find them in reasonable pricing. Like I, I try and pick them up. Like every con I go to, I usually at least pick up one or two that are the. I'll say I'll say reasonably priced ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, tell you, Simon, I'm getting to that point in my life where I am becoming blessed about the mm, condition. Mm. So I'm getting a little snobbier. Like there was a a copy of this at my LCS for twenty bucks, but the cover was barely hanging on, and I was like, I can't do it. You're all twenty bucks for this? Come on. Yeah, I'm like, this is maybe seven max. Yeah, whether it's I would be paying probably 20 or 30 for something that's you know probably literally barely hanging on but if that's all i can afford and i can still get the book then then i'll take it as long as it's all there like it's complete for me i'm fine but that's yeah. a problem i've had at my lcs lately is i'm looking in some of their back bins and like the right. bronze age horror books that i've been wanting to pick up i stopped picking them up at my lcs because he's wanting like 40 to 60 bucks a piece for them and i'm picking them up for like 10 to 10 to 15 bucks and his are like beat up worse than most of what I'm picking up. Yeah. I'm all, it's just, what is your problem? He's all, dude, I, I looked him up recently. Dude. Would dude. you look him up as who's selling them? I mean, come on. Yeah, but that's the difference between an LCS and let's just say a con, right? A, con's, a, a, a con wants to just get rid of stuff and they're willing to lower the I, price for it. But LCS it, doesn't it, I, totally, I totally get that. You're preaching to the choir, but, yeah. But there's a difference between me being able to pick them up for 10 to 15 bucks on a con or online versus them selling them for 60 to 70 instead of selling them for 20 to 25. Yeah, I get that. that I, think, I, think, I think that. I think you said that. I think, I think I said to you yeah, yeah. last time you mentioned that that uh, he's trying to charge you Australian prices. That's not American. Yeah, prices. the problem is that the, the guy who's the comic book manager really likes that stuff and so oh, he's grading uh, it with his emotions biases yeah he leans instead instead of the reality so when he's looking at a guide their online guide or whatever they're looking at to price the books he's pricing it the high end of the scale instead of the middle or low end of the scale and you know so and then they wonder why these lcs's are closing down 
Yeah, or or else he or he's pricing it that way so nobody buys it so he can come in and buy it later when he has. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna show you something that I got at half price books yesterday for three dollars. Nice. Yeah. I just picked up like that copy not that cover not too long ago. Did you? It's in set yeah. for three bucks. Like I yeah. didn't pay three bucks though. Yeah, people will pay like crazy. <laughs> Um, I also found I found a lot of DC they had on sale, um, either on clearance for fifty cents or for like five or six bucks or less. Um, found this Weird World number ten. Uh, Iron Spence, Wolf. Iron Wolf. Dude, this is a Mike Kaluta cover, and the interiors are Howard Chaykin. It they're so gnarly and badass. Wow. Yeah, I can it's, imagine. It's excellent. Um, they this was fifty cents in clearance. I'm this Jimmy Olsen. Like, it's a 12 cent, you know, like, are you going to not? <laughs> like, I had to get Silver Age for 50 cents. Yeah, a lot of those Jimmy Olsons, that's the, they're usually, I find them, you can find them in dollar bin books or whatnot because they're. This was five. Yeah. Huh. But I'll pay for a five dollar uh, buy. This was two dollars. Challengers. Oh, that's the one that kills me. It's like Challengers the Unknown is like so cheap, and I find them like sometimes even in really good condition. Gross I, love, I love picking those up when I can. And um, these were the deals of the day, in my opinion. These were six dollars a piece, but it's a uh, oh, nice. Dead Man, Strange Adventures, Neil Adams. Just, just yeah, so that's a gorgeous cover. Oh yeah. Um yeah, for issue two twelve, and then. I also kind of just with Bella issue for 13. Ooh. And uh, the last book I found, this was in the clearance bin for 50 cents, was an action. Um, and it is a little bit to face. Somebody did a little math, but other than that, <laughs> for 50 cents, yeah. those are just things that I came across. Nice. I got a block of like a, I forgot I had some boxes from one day I forgot what it was but it was like I forgot I had it it was like eleven Michael Turner covers for forty bucks and I was like and, and so, some of them were like the Supergirl covers and whatnot and I was like oh, nice they had so that. What? Oh, I'm sorry no you go ahead you call it, uh, no it was a different subject that's why because you, you the Michael Turner you. thing oh, I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> no, the wait, Michael wait, Turner. Wait, 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 before the shovel. Yeah, I know, right? The Michael Turner covers, right? I like me personally. I got a lot of Michael Turner's, especially signed, because he used to do a lot of conventions back then, before he mm -hmm. passed away, and it got me thinking about CG, the CGC thing. Uh -huh. We're we're more than we're what we're halfway through the month, and they haven't even made an announcement on that yet. No, because you know the, all they did was announce that they had. Uh, we're acquiring the company. Mm -hmm. The way that business acquisition works is you make an announcement, and then there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the tra actual process of acquiring and integrating the companies and starting to work together. T usually takes minimum ninety days before anything can start to go on between the two companies, and then it, it's a process that goes on even longer than that as they as you slowly integrate your company yeah. together so that's what yeah. i understand but they did they made the announcement that they were going to say something they were going to do something in april i'm only basing on what they said right like I'm, i get the whole mergers part of it it's only mid-april so i wouldn't be surprised to see anything until the end of the month you know, they, mm -hmm. they were quick to say things because it was distracting from other issues that were going oh, yeah, on. Of course, I know exactly what that was about. Hmm. Like, but I did I did find out that, and there you go, Papa Willie, there's your siren. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I read the, I read the comment. So here, here's the thing that I don't, I get, I don't get, and I read, was that the, the slabbing on the on the spot in Heroes Con, it looks it appears that's for dealers. So if you have a dealer account, 
it does, I don't think it's going to do it for just anybody with a membership account. I'd have to go back and reread the article. Yeah, I, I was. Sworn, I could have sworn it said that it was you could have a free account, but you got a discount if you yeah. had their paid membership tiers, and they were doing the grading on tier, on spot Friday and Saturday mm -hmm. with a limited with a limited number of walkthroughs on Sunday. Yeah, but that's it. it. Didn't say. I don't remember seeing anything about dealers only. I saw something with a dealer's account. That's what I read, but I have to look at it again. But at the same time, it's also interesting enough. It's like, how, like, how much are they going to be able to, because it looks like they're going to be slabbing on the spot because they're saying you could walk out with it. That's how oh. they used to do it back at, back before COVID they used to do that. They'd go to a convention, they'd set up. They'd bring supplies, and they'd have they'd have that set up someplace, and so they'd yeah. take they'd take the books, and they'd have some place off site or whatever. Yeah, they'd like a hotel or something like that. Right. Then you could come back and pick stuff up because you know they can go get they can go get set up like at the you know for let's say they can be at one of the hotels or even there in the convention center or have another room. Yeah, the convention center the was the room that they just shuttle stuff to, and they have all their supplies set up, and they can secure everything. Yeah. And, you know, then they'll do they do their process, and then they they'll be able to, you'll be able to come pick it up on whatever you know whatever day you pick up those things up. So that's how, that's how they used to do stuff all the time. Yeah. yeah, they just haven't done it that way since since COVID, and so it's kind of like a big deal for them to announce it because they're returning. It's the mm -hmm. next step in returning back to normal. Yeah. So I wonder how many books they can handle. Yeah, because you're going to get some idiot that's going to, like, go and buy, like, 50 books or something and go, I want to get them all slapped. Well, yeah, but that, those that's are going to be dealers. Good. Those are dealer accounts. Yeah. And first of all, that stuff, cost, remember, that stuff could, they're not, doesn't cost less. <laughs> so, you know, from Probably. that aspect, it, there's there's a monetary aspect involved. But, you know, I don't know what their production turnout is, but they'll, they'll know what they can do, and they'll if they get to a point, yeah. they'll cut it off. Yeah, well, they might they might limit it. Might say like you know five books per customer or something like that. Possibly, probably not. They'll mm -hmm. they'll probably take as much as they can until they can't take any more, because that's business. Yeah. It, well, they got to take as much as they bring, right? So they have that's to bring. They, the they only they yeah. only going to bring so much so many supplies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to come up and say, okay, let's let's order another. I don't know. 500 slabs to come in it's it's impossible to do it so whatever they bring they bring i know they're doing um they're gonna do they're gonna do orders pre-orders and then you print you bring it in on like thursday or something like that i think i think i read that well you can do walk-ins yeah i mean well, no, different than walkthroughs you can where you bring your st bring stuff in you know mm -hmm. that's always been the thing where the free accounts were when you bring it to a convention, then you don't have to pay for shipping and stuff. And then, of yeah. course, the stuff that while you're there. The signature series you know, books. Yeah, the signing books, and the signed books and stuff that they'll in commissions or whatnot, then they'll do. And other, I mean, I don't, other people might buy books. Like if I was there, you know, maybe you do something. But the problem is, it's they're not going to be doing cleaning and pressing there. And so if you wanted to get a book cleaned and pressed, you know, if I had Yeah, you book, can't do that. You can't do that. So it's, this is really only either, you know, signed books or modern books or something that you, where you're like, oh yeah, it does, it's good to go. Or you have them pre-screened it. They say, yeah, it's, and it hits the grade you want. Then go ahead and slap it right there on the spot. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be cool. I, I, like, I my, like that. I mean, yeah, my, that's my assumption because they're not going to, because, you know, the, Cleaning and pressing, that's a whole different ball of wax. Yeah, because that's, that's, they usually go to a third party, don't they, for, for cleaning and pressing? It's their own subsidiary company. Okay. Submit comics for on-site grading. Uh, on-site grading, Universal Signature Series, comic book submissions, on-site grading. Reholder submissions will be available Friday through Saturday. Very limited quantity of walkthrough submissions will be accepted on Sunday. 
All you need is a free CGC account to submit for on-site grading. Oh, but so paid, paid, that. paid members receive discounts and other benefits. Learn more and select your membership level. On-site grading submissions are accepted on a first-come, first-served basis. Uh, expressly high yeah, demand. See, a, there's your pricing right there. It's all listed. There's your fee for your walk free people, your member your member pricing. They got the member pricing already? Because it wasn't there before. CGC signal. Oh, it says great free for free member pricing. Uh, well, you get your discount off of that, and then there's the on-site free member. So what they're posting is the free member pricing. Mm. Mm -hmm. So how much no, per book? for what? How much for which one? How much per book for the for the non-signed book is four yeah. bucks for modern and sixty for vintage. Okay, that's not too bad when you when you look at it from that perspective that you're not paying for shipping because that's technically the shipping cost that goes with that. But that's also the undiscounted non-member. That's the free yeah. member pricing, but mm -hmm. still, yeah. I have yeah. a random question. Sorry, mm -hmm. what showcase issue is the dolphin cover the with the jig the back? You know, it's you talk about you talk about first dolphin. Yeah. Uh. Uh, is it like what is it? Uh, yeah. I'm just trying to remember because I know, I know, because Simon showed me that book. He's got that book. Mm -hmm. um, shit, what is it? It is Showcase 79. 79. 69. Mm -hmm. My mind's so dirty. Okay. <laughs> yeah, dirty. I'm, dude, Bar I'm looking at Barbie co comics. Marvel. Mar Barbie did an homage to that showcase 79 that um, was barbie number 13 or barbie fashion number 13. i know you guys are not as enamored as i am but i'm just shocked that barbie had that many books it's barbie fashion number 13. dude they went to the, like the 60s into the issue number she had more books than she hulk at that time She Hulk, the people that were reading She Hulk and the people that were reading Barbie were not the same people. No, but who was <laughs> reading Barbie? Huh? Who was actually reading Little Barbie? Little girls. Little girls or gay men, you know, or both. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Or like grown ass men and women. But mostly little girls, I would say. That's generally who it caters to. Yep. Young kids. But they, it, and men well, who drive were, around were pounds. They were pretty much going to the newsstands to get them, I guess. So that's why they were, I guess that's why it was selling. Yeah, young kids and men and men that are better at doing makeup than I am. Collect those, <laughs> those books. What up, Callie? Hey, Callie. Oh, God. I thought, yeah, I, I wouldn't think you'd be one looking for the Barbie book. I thought you'd be one looking for the dolphin book. Me? I yeah. want to find the dolphin book, but like, I came across some of these Barbie covers, and it's just like, bro, they're bangers, man. So it's like, what if I, what if I want both? What if I can, I, can I admit that? Maybe that I, I want to get both. Yeah. As, as I always <laughs> say, you know, like, you know, people are like, oh, if you can't afford the first appearance, you get the second appearance. I'm like, yeah, but I just want both. You just get the homage, you know, the cheaper homage alternative. Who did the artwork on most of the Barbies? Because I know we know Ramita did the first issue. The um, cover. Couple. It's a couple, and I can't remember their names. Any, okay, so not not memorable names. Not that I know. Um, it says, Who did the writing, at least? June and Roy. So that's some... Uh, bro, I don't know. You need to stop. With it. <laughs> I'm just asking. I don't. I can't provide this data right now. I cannot. I'll That's fine. Back. I cannot get. I cannot. I've no, not we, done that much research. We expect you to rattle off all the names yeah. of all the artists and all the writers. All the I mean, editors, we want the. Uh -uh. the assistant. You call yourself a nerd. I'm just exploring. <laughs> I'm just dabbling at this stage. I don't even know. I'm just like sticking all over nowhere. I bet you. I bet you. If we asked a Lord of the Rings question, you'd be able to do it like that. That's different, though. <laughs> yeah, that's a, bit, that's a different not, kind of nerd. I'm not just dabbling 
in Lord of the Rings. She's mainlining that stuff. I, yeah. Yeah. She, does, I would, she, does, she does Lord of the Rings like doing coke up both nostrils. Yeah, that's, that's all I believe. If a mosquito Lydia. bit me, it would be able to recite the Silmarillion. But but the, but the Barbie, the Barbie, she's basically walked by somebody shooting up a needle of heroin and said, hmm, I want to try that. Yeah. Try that. <laughs> Make it I want to try a little taste. Let me get a little taste of that Barbie, please. I like Lady, that. I'd love you to meet my wife one day and just talk about Lord of the Rings together because that's all she watch. She was all she watches YouTube videos on. Lord of the Rings, this Lord of the Rings, that, and exp explaining really? this. She watches that. That's like, all I do too. I know that shit. Maybe you're know, his I wife. What? No, I don't think so. But <laughs> never forget her. I think it's a mistake. But I don't remember though. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I don't even know my kids. But she be watching that. Every oh, I know. Lady F just threw oh. a shoe and it hit me in the back of my head somehow. Yeah. Every day. Every day she watches that. She's awesome. Oh. Oh. Can, it sounds like she's got really good taste. I other than marrying you. No, I'm just kidding. You're yeah, I was just saying. No, she oh, she'll, tell you, she'll tell you her marrying me. She doesn't understand how that happened either. So tell her, when she says that next time, say Stockholm syndrome and chloroform. And it was a little bit of both, but that's a different story. We're not going to talk about it on, you know, on public that's next television. week on Matt Spidey. Barbie fashion number three, <laughs> Barbie 39, Barbie 60. What about um, Barbie 60? I want Callie. I looked. I want Barbie 59 because it's a scientist Barbie. She's in the lab. Cool, um, on, I've seen up to issue 63, but not. Oh, Yeah. I'm looking at these Barbies, and some of them are bangers, bro. Lost easy. Get, getting kind of Barbies number 60 is the best one. Oh, these are your opinions. I have Barbie fashion number three. The other ones I don't. Okay. That's yeah. dope. I think uh, Tolkien like came and like booted you because you were. Oh, wait a second. I think I see. You're talking about. You're talking about. Earlier you said the uh, dolphin thing. Are you talking about. Barbie fashion number 13? Yes. That covers by Amanda Connor. Ooh. That's cool. It Rob, made, Rob, key, Rob, it Rob made key, No, it made key collector because it says cover by Amanda Connor. So that be, it's a key because Actually, Amanda it, Connor did the, the, the it, cover? It, oh, wait. No, no, Oh, you know what? Actually, that one's not the one. It's, it says uh, Barbie fashion just, 39. Just, 39 says, which is also by Amanda Connor, says cover art inspired by Showcase 79. Mm. Uh, which it's one funny, is that? Both, it's actually, the funny thing is they're both like the same cover, practically. So here, let me show you. Um, Callie, do you have a Fashion 3? You could, you probably do. Probably like 8. Barbie Fashion 3. So this is the one that's 30, 39 or whatever that they're yeah, saying. Yeah, but see, I thought that the other one was like Dolphin yeah. 2. Well, the other one is this one, right? Which is yeah, basically the one. same. It's the same pose. Yeah, that's why. The difference is that this one's just swimming with the fishes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then this one is the exact same pose, but she's got scuba gear on. No oh. But they're both by Amanda Connor. So yes. I'd, say, I'd say the fish one would probably be more likely to be the homage to the showcase book than the other one. Who knew that Amanda Connor did Barbie? America has done so a lot, and I guess you're welcome. Just oh, I know. She, she, they opened up commission for her the other day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's no way I could afford a commission from Amanda Connor. Holy cow! I have a I have a sketch from Amanda Connor. Yeah, yeah look, I can you could get I can get I, by today's standards I could get like a remark sometime. I mean, a full blown commission. No, 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 no I'm, I'm not spending that kind of money. Oh, speaking yeah. of that. I, I got a, and this is going to blow everybody's mind. Or what? actually, probably, actually, you could probably, you know, predict it. But I got a message from one of my art collecting mates about a post about Jim Lee commissions. Oh, he, Jesus. He's actually going to be taking limited amounts three for, to the five next, days. For, the, for the next 12 months in every show he goes to. He will actually take. A limited amount of requests oh. and for the tier that i would normally get 
which is 11 by 17 full figure, is $20,000. Wow. I was way wrong with 3 to 5K. So, 3, 3 so to 5K. Jimmy... 3, 3 to 5K will get you a head sketch with minimal background on a blank cover. So he used to do sketches all the time. So whenever he did a convention, mm. the first 10 people online will get a free sketch. Yeah, just a quick head sketch on like a backing board. No, no, no. Not a quick head sketch. Trust me. We're talking about quality sketch. Mm. So the fact that that's the cost now is insane to me. Well, when I first started, when I first heard about his commission rates was about 10 years ago, and he was charging 10 to 12K for an 11 by 17 full figure back then. Mm -hmm. So he, wow. yeah, so realistically, yes, it sounds like a lot of money, but like percentage wise, there's not a massive increase compared to some artists that are, yeah. that have been charging like $200 for a decade. Now they're charging $2,000 for the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, because he was, he was always one of those artists, even then. So when he came to the scene, he was already a superstar, right? So when he would do conventions, there was always long lines for him. But he would always do, he would always do a sketch for the first 10 people online. And he did a Jubilee for me that's absolutely dropped that beautiful. Hmm. So the, the, the cheapest option for him now, like, obviously, there's still stories of even today's standards, you, you can catch him when he, you know and get like a free head, quick head sketch and stuff like that. Um, yeah, you, you, you can you can still like acquire them, not as easily as what you used to be able to. I I never yeah. got my opportunity, unfortunately. But his cheapest option is the quick head sketch on a backing board, and that's a thousand dollars. Wow! So it's like so probably five ten minute sketch, and it'll cost you a thousand bucks. Yeah. And people, well, people, and, and Beckerman keeps saying to me, "Oh, weren't you still collecting original art?" And I'm like, "Because that's." <laughs> so the real question I have is like, is the money going towards something, or is this just going to? Is he just pocketing the money? Because I feel like, I feel like something like that is just he's probably using that money for something else, like for a charity or something like that. It, it doesn't. It doesn't like in the the formal release that I got. Uh, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't say anything about you know, monetary locations or anything yeah. like that, but I, it wouldn't surprise me. That all makes everything just sound so reasonable because Amanda Connor was 2000 for black and white full figure, full figure and 1500 for thigh up black and white. What, what size, what, 9 by 12 blank cover, 11 by 17 or, or it doesn't stay? Doesn't say, let me see, I'm trying to, just says limited to five spots per show for either a thigh up full figure. Um, mm. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't say. Okay. And that that's the other problem is sometimes they they will not state what type of paper. Like usually if they do different forms of paper, like if they'll do a blank sketch, a blank cover, they'll do 9 by 12 they'll do 11 by 17 they'll usually segregate um, those sort of things. But if they only do one type of paper size, they usually won't say it. So it's probably like 9 by 12 so which I think is probably still a little pricey for 9 by 12 but that's me personally. But mm -hmm. for somebody like her, though, I'd pay it for 11 by 17 Or you could buy 11 by 17 off Izzy. That'll be just as good for 100 bucks. Uh, yeah, I have so many sketches from people that I, I didn't pay a dime for. That's, mm. that's, those were the good days. You got you got signatures for free. You got sketches for free. All that good stuff. I miss those days. Yeah, so and that's the thing. Like, I could have got a lot of sketches for free, but it'd be only like little quickie sketches, whether as I always went for as, as you know, as much as I could get, which, you know, they're not going to do that for free. You've got to pay for it, which I was quite happy to do. Yeah. yeah. You know, I just reached out to an artist on a, on one who did, who did us, 
did my Gwenum for me previously sketch cover to oh. do an, to do another one. You know, yeah. it's, it's a full, full for the um, for the sketch cover. Although it's, you know it's full full color, full figure is a hundred bucks. But he's not a you know big name artist or anything, so it's like mm -hmm. it's great. You got him, Med Spidey. Yeah. Yeah, so let me see. I'm trying to remember all the sketches I got. I got a Jim Lee. I got a Lean Sharp. I have Tim Sale. Um, nice. Good for you, Lady F. I also, well, who else? Um, Darwin Cook. Um, and all, they just did the sketches for me. I, you know, I, I had a sketch back then. They used to carry a sketchbook. And I used to ask them to do, if they were willing to do the sketches. And some of them were, you know, like you said, they're just a quick, a quick, a nice quickie remark style sketch, but then some of them just went at it, man. And you, you just like they'll t you, you they'll take your notebook and they say, okay, what, what would you like? You, you tell them what you want, and then the next thing you know, you have a piece of art that today will go for thousands of dollars. Yeah, I've seen some pretty cool ones like that. Yeah, so you know, I love that sketchbook, man. One of these days, I'll show it off. Um, I had I had one that was a Planet Comics sketchbook that I was having some artists do. Like I had asked them just draw any robot, any kind of robot, right? And yeah. you get a variety. And then like I accidentally gave it to somebody else to do the cover, to do a sketch cover, and I had it then encapsulated. And now I can't see the interior sketches unless I crack it out. <laughs> How is everybody? Gentlemen, the king of all mouths. I'm good. I I'm like. I like to think so. I appreciate that, Rob. Or Emperor Mao? Emperor Mao. I like that. Yeah. Hey, have you seen You know me? what the difference is between you and me? I make this look good. Have you seen this, Doc Bon Who? Do you I'm I'm do you like the labyrinth? I'm guessing you might be. Oh here. yes. Yes. You see this? They just came out. This is like yeah, a, they, a they are lovely. I yeah. uh I very much nearly bought them. I was very. What confident. made you resi resist the temptation? Not having enough money. Um, That'll do it. <laughs> I'd already spent my budget. Then. Being, wait, 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 hold on. Hold on. Being That's responsible a good answer. and not having enough money. <laughs> because. Oh, damn you and your responsibility. Because just not having enough money doesn't necessarily preclude you from. Doing something irresponsible. Oh, I know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how I, I feel when I go to a convention. I don't even like Scotty Young. <laughs> this the, but this one, this one is really that's nice. Oh gosh, but, yeah, beautiful. It's really cool. I unboxed it earlier, <laughs> and I, I, yeah, I'm very happy to keep this in the PC. I, that's I just, it's, I it's just a love it. Book. I just love it. I don't even like right. Scotty Young, and I have to get this. <laughs> no, I, no, I'm being harsh. Like I, I, I like some Scotty Young, but I, I don't collect Scotty Young. Would be my uh... yeah. But it's cool. We, that that is a fun that's cover. Precious. There, yeah. There's there there's two styles of Scotty Young that 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 they're out there. I like. I happen to like the one that's less cartoony. If you know what I'm talking about, like he has the one that what yeah. they call what they they, they, look, they look like babies, but then he has the other ones. Sure, I like I like those. Like yeah, he, yeah, he has, he has the what I what I call the chibi type, which is what everybody's used to. Yeah, and then there's the the gangly type, which is like everybody's yes. got like really thin legs and arms, and they look all gangly. Uh, the other last night, I found out that there's a ghost machine story in the twelve issue image anniversary books that came out last year and it, i bought them all straight away digitally because i really wanted to read the ghost machine story because i'm an idiot i can't wait for like a month for the trade to come out so in that there is like a two-page scotty young story in each of those issues so there's 12 issues of it and it's in that other style it, and it's basically him He's in the stories, like, but they're like a bit like reading, um, like, like newspaper cartoons, like that yeah. you would read. Like, it's just like little <laughs> short com comedy stories that he's done about him and his family, and they're they're really fun. But it's in that style. 
Here's what? Cliff. Oh, look Here at is. this. Look at this. So so why why is it that on Tony's show? Tony's oh, show yeah. you were Clifford, but on my show you're Cliff. I switched it. it this is less formal. <laughs> Right, it's less formal because this is Clifford International. Oh, <laughs> it's better. It's better than me, like Simon and then sign. Yeah. No, actually, so it was Clifford because I used Streamyard to make a video for work about being a care navigator, uh -huh. and then I was quickly trying to fix it for Tony's. So I took out the care navigator, but it was still Clifford. And then now that I had a moment to breathe while I'm on while I'm on whatnot with DJ Links. I was like, oh, let me fix this to Cliff. And I, uh, I won oh, my right. X-Men covers. I got three of the covers I wanted. Which ones? Yeah. I got the, his only gold foil, I won it. And then I won the Trade Virgin <laughs> uh, yellow one that's not gold. But, you know. Trade Virgin yellow one. Yeah. How, how much How much moolah-ish? Don't, don't tell us what you paid. But like, what Altogether, we Altogether, about like? 55 for everything. Oh, okay. That yeah, that's. But that's, I got his only reasonable. gold one, so yeah. that makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah, that's awesome. Tremendous. Like, what is this whatnot con thing? Don't do it. Seems like a con to me. <laughs> like in of the wrong way. I've never it's done it. Con like, con. What that's is it? it is. Like, it's just you join, and they've got books specifically See? for. So, is, so is that, is that the all it is is whatnot as yes. whatnot, but they want to just throw in the con to make it. Feels more special, but there's nothing really special. But they have to be a part of it. Are they, is, there is some special things to it, right? Like all well, of yeah. their, all of their worthy sellers all received special items, including these X Men books that I'm after. Uh, but they see. all received so, special items to sell during this no, this time frame. No, they all they all everybody that's part of it received the care packet, and um, you had to you had to apply to it. So you have to apply to it just the same way as you apply for a convention table. Only difference is you're not really paying for it, but there was there was people so they, that they could be advertised. You know what I mean? So it, it was it was more for advertising sake than anything. Yeah, it, may, it makes sense for them. Yeah, sure. As as DVH said, it's a great con. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <A> con. <laughs> it's a con as opposed to a con. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, do they are they paying shipping or anything? Like, are they what? What, what is their like? No, what, why it, are they making this special? Same as I'm always. Sure. It's the same as always, except there are special items that you've received as a seller, right? And of course, as a seller, and this is supposed to be a con, right? You try to take advantage of the situation and have special offerings. So you could have special buy it nows, which I saw a lot of people do. Um, like I got two foil um, cost of mysteries, virgin virgin foils, the one where Swamp Thing's eyes are closed and the one where Swamp Thing's eyes are glowing, but they're both foil, right? And I got mm -hmm. that from Comics Tom for 20 bucks. Yeah, they also mm -hmm. had, um, they were also doing um, special, special um, you know how they give $10 to whatnot? They were giving $20 instead. Yeah, and you, and people you invited who were new got that twenty dollar bonus. I wish Spidey were here because I'm holding a book and I want I want Spidey and Rob to see it. Yeah, sorry, I can't make you big because I don't. No, no, you don't. I don't need that. I just want you guys to be able to see it. Mm. But in the meantime. I don't have to be big for you guys to see this. Super villain team up. That's right. I got his shroud first appearance. <laughs> You're big on the shroud. You're consistent. No, you know why? You know why? Because no, it's off Mark. <laughs> like, is that, because is that of why? Mark, right? <laughs> but like, and Mark does not understand. Like, we all have these, like, these conversations slash arguments about like what is interesting storytelling and i have always loved always loved sideline characters being brought to the forefront to tell an interesting and relevant story you know i can't wait to find out why the f this guy is moon knight can't wait you know and listen does he look like him 
<laughs> well, that's the other thing is it's hilarious, right? Because Shroud was designed to be the, the Engelhart made a Batman clone by designing the Shroud. Moon Knight is often looked at as a Batman clone. So I think it's hilarious that we've got a <laughs> we've got a Batman playing a Batman counter Batman in the Marvel universe. So it's it, like I got a kick out of that. But this whole thing started a while ago. I was looking for cheap slabs for only slabs. That's right, Mark. You know I love you know I love that. And <laughs> and uh, I'm like I'm like Rob. I was shopping just to be on your show. <laughs> so um. So anyhow, I um. I super villain team up was on my radar because it was a 7.0 for only 35 bucks and because it was a first appearance. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Then suddenly out of nowhere, just days after I decide I want a book, it exploded on cover price and in, in their top 10. Yeah, that is nice. When the, when, when you get something cheap and then suddenly out of nowhere, it, it blows Except up. Except I never got the slab because the explosion happened, and uh, all, so every, but there were only three copies cancel. of the book left. And of the three copies of the book left, I bought the two that had no water damage, and the last one that had water damage, someone picked up anyway. But on eBay for forty-two bucks, I picked up this little gem that I think Spidey and Rob could appreciate. Although DVH right now is killing me. Oh no! Don't yeah! Don't, I don't want to poo on your parade. That, that's uh... very nice. I love your. It I love is your very first cool. Titans, though. I love your first Titan. No, I think, well, I, have, I think I have one of those in my giveaway bin. I uh, I got this like Not really those, cheap no. just before the James Gunn announcement. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just been sat in the hallway for for a little while, but yeah, I, I'm really happy that I managed to snag it just before it went. A little bit higher, yeah. It's, it's a nice one, yeah. But yeah, I just ruined your 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 reveal there, Cliff. I apologize. It's fine. Is it though? It's it not is. though, is it? Is it, it is. No, that's not ruining anything. Oh shit! Marcus is here now. See, everything's even better. It's no. even better. Everything I got, is I got, I got I got sexy dad bod right next to me. It's, it's great. Oh yeah. It's I cool. already called my friend Tom, who's a photographer, and I, I showed him the video of the fireman stomping on flaming water. And he's like, yo, I know just the alcohol solution to buy to make it happen. So we're gonna the dad bod revolution is gonna be phenomenal. <laughs> I'll buy that the calendar. All. Just, that was just all. so you know. Oh, DVH, you got to be in it, buddy. With the mask. No shirt on, but all the makeup and mask. We need it. It's got to happen. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do it for shits and giggles. Why not? Like, <laughs> this is for the dad bod revolution. It must Poor. be televised. I, nobody, I, nobody wants to see that. Just should, I, exactly. should, I D, should, I you, should I DM you a video on how to make the uh, how to make the solution to set the water on fire so that your <laughs> wife can do it just right for you? I'm all talk these days. I don't see myself doing another video. but we, Until unless, I show up with unless, Tom and I'm like, we're doing it's it. Funny. If it's funny, I'm down. What's, but after I did... What's funny about after I did that, that? After I did that, some people took that ball and ran with it, and uh, I think that that bit ran its course. <laughs> it was funny while it lasted, though. It was magical. You might call it What's the up? golden age of the dad ball. Yes, it's just beginning too. Some Who's of you got some, music. Some of you got some amazing dad bod to work with. Who's bumping music? I'm bumping music because I'm watching DJ Links's and whatnot. So oh. I'm not. I'm Is not he on, on right now? Let me give him a viewer. I'm not on here for long, but I I, I couldn't help myself but ask this question. Cliff, you were throwing around the comment that whatnot with this uh, whatnot con is a con. What exactly makes it a con? Because how what it makes, was what makes it a con? What makes it a con is that it's not really a convention to begin with. Yeah, but you, you gave us a, a con. And then, 
Like, they entice you. Know, right? you. Okay. They entice you, like they entice me by being. Look at these X Men packs, but they're not real X Men packs. And then you're watching people's shows, and you're being held hostage till the X Men stuff is revealed late in the show. Like to me, that's maybe it's not exactly a con. Maybe it's a little more in the bait and switch arena, but it just doesn't feel earnest. Yeah, well, what's the difference between that and a conventional con that they throw all these exclusive for the con out there and they entice you to come in there? Because I can go in the door, go right up to the table, and get the exclusive. Not if you, you, you run out before you get there. That does not always happen. Like, hey, it does instance, happen, though. I, right, but usually the majority of them are not. Like, like New York Comic Con this year, it was, G, it was Duke versus Cobra Commander, right? Duke you only got if you made it to that exposition that they did. Cobra Commander was sitting there for 20 bucks waiting for you after you went and saw the Duke thing. Yeah. But you did, not everybody got a Duke. Yeah. But again, uh, not everybody uh, went yeah, in there looking yeah. for Duke. So, but the but I'm saying when someone says, "Oh, this convention, we're going to have this exclusive blah 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 like Megacon and the foil Spider-Man Right, like it's there. Like if I had been there and I went in on day one, I would have gotten it for fifty bucks that morning, no problem. I'm gonna give you a news flash. All the cons, whether they're digital cons or whether they're, uh, or whether they're conventional, you know, like you know, go in the uh, cons, they're all gimmicks. They're all fucking gimmicks. They they get you to come in there, drop your money, and it's all a gimmick. And, and we go because we like our stuff. We want stuff. That's basically what it comes down to. The only reason I bring that up is because we, we all are like immediately like to throw arrows and like shoot uh, like shoot down things. And I don't have any pony in the race, honestly, with the, with the whatnot thing. But, you know, it's no different than any other digital cons. Elite Comics did a digital con the other time, uh, the other day, uh, the other week, whenever it was. Uh, all the, all these, uh, they're all doing these things. I have a question. Who the fuck is this, and where is CJ? I'm. I was just thinking the same exact thing. <laughs> I, I, I was alone, and and that he seemed so calm, didn't he? What? what yeah, I'm on my fucking sedatives. That's why. What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm calm. What the fuck? There we go. That's the CJ we know and love. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Coming in here, to, I was having in, a I was having in. a lovely time coming in here having a peaceful conversation, defending the corporate. Yeah, defending something that was. Yeah, that was the aspect that got. I'm, me. I'm not defending anything, but my point is, if you're gonna throw a throw like a, you were being level headed, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm just saying, you're gonna make a level headed or something. You're a thought, have some substance behind have it. Some reason to thought without freaking over being overly emotional and expect us to recognize you. Yeah. Uh. Listen, I don't need to freaking be an over emotional. I'm not a freaking woman. Lady. Oh. Oh, so no, anyhow, no, no, no. so CJ, like I I, I completely understand. Oh, I'm to, <laughs> I've been going to conventions since I was 13 years old. My point is like knowing exactly what the deal is, right? Versus you know, I had to watch a bunch of streams, and it was like, and it was full of shit. You know, how about, I mean? how about I give you another con? How about this? At least when you went on the whatnot digital con, the you know the make believe uh, digital con, you didn't have to pay entrance. Why do you have to go and pay entrance to go buy stuff at premiums at the regular cons, and then pay on top of it for signatures and all this shit that they charge you? Why do you have to pay an yeah, entrance? I don't care what the really, charges. I, I mean, honestly, after my last big show, it's literally become just about who I see there. You know, and maybe if I'm lucky with heroes, there will be some decent shopping. No, um, but the, answer the question. Why do we have to pay entrance to go pay more in these cops? These should oh, fucking kiss our I'm, asses I'm, to go I'm, there. I think it's ridiculous, and I certainly am not there to pay more, which is why going to a con has become more about the social experience. Especially one like New York. Like one like New York. They should kiss our ass to go there and spend our freaking gazillions over there to freaking buy their stupid exclusives and the signatures that are overpriced compared to the rest of the country and the, the, the remarks and the commissions that they charge you a premium. Why? Because we're in New York. 
That's why. Yeah, how about that? That's that's really beautiful. Pay for, over over pay, You're paying for the <laughs> You're paying for the Javits prices, that's what it is. <laughs> and you ain't wrong but when I say that. We you're should make Pop Javits. big. Pop should be big. Hold on. Pop is amazing. We should <laughs> make Pop big. <laughs> I fucking come out of my fucking slum and I uh, get this fucking guy to fucking uh, uh, point his fingers at me. Stop fingering me. Stop it. Stop it. I don't like that. You being fingered? Stop fingering me. I don't like that. Thank you. Right, I thank do you. believe that fingering should be a consensual experience for sure. Yes, yeah, right. No means no. <laughs> Marcus, I see you're entering the finger zone. How's it going over there? I'm just giving it a try to see. Are you mocking me? <laughs> hey, hey, I want to join the hand talker community. Hey, hey, no, you, you're not allowed. You, you don't get oh, oh, that, That's like a that. great idea. Let's just all join the I'm, hand talker I'm, community. I'm, gate, I'm gatekeeping the hand communicators, all right? So you're not allowed. Bust, you're not allowed. Bust through, you do, Papa. You're out. Both of you Izzy, out. Izzy, you need a sock for your sock for your sock puppet action. Izzy's hand movements are so ridiculous and they're not even worth me commenting on. To be fair, I feel like Papa has much more right over the hand talking community than you do, CJ. Just saying. Yeah. Um, are you are you questioning my hand community rights? I'm saying that you, you have every, every right to be in the hand, hand community rights. Papa what? is the king of the hand community. Are you putting my status? What are you putting my status in doubt? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> I don't know. I don't is question your. I, I don't. I don't question your foul status. Yeah, you, 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 I'm a mal. Thank you. Yeah. Half man, <laughs> half owl. To be clear, I, I, I think you're more of a foul. Oh, there's a giveaway. Let me get in there. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't, okay. uh, I, I don't question it. You, know, you could be poultry no, you're for You're absolutely yeah. right. I have no. I have no reason to argue with you over this. But well, also, I'm hands. nearly out of battery, so I have to say goodbye, <laughs> and I will be in the chat. I will Listen see you later. Me, I have hands. Later. I don't put gloves on. Who's see you later, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. He put the mask on, and all of a sudden, he's a mouth. I don't. I have hands. I don't have to put a gloves on my hands to, to prove that I have hands. I have them. That gives me my status. Taco? Taco. Taco. Actually, quesadilla. Feel disturbed. <laughs> no, I'll be right back. <laughs> do, 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 do. For a live stream is the best thing impossible to have, uh, Spidey. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Good job keeping the conversation going. I'm so sorry. Do Rob, what are you deep in thought over? I'm listening to you guys at the same time I'm doom scrolling Facebook. <laughs> oh, no, doom scrolling. No, Robert, no. You do Facebook's message. Me. Hey, what, what the fuck, Papa? No, no, Papa. No, 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 no. No, Papa. Don't do that. Don't no, do that. No, don't do that. No, I don't like that. Don't do that. Got everything. <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> Do it again, oh Papa. God. Do it again. It's not funny. No, don't do that. Fucking guy. No. 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 Oh, no. Did you make the decision that you're going to Heroes Con yet? Who? You. I made my decision a long time ago. You never said you were going or not. You always said, I'm not sure. Because none of your fucking business with I'm going. I told the people that matter. My business is not my business. I'm asking a question. I'm asking a question. Are you going or are you not? You ask your questions to whoever you want. I'm not answering you. Okay, if so I'm you're there, going. If I'm there, you're going to see me. If I'm not there, you're not going to see me. How's that sound? Or maybe uh -huh. I will be there and you won't know if you see me or not. Maybe I'll be in the, in the shadows. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. I'll, I'll see you. You're going to be slamming my book? I said this a hundred times. I, I I got my tickets. I got my fucking hotel. I got the fucking the, the pass. But 
fucking life has thrown me a fucking bunch of curveballs. I don't know for sure if I'll be able to commit to it because, you know, things happen in life. That's it. You got to gotta be out, you got to be able to get your money back for any of the stuff that you've. I, I put insur- I put insurance on the on the fucking airplane tickets and, uh, and with the and with the room I could camp yeah. up to forty eight hours before that. Yeah. So you know the only thing I'll lose completely is the the passes. I'm sure I'll find somebody that would want them. I got VIP pass for the whole weekend. So not that's not that much. So yeah. So if if there's somebody that like if I can't go and somebody wants a VIP pass for the whole weekend, I'll give it to them. I don't plan on doing it, so don't ask me to give it to you, because maybe I will go. But yeah, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> if I don't go, will he go or will he won't go? Dun, 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 dun. The only thing I ask in return is if I do give it to somebody, they, they send me that bag that they give them. They give them like a special bag for from like, a, like a like a tote bag or something. Or? Yes, I want well, you, that. You want the tote? You don't want what the contents in the bag. I don't give a fuck about the car. I want the bag. The bag is what's important. Why is the bag so important? Because bags are important. People don't put enough emphasis on <laughs> bag. Oh, don't start. You want me to give you a bag? Give you a bag. He has, re- he has his reasons. Did you see me at King Kong this year? No. Guess why? You had a bag. bag. No bags last year. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That, that'll show them. Well, they, whether they shows them or not, I don't have to go. What, what if we? What if we made up a comic screen cancer bag? <gasps> well, do not. I, I, I would love one. I would you love should, to get a, a C3 Actually, bag. you should make a comic screen cancer bag. I looked into it. They're not cheap. No. I was thinking about making my own bags. They charge you a gazillion dollars for each one when I was there. <laughs> but I don't. I'm not going to do that. The, pro- the problem, so I like, problem I, with them I is like, like I like that one better. So what you're saying is you're you're a you're a bag man. Because the bagless community doesn't deserve my bags. That's why. Mm. Okay. Stay bagless. Pro bag. Freaking bagless apologizers. Hand community bag. I'm pro bag. There, there you go. Yeah, you know what? Where'd you get that? Five blow. Five blow. Yes. Yeah. You you know how much you get them for? I don't know. I actually, this one was actually free. Yeah, but they, they, if you have to pay one, they charge you thirty-five cents a bag. That's very, very reasonable. That's incredible. That's very and four for a dollar. That's very, very really reasonable. So why can't freaking Comic Con guys make their own bags? We can, not but we don't have that kind of scale of volume. And so when we look at, so if I look in, I, when I was looking, I'm at not it, talking I'm, about C3. I'm talking about the no, freaking no, no. dealers. But I'm get, it's again, the same problem for them, though. It's, there's still a scale. Oh, right, of what it costs. Just a bit. If you want more than one color, right, on a bag, like you're talking at the, at the low on a lower end production scale, you're talking at just under four dollars a bag, which means if I'm going to produce 500 bags, now I'm talking all of a sudden I'm going to come up with, you know, two thousand dollars. Yeah, I get that. You know what I'm saying? First of all, I, I, you don't have to do multicolored bags. Second of all, charge a couple bucks for the bag. Well, but there's, there's if a it's difference a total, a... even up to five bucks, people will pay for it. Depend. Well, but it it for it. It. so now you're so now the volume that you yeah, but, but, but you, you know, but but here's the other thing. You know what I'm saying? But if you're gonna spend Fair a few lot. hundred dollars at a freaking dealer, throw the fucking bag in. Oh, get it. That's how it works. You know, I'm not telling you to, to give a guy that buys a couple of dollar books to, to get a bag with it. Pay for the bag. Girl. But at least have boy. a bag to o- offer. Spidey, I love that sweatshirt, man. That's the I want one. What's his name? I want one. Yoshi. <laughs> oh, Yoshi, baby. Rob, it's, oh, called cu- uh, it's called customer service. You know what I'm saying? You want the person that comes to your booth to have a great experience. So they, they go buy a bunch of shit. They, how are they going to carry the shit? Put it in something. Well, I don't know else have a you. Job, Obviously, you and I are different. But when I go to a convention, I assume. Um, yes. Uh, well, that's cool. Are you making a quilt for him? For C3. 
Ooh. 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 That's so Very awesome. Cool. That is pretty cool. To hang off of his um wheelchair? Or no, is it a bag? Oh, it's a bag? Is it a it's bag? It's a bag? That's amazing. Look at no, this towel. It's a wall hanging. Wall hanging. Oh, it's a wall hanging. That's okay. awesome, though. So you can put a towel through here, through the top here. It's nice. beautiful. Oh, very cool. Wow. That is awesome. Sweet. Representing awesome. DC. Really very cool, Papa. Very cool, Nara. Very creative you, of you, Mama. Yeah. Uh, hey. Papa, I know that we're very different. I mean, uh, Rob, well, right. I know we're very different, but I, I know for a fact you could, you could think with a business mind as well. It's just well, called good business, I, what I'm I saying. I can understand that Ooh. aspect potentially, but, you know, when I from a con perspective, my assumption mm -hmm. is that as I, the, the consumer is coming in expecting to be able to think he's, he's going to buy loose books. He's thinking, how am I going to protect these? How am I going to take care of them? Now, I have been to cons where people have asked me, do I need a bag? And they've got some shopping bags or something that they've got. And I'm like, no, no, no. I don't, yeah. don't want to put my comics in a cheap plastic bag. I've got boxes and stuff to put them in inside my carry around bag because I'm prepared. Portfolio. Com completely it. understand. And and it's the consumer's prerogative whether they want to use their bags that they offer mm. or not. However, mm. however, they should offer it. Whether but with a fee or for free, doesn't matter. They should have it to offer. What I do shows I, I have a I have bags. Huh? You know, my, yeah. my new policy is every time I go to a con or a show. I go in and I buy a bunch this of stuff. This kind of bag? This kind of bag. If they, if they no, no, don't no. give me a bag with a like shopping bag. Or, 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 You're or, such a brat, me a bag. DJ. You're such a brat. If they don't offer me a bag, I tell them, you know what? Keep your it's books. I'll buy them from a guy that gives me a such bag. A brat. This, this is one of his classic grants right here. I'm not wrong. I'm not like I'm, brat. I'm having, I'm I'm having brat days with you. You know what? I'm 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 a paying customer, and I want to get my, my I want to get a good experience at a, at a regular hey, store. Right. At, a, at a regular store, I expect it. At a flea market or convention, I do not expect it. If they have so, you, bonus. so are we relegating the cons and the conventions down to flea markets? If that's the case, then no, I said I said flea markets and cons. So well, then, not, then, then so I should be able to negotiate like a, not like a, brick a flea and mortar market. store. You can negotiate at a con. Yeah, well, I'll give them flea market negotiating if that's the case. If they want to, if they want to play that the, that like bagless game, okay, no problem. Now, now I'm gonna freaking drill them as far as the pricing is concerned. Now, is it is the bag? What kind of bag is important to you, or is just a bag in general? Something to carry it in. God damn it! Something no, so you just want any any type of bag will do for you. Listen, I've got people offer me to give me uh, short boxes to put the shit I bought in. That was no problem. Give me something to carry it in. Why so you want to carry on, bro? That's how it works. He needs the hands for to to make you know expression. What am I, a freaking donkey to carry shit all over the place? No. Yes. In a, in a bag yes, or a freaking box. And not when, a donkey done. won't be able to carry anything without anything before it. You're a massive know. jackass. You're right. <laughs> Listen, I didn't offend you once. <laughs> You're not a jackass. You basically opened up the door for me to start talking to you the way I normally talk to you. Go, go ahead. No, I mean, I, I don't understand. I, I'm, I've only been kind to you since I've been on to this uh, stream, and now you call me a jackass. Because my threshold for patience has been... Uh, Would you like me to call you the mule woman? Uh, how about you? I call you mule. Uh, <laughs> yes, mule you're, day. You're, you're the I'm, mule. You're, you're the nag. You're How's just that? jealous that you don't have a kangaroo pouch to store your shit in. Ooh. Well, you're going to kangaroo pouch shit? There you go. If, yeah, I did. I was a little more if God wanted you to have comics, he would have given you a kangaroo pouch, and I was born uh, do, do, do you have a pouch in yep. your in, Oh, you do? Then so I'm, you show you. I'm not going to show you. You're shaming me on my lack of a pouch. Yes. What kind of world are you? We're in 2024, and you're going to pouch shame me. Yeah. What kind of intolerant human being are you? I'm not very intolerant. Yeah, you very much are a mule woman. You're, I'm the queen of Reddit. That's all I do is I am intolerant on weird things with angry people. Oh, you're one of those. Mm -hmm. You're one of those. You're Most, one of the Reddit people. I don't know. I'm too stupid. Are you do, do you do 4chan as well? No, I don't do either, honestly. 
but right. it felt like a good narrative. Felt like the right narrative. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, why am I? Why am I island down by by myself in this? I got my I got my bag right here for my garbage. <laughs> no one has passion feel, like you do. If you Man. feel that you're on an island on this by yourself, maybe it's because you are, and you're thinking. The is Long not, Island. Well, everyone else is thinking. It Maybe doesn't mean you're. I'm, it doesn't I'm the mean, only voice or reason. No, it doesn't necessarily. Just because you have a difference of opinion and expect set a different set of expectations doesn't mean that you're wrong or that we're wrong. It just means that we have different sets of expectations of the people that we do business with at this particular type of location. It's business one hundred and one, customer satisfaction. <laughs> and talk about the bag. It's it's business one on one. You have a different set of expectations. Well, I expect good business. That's what I expect. I expect everybody, every gentleman, to wear a hat when he leaves his home. It doesn't fucking happen. So you know what? Well, that's asking for people to wear a uniform, which is not a horrible thing for people to wear uniform. Not say anything about wearing a uniform. When leaving the house, what kind of hat? Like a derby? Every gentleman used to wear a hat when he left his house. Well, not a baseball hat. No. A baseball cap? Hat. Just a hat. Any, any hat will do? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a point. Well, Some things. Well, because if you're gonna make a uniform, you have to standardize what kind no, of hat. No, 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 uniform requires everybody has the exact same style. Hence, uniform, uniformity. We're not well, doing everybody, that. Have, uh, mandating everybody should wear a hat. Uniforms. Mandating everybody. everybody should supply you with a bag. Well, no, okay. because uh, I you feel like you've hat. already. You, you I can't feel like carry comics in a hat. Have we already done this? Hey, Marcus, which came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> yeah, I mean, how about those X Men '97? Did we already talk about that? You're not going to tell me that we've done it already because it, it's not going to be over until every single vendor offers a bag at their booth, and I will show you. Them every vendor offer a bag. That's, they have to offer it. They have to offer it. They, they, they're not going to bring bags, man. They're too busy bringing boxes. Well, they kiss my ass because I won't buy from them. How's that sound? Sounds like they lucked out. So we found out the truth of what happened to Jen. So how about OJ, man? Huh? The when they, when they cry that nobody wants to buy and nobody's willing, willing to pay a premium. Guess what? Because you're getting is. A, a shitty service, so you get shitty prices. As if far you, as you, you, so, you, so you do go to New York Comic Con. If you get there early, you can get bags. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have no problem with that. Another one. I gotta get ready to send my next shipment off to. And New York Comic Con, there was not one vendor I went to, and I bought something from it that did not offer me either a bag or something to carry it. Hmm. Even, even, I even got a whole bunch of promotional shit from Tops and from some freaking Dragon Ball shit and all kinds. Anybody of stuff. who would like to make sure that this conversation can never have to continue on, and that you have extra shopping bags, just hit me up. I will send you CJ's address, and you can no. send all your plastic shopping bags after you've got grocery shopping bags to him, so he has plenty of bags. He can then distribute them to convention retailers in his area to ensure that they can supply bags. With everybody, no, mm -hmm. it is not my Doing job to do their job for them. Do you understand? And by the way, I didn't ever mention this because it annoyed the shit out of me. Somebody had sent me a box of freaking shopping bags a couple months ago, and I never perfectly <laughs> did I didn't say who was the, who I don't was know. the hero. I fucking the address is the fucking return address. I, I don't Damn understand. What the I want to know who that hero is. I've, I've been sent spam. That way, I've been spent. I said freaking shopping bags. That way, I've been sent don't, 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 I, something else. I was said I'm not going to tell you, really, but a dildo. But I'm not telling you. All right. Well, I mean, what, like, I talked about this before and got to this point. I was like, I'm not going to talk about it. Somebody sent me something. I'm not going to say what it is. And I know it has to be somebody I know or somebody that knows somebody I know because I don't give my address to everybody. So, like, whoever whoever did the pranks on me, ha, 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 you're funny. Ha, ha, ha. I'm not going to give you freaking attention. That's it. Somebody sent me a freaking... I really want to say that I love the extra rope. 
The extra what? It looks so much better now. Proper job. Oh, extra what? Extra what are you talking about? Yeah, muted. The extra, the extra row of comics. He, he was on only slabs. His wall didn't go down far enough. Now and he had three. And he had three rows. Who clipped? Yeah, I had two rows at that day. Oh, I, and I, now I, I'm at four. Yeah, proper job. Well, congratulations, you have another row. Very you. nice. What? 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 CJ, CJ is I'll there? Just miss of you. Is there a savory, like in, in Greek cuisine, is there a savory version of baklava called something else? No, you, you don't put like a Greek delight of sweetness and make it savory. Shut the fuck up. It's almonds, it's walnuts, it's phyllo dough, it's syrup, it's, it's honey. You don't, you don't make that savory. Why would you do that? That's spinach pie. That's panacopita. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. That's Jesus. meat pie. It's goulash. According, according, according to these people. Yeah, that's not baklava. Is it basically it's savory baklava? It's a no, meat. it's not. That, that, that's for uh, like uh, ignorant people that don't know. I'm Tell telling me. you so you know, so you're not ignorant. Okay, thank you. You don't make baklava savory. It's sweet. It's supposed to be sweet. That's it. So, you people in Greece don't pair that. What do you call the stuff? The um, that kind of uh, bread that you know what I'm talking about? It's not freaking bread. It's phyllo dough. Phyllo. Okay. So phyllo. You phyllo so you dough. Don't pair phyllo. You don't pair phyllo dough with anything savory in Greek cuisine. Sure you do, but it's not called baklava. That's but see, I was asking, do you have a savory corollary? And you said no. And no, so now you said that we make a savory baklava. There's two different things. <laughs> you, you you could ask me, do you have a savory uh, dish that you make with phyllo dough? Yeah, we have plenty of those. You make spanakopita, which has spinach inside. You you, you make uh, cheese pies. You can make meat pies. You can make mushrooms. You can make all kinds of stuff. Swiss you chard. Call a pie that's filled with hate. You. <laughs> Malakias. That's what I would call it. <laughs> Mule woman, lady fantastic. Mm -hmm. God. Mm. Well, How about the Don't make a mockery of my Greek Greek I wasn't. I was. I was. Have, I was really have the, curious. Oh, DJ acted little like a little bitch troll. I was genuinely. We, we have the greatest cuisine in the world. She you simply asked a question. Yeah, with the worst representative. No, Hoping that maybe you would have an answer that would be constructive and reasoned, I think, I think as I you did when you first perfect. came in. This I, th I thought I just make a perfect uh, description of everything. You yeah. do think that a lot. You've got a very high esteem of your own um, words. Yeah, no, so no, no self-esteem problems with CJ. No, I'm not a self-hating person. I love myself. You know what? You've got enough. I also love myself. For a small sometimes IMA twice a night. Like <laughs> so, I I watched the X Men seven. Did you weep and eat spanakopita? I'm sorry to interrupt you, Cliff. Finish your thought, please. No, I, I, I really, I've been looking up bulk tote bags like crazy, and I just cannot find, like, I can't find, like, like I don't know how Five Below does it. I don't. I can't find anyone that'll do mass production tote bags for under $1.29 each. You, you can when you're doing um, actual manufacturing as opposed to going through one of these print on demand vendors or something so if you go through like a vista print or any of these type of things where you as a normal person would be in contact those you're going to get you can't get below that price but if you are a, a business a corporation and you go directly to some of these manufacturers in china and stuff and do it you can get them for pennies on the pennies on the dollar you are correct sir your most expensive uh, part of the expense would be the actual shipping over the yeah. actual materials themselves. Yeah, because those are pretty done quick. Because, like, for example, I know that we used to, as I used to work for a company, an audio company, we made headphones, right? A set of headphones that would cost you like $300 here in the US, 
the, the cost of goods for manufacturers is about twenty dollars and then you'd have to then shipping it would get here but then all the rest of the markup comes from the various reselling points that come throughout the chain where everybody wants to get 50 plus points of margin on everything. And next thing you know, all of a sudden it's $300. You don't have to look past the sneaker business. Look how cheap they make the sneakers down there and they sell them for like two, 300 bucks over here. Mm -hmm. You know, a couple of bucks they cost to make the, the sneakers over there. Let's talk about how CEOs aren't worth the money they're getting paid. Let's talk about that. According to who? Oh, God. No, according to who? who uh, according to who are the CEOs not worth the money? The, Which CEOs the, are we talking about? The vast, ma the, the vast majority of large corporations whose CEOs make insane amounts of money compared to their line employees who actually do the work. Well, does CEO, CEO and become a CEO? When a CEO of the company can make makes you know essentially 20, 30 employees make, he doesn't do the same amount of work as twenty or thirty. Understood. But did the CEO just hatch out of an egg and become a CEO overnight? No. So they basically had to pay their dues before they became a CEO. Maybe. Not, really. Not necessarily. Maybe. Maybe not. I'm just asking these questions. There's a is there any, right, is and, there, and, it's is not, there any, and there's no hundred percent on any of this either, right? If, obviously, if the there's CEO, some. There are some of them who obviously are in the limelight, who attract way more attention, and whose salaries are probably more disproportionate to their level than others. There are there are also probably a large number that exist that are aren't paid ridiculous amounts, right? But if a CEO, uh, based on their value and their decision making. Uh, grows a multi-million dollar pro, uh, business into a multi-billion dollar business uh, or has like 10 to 20 percent returns every year upon year do you think they are not worth what they what they're making do not make fun of me you freaking hillbilly the qu the question might be though that goes along with that depends i think it goes hand in hand with what their employees are making Right. If if the people who are doing if the people who are doing the work are getting barely can't sus can't sustain themselves, do, do working a forty hour week, and everything else can't take can't afford to live without having to have another job or, or anything else. Meanwhile, the CEO is making over a million dollars a year. Then I think there's a disproportionate amount. Well, that's a, that's a different. Right. Uh, and that's where the, and that's where and that's really I think where the dispar where people start to talk about the disparity go. It's not a I think you know is whether or not. That's where it gets obscene, right? Is when those in those situations when you take an example like the Walmart CEO. It's not to say that the Walmart CEO, for example, can't, you know, may not do something that makes his shareholders lots of money and stuff. Um, but at the same time, does if their employees rely majority of their employees rely on social assistance in order to to survive? And they're well, making what, kind of, what kind of work that they do as well, doesn't it? If look, there's a huge number of of, of Walmart employees who have to who get her on wealth, welfare, or various types of welfare in order to survive and sustain their families because they're not paid enough, they don't get the right benefits or anything else, right? The fact that the company can make, can make huge amounts of profits because they don't pay their employees and allow the government to subsidize them. And then the CEO gets rewarded for making sh shareholders that kind of money. So by by relying, having his employees rely on government handouts, so they pour more money into his pockets. That's that's the type of issue where it becomes, is the, yes, I understand it's capitalism and all these types of things, but doesn't mean the system is 100% right and perfect either. Would you would you believe that it would be a better solution for them to raise all the uh, employees, even the base uh, employees in there, all their wages to uh, uh, above uh, living wages and just get rid of a whole bunch of lower tier employees and automate their systems like uh, uh, put automated registers in there and that kind of thing? Would that help uh, the, the situation? I don't know. I don't happening? know. I don't. I don't know what their solution is. I'm just automated I'm, registers are not I'm helping, working anymore. I'm helping to make the argument here. Lady Fantastic posed a question. I'm helping to explain. I'm not sitting here trying to 
promote or solve the problem because I don't have an understanding of how to do that. It's beyond my level of understanding. Okay. I just think the question that lady posed was a little bit blanket over. Stop making fun of me. <laughs> stop making fun of me. Okay. I, I, I just think that was a blanket statement uh, that covers the good and the bad. I didn't ask this yeah. question. I, I made a statement. Well, okay. Anyway, you, look how many people look down when CJ is talking. Like they're look. I'm looking away at something else. Well, yeah, I have that. I'm like a shining light. Everybody has to look away from the light. I just know I'm you're not going to convince CJ of anything you, in a conversation. You never look straight into the sun. I'm like the so sun. I'm not, you're I'm, the not in, I'm not at all interested in engaging him in something. I think like I know that. why he's so focused on bags. Because he could. Bags and CEOs. He can't argue himself out of one. Really? I think I may make a really valid argument. Right. I'm going to. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go watch shit about P Diddy and feel better about my life. No, I'm just kidding. what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think it's supposed to work that way. Well. <laughs> no, it's awful, isn't it? Um, I've been talking with my friends about I could how talk, I could talk about him if you want. Huh? I could talk about P Diddy if you want. I have talk an about that. Talk, talk about that. Do you That's... think it's all real? Caroline all is all the allegations are the same. I yeah, you did it with um, Vince McMahon, of course. Um, well, do you I think all the allegations about Vince it McMahon are clear. Clear. It seems pretty clear that people have been telling on Diddy for a long time now, and we're just now paying attention. Yeah, Why do you think I, you got away with it so long? Money. Money. Yep. Money, power, and respect, what you need in life. Money, and, power, and respect, he, you ain't eating right. He was, do you think he, was he killed Biggie? He's mentored by people that, that have, do this on an even bigger scale. I would have no idea about such things. Do you think oh, he took out Biggie? Do you think he took out Tupac? There's no way for me to know. No, something. this is bigger. Way bigger. Uh, bigger Here's than taking out human beings? That's horrible. This is about <laughs> a lot of human beings. All right, just like All right enough of this. Can we talk <laughs> about yeah, the Drake? Please. The Drake what? cucumbers. Look at this cucumber. That's Why quite a freaking cucumber you got there. Why a cucumber? This is terrible. Do you even YouTube, bro? Yeah, no. This is. Want to talk about why cucumbers are better than men or something? Cucumber. Yeah, I quite have a cucumber. You got a foot long hot dog. Oh, here we go with the fucking hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to compare. Look at this cucumber. Well, those those wieners look kind of, you know, wimpy next to that cucumber. This is an Oscar Mayer. How they, dare they you pump, call pump an Oscar Mayer wimpy? <laughs> looks kind of wimpy. Hey, this is the ad placement of the video. So, the girth alone, but I think mm -hmm. the length is more important. Both are you... very important. Could I you maybe have show I, uh, your own cucumber items? I, I believe girth is what what it makes the it makes the difference. I think you should see how much of that can fit in I your mouth. A lot of women say that too. Mm -hmm. no, That's what I've been told. <laughs> I think you should deep throat it. Yeah. <laughs> she got caught. Her? <laughs> he got caught. What are you doing? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm so sorry. His what? Oh no! <laughs> His wife walked in on him. <laughs> I didn't mean to ruin your marriage. Oh fuck. <laughs> I'm just a terrible, vulgar human being. And Matt's gone. <laughs> you, you, you made Matt leave. I don't think it was me that made him leave. I it's think awful. Matt made himself leave. That's what Someone's got some splaining to do. Uh, <laughs> you had a question in his life now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, I think, I think he's walking you. We she married. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, 
Oh my gosh, Miss Miss Bay wife, what Mrs. Bay? Mrs. Uh, wife by the Bay. Uh, <laughs> I was just trying to humiliate your husband, and um, I, I did. I think I actually did humiliate. I don't think you were trying to humiliate it. I think he did it to himself. <laughs> I did. <laughs> All right, sorry about that, Beckerman. You missed it. Yeah, so Beckerman's cool. back right now. <laughs> Matt, oh, come back on and. Sh no. So, Cliff, Matt, are you, you officially the going to Heroes? Not officially going yet. Unofficially. Unofficially. Sure. So we're not a, we're not allowed to ask you whether you could go to Heroes Con, but you're asking others. That's right. Also, that right. Also, let me defend CJ for a moment. He did tell you what was up. I know. Look at Rob's face. <laughs> he did say what was up. He did say he's got the ticket, and he did say that there was a there. I'll be honest. Boo. I was just to hear that the first time. Thank no you, defending Cliff. CJ. Boo. Thank you. Boo. Thank you for actually having ears that function and actually listen Boo. to people talk. You have functional ears. That's right. He has functional ears, unlike you. Well, I have functional ears. They're stuffed with rats. That's the problem. You can't uh, hear that's a different story. Cliff can listen. You probably because he lives upstate and he has clear oxygen. Probably. We do have well, No, should I buy this? I probably should buy it. What, you're at what con? What not con or something? I'm on. Uh, why are you upset with people agreeing with me, uh, Marcus? Because you hate it when people, you know, agree with uh, uh, reasonable people. Is that the problem? You know, people, people agree with you, and the next thing you know, I have to listen to a thirty-minute rant about bags. That's why. <laughs> listen, we're off the bag. You, you keep bringing it back up. I can't no, continue to talk about bags. No, I have I'm no good. Issue. I'm good. I'm just saying we can't let you get too big in your head, otherwise that's where it'll go. You gotta be careful about these things, Cliff. Cliff, uh, you don't need to give me give me a big Just head. I, I, I was interested in the bag situation <laughs> so, because you were so defending you know, him. Erica, I don't you need your like, validation listen, to tell me how so great CJ, I am. I know how CJ's great I am. Head, CJ's head, the way the head that we don't see, is probably as big as the watcher's head. That's what you're saying. That, that's how big of a head he has. Yes. You're not wrong. Watcher head. Watch your head. So you're not you're not going to, to heroes anymore, CJ. I thought we were going to hug each other. I'm not going. I'm out again. Were you not listening? Do oh, you have really? mucus in your ears too? <laughs> you started it again, Marcus. I think I just stopped listening because you were talking about the bag thing for so long. <laughs> well, you weren't listening to Cliff either because he gave a full explanation of everything I say. He relayed it black back, so you don't listen to Cliff either. I'm also watching UFC, so yeah, it's true. I'm, I'm just saying, that. I'm st I was straight up following whatnot, DJ links or whatnot, bidding against other people, winning giveaways, and I still was able to listen to CJ. Just that's saying. right. You're well, a better man. Than no, no argument here. Some of us have to pay attention to the road when we're driving. Okay, Izzy, you know that you know the driving thing gets you a free pass. We got that covered. Okay, now I got a free pass. Great, I'm happy. Do, 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 really want to know? What kind of what person needs to pay attention to a robot while they're driving? Gems, what's happening here? Rob is being a tease. He got some Berkeley, um, he got a Berkeley cash, a stash of. Did, oh, did they give you a bag, by the way, when you got those comics, Rob? Um, no. One vendor uh, asked uh, me if I wanted a bag of the vendors. I purchased that. One vendor did. Don't try. And I said, I said, no. I came prepared with my own bags and boxes. Thank you very much. But was it nice that they asked you? Was uh, it a nice gesture? No. no, because then I had to explain that I had my own bags and boxes and just walk. Well, that's your problem that you had to explain. But it was a nice but gesture. Now, now I, I'm starting to understand. So CJ does not want to be responsible to bring his own bag because he wants other people to bring the bag. Oh, we're not so on the bag. To be again, are we? About the no. bag. <laughs> it's not a question about no. being responsible or not. Well, how did that I'm coming happen? in as a consumer. I'm coming in as a how consumer. How did this happen? <laughs> 
As a consumer, so these are the books the I'm sending to my comic book press. Yes. Make, make, make Rob get, big, please. Can we make Rob big? Go, these books are going to get cleaned and pressed, and then they're going to go to CGC. So I was able to pick up the Captain America 104, Ooh, which I needed. Uh, I it's super need clean. That. It's Far, As it sits right now, it looks like it's a, a 9.2. Right now, so open and clean and press, it stays in that range. Maybe nine four, that'd be awesome because that'll fit right in in my run. Of so what what's I, your lowest one? Is your lowest one nine or nine two? Of the, um, the of the book. well, from one hundred one on up, it's eight five. Uh, one hundred is currently a six point oh, but um, I'll have to change that. Obviously. Uh, <laughs> This is amazing. Spider-Man 73. This is again is another book. This is a going to be an upgrade for what I have. What I have is actually probably like a three five right now on this book, which is dismal. And I love this cover. And this yeah, book is just, probably this is probably an eight zero eight five. Um, just an absolute great Ramita cover. Very underrated cover. Yeah, yeah I like love that. that one. I like uh, the way he's like beating the shit out of um, Spider-Man on that, he's, like ripping yeah. his shirt off. Yeah, exactly. Just like come here, let me, like pull, your, okay, let me pull your under, let me pull your underoos off. Mm -hmm. Give me a wedgie. Uh, and of course, this I was super excited to find. Yeah. I I can't so, believe you picked that up. I've been staring at a copy of that that one seller's had. For the last 12 months and he still has not moved the price from a thousand dollars and it's a it's a low grade one this but. is first black widow well, yeah first black widow, number 57 52. 52. Mm -hmm. All right. oh, yeah, so, was, uh, oh yeah i got wrong what's 57. his name right uh hawkeye i didn't know so that so the uh i'm Mark currently I'm, in the couple of issues later cur yeah. currently i'm also tracking on an issue 50 first mandarin uh, oh. That I'm currently got my got my eye on that I'm trying that I'm working on a something, but this was this was great. This is a low grade book. It's like a it's like a two five three, but it was uh, it presents well enough, and uh, the price was right on it. So because um, I bundled it together with some stuff, and then the big one of the book boot, the thing for me was yeah, this one on. was this one the Marvel Spotlight on Werewolf by Night first Werewolf by Night. This book was one that, um, so the story was kind of being told last night on low grades for anybody who happened to be watching it. We were, um, Brian from, uh, who uh, is Comic Whip, is a, re is a retailer. Uh, I had been looking at this book for a while, been trying to track one down. I lost out on one that was a, that was on an eBay auction. It was a good price. Um, but I talked to him at uh, Sacramento Con and I said, hey, when I, when I saw him there, he had it, he had it on his wall and he had it tagged like 780 bucks. And I was like, oh, looking at it, I'm like, oh, what grade do you think that is? And he's all, oh, it's like a 70. I'm like, oh, dude. I said, just so you know, between you and me, uh, the market has changed dramatically on that book. Um, so you might, so you might want to take a look at it um, after the show and see and take a look at the market. And if you're interested in talking about the book, once we get to once you if you're interested in moving it near market price, give me a call and we'll talk. Hadn't heard from him. Uh, knew he was coming into this show, the Berkeley show I was going to. So I reached out to him ahead of time. I said, hey, that's I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at the market on that Mar Marvel spotlight. Um, but if, if you still have the book, I'd be interested in talking to you about it at the show. And he goes, yes, I still have it. I'll take a look at it before we get there cool so i get there he's got he's got the book he goes he pulled it set aside for me he says here we you know he's got it tagged now at like 400 which was closer to market but still high and so i'm so i'm talking to him i'm starting going through his bins and i'm pulling out a whole bunch of the marvel horror books that i that i've been picking up you know the crypt of shadows where monsters dwell or else i get this stack of books and i said okay Hi, everybody. Hey, take it easy. I said, so okay, so now, this book and these the stack, what can I get? And he starts looking through them and he basically ends up just going, you know what? Let's just do this because I know because I showed him where the market what actually was. He goes, I'll you pay the price on this, I'll give you all the rest of the books for free. Bargain. Like, We're done. Nice. <laughs> Coming so, home with me, baby. So basically, you you told him in a in a nice way, are you out of your right. fucking mind? 
Well, correct. I, I politely talked to him about it uh, and, and set him up over the course of a couple, a couple months in reality. Uh, and then he also gave us, well, the other book I'm setting off, I've had for a while. I'm taking this one. I'm going to have it cracked out and have it cleaned because it's super dirty. Um, and have it pressed. And I don't expect it's going to get a much of a grade bump, if any, but it's just really, really dirty and needs to get taken care of. And um, the uh, the rogue trader, he'll do a bunch of clay masks and stuff on it and make it pretty. Does he do chemical cleaning as well? No, or are you no, no. Just water he does, he's got, no, no, he's going to, he uses, um, in this case, it's like, he describes it kind of like almost as kind of like, this is not silly putty, but remember how you used to put silly putty on things and you mm -hmm. peel it off and it, Yep. He's basically like that. It's like a a, ma a clay mask or something that gets put on it, and then he can carefully pull it up, and it pulls off the dirt off the surface without chemically affecting the um the book or anything like that. So that way, it doesn't come a get hit for being restored or anything. That's interesting. Um. So Brian from Comic Web also gave had me come back by. He gave me some books for our comics carrying cancer. Um, to donate uh, to, for the cause. So well, we, he donated, um, you know, a scorched number one um, and then a Stormbreaker book. Oh, that's nice. And Demon you Words. Yep. And the Peach yeah, Momoko yeah. book. But, the, but the, really bit, the really cool book that he donated was this copy here of history of the DC universe. Yeah. Those are fun. Which is signed on the inside by Perez. Very cool. What the heck? Oh, nice. That's Very a, cool. That's a Very nugget. Cool. That's a treasure. So that's that's a great that's a great book that uh, that he donated for us. So I'm excited for that. Very cool. Very very cool. So, so basically, my method is when I see a vendor that they're grossly overpriced, I tell them this. Are you willing to come down from this price? Like, well, no, this, 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 it's a good price. I'm like, it's a good price if you want to keep it forever or if you, if you want to rip somebody off. So which one of the two is it? Yeah, so there's That's a difference. That's usually my method. This, is not a, this was not just a random dealer this is a dealer that i have had an extended relationship with over multiple shows that i purchase books from on a regular and consistent basis and he always takes care of me and gives me good deals um so it's so it's a little bit different on how i how i approach that because i want to maintain that relationship and i'm going to leverage that relationship uh to my advantage uh, and because I, because I'm, I'm basically asking him to come down more than half his cost of what he, or more than half of what he was asking for it. But he's also smart in understanding that, look, that he had it priced based on where the market was at one time that mark, the market's not there now. And either he can sit there and continue to hold on to it and hope that one day the market comes up there or he can sell it and move on and go get some new inventory and, and make it you're up from that a consistent and, customer and right. he cares he hooks you up right mm -hmm. i i i made his you know i was there i went to his booth straight in as soon as i walked in the door as the doors opened i went straight to back to the back where he was and basically when i was done his booth was paid for for the day and he and then some and yep. so everything he was making at that point at that con was all was all profit. Profit, yeah. See, I have a all, different approach with the people yeah. I know as well. I have a relationship as well. I tell them, listen, if you're gonna fuck me, then you gotta you know smooth talk me or you know buy me dinner or something first. You know, usually that works. They usually do a better price when I tell them that. I I, I have a strategy as well. Um, and what I do is I go around and I look, and I find like. I really like it when booths have more than one book that I'm interested in and I'll, I'll, you know, introduce myself. Hey, how's it going, man? And then be like, um, you got a few really nice books. Like, would you, are you willing to, you know, work, work a deal or anything? And usually they're pretty, they want to get rid of their shit. But, well, most, um, most of the dealers, I think when I go to them, even if I don't have a relationship with them, if I ask, if I put in a cup more than one book, or even if it is just one book, if it's a bigger book, I sit there and say, Hey, you know, 
what can we do? What can we do on this? So yeah. Like, are you flexible? You know, you know is I don't even ask them if they're flexible. Just, what, what can we do? What are you going to yeah. do? You know, what, what's the price that makes me want to walk away with this book right now? You know? Yeah. I feel the same way though. Like the walk away price, like they always like, you know, give me a reason to want to buy it from you. And you, you have know? to want, you have to walk away sometimes. Yeah. Like, oh, absolutely. You have to, because if you don't, you, 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 you get, you're going to get milk left money. and right. Yeah, you know, right. well, many times I've had guys say, you know, oh, I could take like five or ten bucks off. All right, well, we have different we have different values right now. That's fine. Uh, yeah. I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking the time, and I'll walk yeah. away. And I'll, but I'm always going to be nice about it because ultimately, at the end of the day, I may come back and to that booth and find something different. And I don't want him having a memory of going. All of a sudden, I'm the guy that stood out to him as being a jerk. So now he doesn't want to. <laughs> yeah. Listen, honestly, I'm a little joking aside. You gotta irk me in a certain way for me to speak to speak like in a certain way to you. Like if you really irk me, then uh, you're gonna hear something from me. Like if they say but, we don't have bags, don't get me started. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're off that, okay? But here's Sorry. the thing. He, here's the thing. The way my my philosophy and my mentality is when I'm buying, I got X amount of money that I'm willing to spend at you or anybody else in this con, with, okay? I don't have a longing desire, and I don't have to buy anything in particular from you as a vendor. You, on the other hand, want to take as much money out of my pocket as humanly possible. So it, we, we, we have an agreement. You want my money. I want your stuff. The difference is you probably want your my money more than I want your stuff. And the, as soon as you, as a buyer, you start thinking of it that way, you start going that approach. You'll be able to buy stuff at better values. Hmm. Yeah, um, I'm not very nice, McFarlane. What yeah, you, I'm not sure. A, a book, a page out of a Lady Fantastics page, just shoving things at the camera. No description, no nothing. Sure, yeah. first white rabbit. There you go. Oh, thank you. Just some. Basic pick. These are nothing special. First night watch, you know. But I mean, it's just stuff for the PC. I I, I have a soft first spot spider. The, uh, first spider hole. Like yeah, that's yeah. fun. I, I have a soft spot for the volume one of Web of Spider Man. Sure. Um, I mean, it's so great and affordable. Simon, I, have I shown you my second Golden Age book that I acquired? Oh God, you you're getting dragged in, aren't you? I just got a second one. So you saw my Ghost Rider one, right? Yeah, which I was very jealous about. Have I uh, showed you my copy of Need? It's crusted it, together. I think everybody's right. saying that. That's right. Oh, that's very like I know I'm not. I I I always say, oh, you know, I'm not a golden age. I'm not a this or that. Or what? But that's just a good. Oh, that's a great book. Oh yeah, it's so beautiful. Um, it's uh, Tales of the Crypt number thirty-two. And in really nice shape for its age. Um, let's see, it's a Jack Davis cover, you know, pre code, pre code horror. Um, really Colors are really nice on that as well. No yeah. fading, no nothing. It's rare for that that dark of a book. Yeah, yeah, October nineteen fifty two. So it's it's just a banger. So, anyways, I was really excited to get this. This is my number two. So, I got the Ghost Rider number eight by Dick Ayers. I think it's 51 or 52. And this is my number two. I don't it. like the Ghost Rider, but, but I like that. Moment. You didn't That's like the nice Ghost Rider? No, I don't no, care shit about Ghost Rider. But I, 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 like, I like that book a lot. That, yeah. uh, That's a very good pickup. Very yeah, good. thanks. I, I I really wanted to get at least one EC horror that had the strip, you know, down the tear like side. Yep. I wanted to get at least one pretty one, and and so this has got sc scratched my little bits. If you're gonna have a eclectic uh, 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 amount of uh, Golden Age books, those are the ones to get for sure. Hey, Kyle. Hey, Spidey. I got this one for the giveaway. Hey. Second second Iron Fist. Oh, what the. Fuck. No. <laughs> Let, me oh, you, Let me ask you a question, though. Were you the Spidey? Were you the one that was wanting this? That that was my. <laughs> okay, so I was. Uh, when I was at Berkeley Con. I picked one up for you then. Well, they, oh. I, 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 I watched was, the video and I'm like, 
I think that was me, unless somebody else said I something. I couldn't remember who it was. Yeah, I picked it up. Ten bucks is what it cost me. So, <laughs> You know what the funny thing is? The guy that I'm buying the um, the the big deal off mm-hmm. actually listed on one of my Facebook groups a whole pile of old caps. Oh, yeah? I'm like, oh, I want that. I want that. I want that. He had that book, but it was in like uh, super, super high grade. He wanted $70 uh, for it, and I uh, almost... I almost bit the bullet and said, can you add it to my deal? And Don't I went, worry about it. I'm like, no, I'll just leave it for the moment. 70 is probably a bit too rich. Yeah. I'll, I'm I'll glad throw it, I didn't. I'll throw, it on, throw it on your pile. Oh, thank I, you. <laughs> I, I, was, I was walking by one of the vendors. I happened to see it in there. He had a tag on it for 10 bucks. I said, oh, I'll pick that up for, for you. All right. I'll be back in a moment. Right. Simon, is there anything... I mean, absolute anything comic related in Australia that is cheaper there than it is here? Hell no. Even Australian books? Well, Australia, probably Australian books, but like obviously, because that stuff doesn't generally filter much to overseas. It will, it will usually only sort of stay in here because people don't necessarily want to see much of the. Uh, Australia, probably the only stuff that sort of filters a little bit, and that's only very, very little bit, is probably the Killer Roo stuff. That, um, like, Ignacio yeah, but he doesn't have Australian stuff. variants too, though. I, I did at one point, I remember people like getting a little nutty over the Australian variants, almost like we, the have, British, Australia, we have Australian priced variants, yeah, but that they were done in the 90s. Um, is, is you know, there a market for that there? There's a there's actually a huge market for that overseas now as well. Everybody's trying to scramble for these Australian price variants because they're super low print runs. So, like, if you find an Australian variant there, an American variant, will you pay more for the Australian variant there, or will you get the Australian variant now, cheaper? Now, now you will. Back that in the old not back in the old school days, no. But now. Yeah. Because everybody's going to this, you know, international market trying to look for these sort of priced variants now. Um, where at? Because I, like, I, I, then the prime example is I'm still trying to locate a New Mutants 98 for myself. I know I've said it a million times, but I'm still trying to get one. The only people selling that book here at the moment are selling Australian price variants and they want an absolute premium for them. Like I can't find one under seven eight hundred bucks. Yeah, I would go crazy. Or listen, I I I pulled the trigger about a year and a half, two years ago on a New Mutants ninety eight, and I regret it to this day that I paid that much money for it. Mm. Even though it's going up since I bought it, mm. the way I bought it, I ended up buying it through eBay, and then it was right. Remember when they first started hitting us with all those fees and different. Taxes and stuff like that that they never yeah, used to eBay before. started going nuts with all the crap. Yeah, right at the beginning of that. So I ended up buying a copy for like three hundred and seventy-five dollars, which mm-hmm. I was like, all right, I could live with that at that price because it was a high grade, whatever. Fucking thing went almost to, almost to five hundred bucks with the with the freaking the fees and all the bullshit that they charged me on top of it. Oh, like, it's just ridiculous. I don't remember what the fuck it was. And I'm like, never again, never, never again. Like, FOMO got the best of me at that point. Yeah, I have it in my collection, but it, it's one of those books that it's like as many times I love to brag about like uh, getting great deals on certain books. That one always stuck to my like stuck to my gut that I paid that much money for that book. Yeah, well, because that's that's like my um my it, UF four my UF four. I ended up having to pay. I got the guy. The guy wanted nine hundred dollars for it. And I ended up getting him down to because uh, I bought from him before. Got him down to about I think six fifty or seven hundred. Well, I got and my was... UF four last year at some point months ago. I got it, uh, and I ended up getting in the poly bag, sealed yeah, in the poly, bag. the poly bag. It looks like it's a nice shape, hmm. but I won't know until I get it graded if it was worth the while of what I I paid four hundred bucks for that fucking book. That's on the. That that one might join New Mutants ninety eight if it comes anything less than a nine point two nine point four. Yeah, see, I, I'll refuse. Like, I'm I'm quite happy to pay a reasonable price for a ninety eight. Like, if I'm paying three four hundred, if I have to pay five hundred dollars for one, 
I'll I'll pay it, but I just don't want to spend any more than that. I just, it just starts. They're getting so ridiculous. overprinted. They're so overprinted. Yeah, I know yeah. that you know, supply and demand. It makes sense, but the thing is, there's there's so many out there. Mm. There's so many freaking books out there. You know what I'm saying? What what happens if one of these guys and I know they they exist. These guys they have short boxes full of them. Just flood the market with it. Somebody croaks. Their kids take over their whole deal, and they end up putting them all on eBay. Yeah, I what saw is, uh, oh, one guy. What's his what's his name? Ty Toys or something on Instagram. Um, he had I think like ten or fifteen copies and was just selling them one by one. You know, there's a lot of that. Like that. Much, they they purposely, methodically won't flood the market. They put a little bit at a time on there in order mm. to make the money from it. And, yeah. and there's a lot of people like that out there. There's guys like that with UFOs. Mm. There's guys like that with Hulk 181s, believe it or not. They, they just have dozens of them. And yeah. uh, GSX ones. GSX one is another one. Like people think that these books that don't exist, they exist. Oh, Fantastic Four Forty Eight. That a lot of people think that you know it's old, it's rare. No, it's not actually. They had a warehouse find for Forty Eight. You know the reason why high grade Forty Eight actually sells cheaper than. High to query 49 is because they found a whole freaking shipment of it in a warehouse, and there's a ton of them in high grade. People don't know these things. Like uh, they, they go the same with Dazzler the One. There's like well, so Dazzler many One. Out there. Yeah, I mean Dazzler One is the direct uh, to the to LCS copy. It was like it was, it was never on news. It was never on the newsstands. You have a lot of people that never even opened up their their uh, diamond shipments. They, they're yeah. sealed in the boxes. Cases still. of them. Yeah. And it's a shame, it's a beautiful cover, too. It is. Why are we agreeing so much? <laughs> because you, you, you know when you're hearing sense. And I'm um, Marcus, sense. do you have any keys for or grails for this year? Or are there any specific books you're looking to try and find uh, during Heroes? Is he officially coming or not? Uh, Marcus? No. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you're officially going. Are you going? Me, I can't. I mean, I just sold my condo and um, oh, um yeah, and I'm gonna close on my um an, on a new one, so I got too much shit going on. Oh correct. So. That's actually a good reason not to go. It is, I, remember, yeah. I remember you saying that if you didn't sell, you might go. If you did sell, you weren't gonna go, sort of thing. So I think that's that's what it sort of ended up being. So which is yeah. fair enough. Yeah, so it's it's good, you know, and it, it'll be it'll be fine next year. Well, I'll right. tell you what, you're gaining a lot more and not going that rather than going and not getting what you're getting. So. Yeah, and it's I, I see it as a good like investing in property is never a bad thing, and so you know, oh, just I know a thing or two about that. Yeah, yeah, I've I've, I've heard that. My um, my mom, that's basically her hobby. Is she likes uh, flipping properties, and um, she's had she's she's good at it. Probably not to the extent that you are, but she likes to do it a little here and there. Well, I don't do it as a hobby. I do it as a profession. There's a difference. As a profession, right? It got it. it Sorry, it, if I if I didn't do it right, I wouldn't be able to live. So I have to do it right. I have no choice. Yeah, yeah. So my mom's a computer programmer that does like um, uh, she works at Corning. She does contract work, but her buddy, her BFF is a realtor lady. And so mom got ended up getting interested in properties and flipping and things like that. And now it's like kind of like a hobby of hers. But man, she can fix places up really nice. She's got a good eye for that stuff. It's a damn good hobby to have. I'll tell you that much. It, better, it can be a better, uh, better hobby than than comic books. I'll tell you that much more money to be made. That's true. A lot more capital to be made. Yeah. BRB. Comics are a money sink for me. Hey, you, Marcus. Are you actually going to go to Heroes Con? Is that why you were asking me? Yeah, I'm there. I got my ticket, my plane ticket, and my hotel. Oh yeah, which hotel are you staying at? Oh fuck! The Marriott a hotel or a different one? The I think it was I think it was the Marriott. Oh thank God! <clears throat> I'm at the Westin. Yeah, the Westin is booked. Unless you're paying five thousand for the 
Oh, no, I got it through the rates that they were giving. I, th I still think that's expensive, freaking North Carolina, to be quite honest with you. But it is what it is. One hundred and eighty-nine dollars a night. They were charging me. They're they're charging me. Yeah, I was. Bad I was looking too late. Weekends when. Uh, and still, it's freaking North Carolina. I'm like, what the hell? Why are they charging so much? Because I can. Yeah, I guess so. But I'm going there from if everything goes still according to plan, I'm gonna be there from Wednesday. Those Wednesday are the days I have. Oh, I'm I'm, okay. I'm coming in Wednesday morning, leaving Sunday night. Oh, Thursday open. night. I'm getting Just, in Thursday. Let's say this works. All right, I gotta get out of here. Um, you might, you might want to just hang on just a quick second, Caroline. Sorry, okay. it's actually the Hilton, not the Marriott. Bear with me. Hilton's better. Ask <clears throat> Paris. Apparently, it has a pool. There's, I guess, Durs is in that hotel too. Yeah, well, uh, Weston, Weston has a pool too. Guess what? You can't use it. I don't even yeah, know if I'm doing this right now. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Yep. And then just type in why hashtag whatever you want it to be. Hashtag whatever. Uh, hashtag go bags. Oh, you read. You literally read my mind. <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? Are you trying to poke me right now? Always. Do we? What, 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 so what this is, is oh, so what this is, is Mad Spidey has um, generously donated. Many books to the uh, giveaway bin uh, as we went last couple of weeks as we went through his stuff that's waiting to be shipped out to him that he doesn't need. So to help make room for them, I'm going to do a couple couple of the only slab style uh, giveaways right here on Mad Spidey Show. So, so let's let's say where the prize the prize lizards turn up. That's right. So All right. You, you uh, know what? I'm going to enter. Right. You know what? Uh, here's the deal. Doesn't come in a bag though. Here's the deal. If I win. I want you to donate them for uh, C three. Uh, I wouldn't do that, but why they're not good? No, no, they're mm -hmm. fine books, but they're not. But C three C three is gonna be a little bit different this year. So, oh, it is. Yeah. All right. So if I win, because I, I already I already said that, CJ. Because when we went through, because these are all those books yeah, that I bought through the fun. pandemic. Um, that the, the, these are the remainers of it. So I said to Rob, I said, look, you're more than welcome to either do one of two things, either put them in the giveaway box for only slabs or donate them to C3. So most of them went to the, the giveaway box. So, yeah. But there's still, still uh, some very I'll nice books in there. I'll tell you what, if I win, send them over to Kyle. Is that fair? That's fine. Yeah, we can do that. Oh. All right. Oh, I haven't seen Kyle in a while. So let him let him get it. Okay, so we have ten in the chat and eight entries. So we'll give it another. You need to put a hashtag pop. How can I get? Oh, I put, oh. Wait, hold on. Are they Marvel or DC? It's, it's Kyle's the DC it, guy. Could be anything. It's a oh. box full of comics. I yeah. like. Have you I ever like never? You've never it. watched only slabs there, uh, buddy. <laughs> I've watched it. I don't look at what you have in your box. I'm not that nosy. Yeah, there's the uh, there's plenty plenty of awesome, trust me. There's there, there's too much good stuff in there. There should the stuff that Chris and I always say shouldn't be in that damn box. Oh, it's that kind of stuff. I got it. Yeah, there's That's good stuff. If it's if it's definitely it, fine. I like Captain America. There's, there's Marvel. There's DC. There's first appearances. There's minor keys. There's bigger keys. There's all kinds of stuff. Cool like, covers. Mm -hmm. All right, ten and oh no, hang on, it's gone up to twelve now. Okay. <laughs> no scrubs. Uh, no scrubs. <laughs> so we got. I'm a psychologist. I don't need scrubs. Wait. Hmm. All right. So we're at 10 and 10. Let's draw. Let's go. Teaching people how to do giveaways all over this country. <laughs> oh, oh Greg. This works Greg. out well. Matt Spidey. Now he can't complain about it not being in the box because he's going to he take them out of the box. 
he has picked books for you, so now you get to pick books for him. Oh, so, yeah. Whoa. So I'm going to pick all independent crap. No, just joking. He probably uh, he. Whoa, 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 whoa. I may say, by the way, <clears throat> since, since Marcus spoke up, Marcus, I must say, you looked really, really dapper in that freaking comic screen cancer shirt. And I, I had not yet seen that color other than like, like in it. the behind. It looked phenomenal. I like it. Yeah. And I sold a shirt. Did you see that? I, I, sold I did. A shirt Thank you. One of the KC homie. So Good uh, everybody buy a shirt and post about it. Let's go. That's Let's right. do our part. All, All right. right. So. We're gonna Sorry, do we this thing first. We're gonna if, first. Let's start with six, and then I'll do a bonus book. So six books. So you give me a number one through ten from the front, one through ten from the back, or we can do back to front action. We're going back to front because say Jay Z. All right. <laughs> so you me what, stop. what the fuck, man? <laughs> stop. And stop. Okay. But in front, Stay behind, you. or both. Both. Rob's, uh, Rob's enjoying fingering those too much. Okay. Let's go again. Let's go closer to the front and stop those books that split your fingers. You know what would be really great is you should pull out like nothing but Walmart packs. <laughs> okay, one more well, and amazing. stop right there. Well, such as the Walmart packs all came from him. So and we'll we'll split split his fingers again. Yeah, that's why I say that would be amazing. Now, Lady F, we got a bonus book. Mm. Would you please tell me when to stop for the mm -hmm. bonus book? Stop. In front or behind my finger? Um, behind. Yeah. All right. I'll set the side here. Watch your back, Rob. I think Chris is not here. I can say that. I think he's First in there. Up. <laughs> That's flashed. <laughs> uh, is that from the TV uh, show? It was from mm -hmm. the TV show in the nineties. Yeah. 90s. Oh, that's kind of cool, actually. John Wesley yeah. Ship. I like that. I don't remember that book. Warlock, the Infinity oh. Watch. You know this is a great book because it says right on it, it's a collector's item. Holy yeah. cow. That's always a great indicator. Um, some 90s goodness. Generally is. Uh, we got Buffy, Buffy. the Vampire Slayer. Hey, girl. Where's Beckerman? Bonus pull plus one. So we, oh. got, so we got to pull another book. <laughs> I'm just going to reach over here. My finger's moving back for us. Somebody just tell me when to stop. Stop. Front, back. 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 You like it from the back. What the hell? Oh, my oh, God. Shit. Oh, Love it from the back. No. Oh, my God. Uh, Lady, I put Here you oh, go. God. What did I pull? You pulled. <clears throat> Boom. Huntress number oh. one. First, Helena Bartonelli. Oh. <laughs> Kyle <laughs> wanted that book. <laughs> oh, look at that. How about that? Volume two, The New Teen work. Titans, issue number one. Some Mar Marv Wolfman and George Perez goodness. I don't even know if Comic Vet likes DC. He Look does. That night wing. Oh, Sorry, God. Kyle. I tried. Uh, this one he doesn't care about, though. Chamber uh, of Darkness. That's nice. Though that this is, cool, is though. <laughs> this is the first first Star Slayer, which was a Conan prototype, yeah. uh, and it's the first cover collaboration between um, uh, <laughs> R.A. Severin and Bill Everett. Oh, that's 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 a nice looking, nice looking cover. Well, if you Cliff, saw something, Cliff never misses his cue. Does I know, he? I love it. <laughs> uh, future State Wonder Woman, uh, first uh, era. All right, that's an interesting. Cover. And because he is a Spider Man man, Miles Morales Spider Man number three, the first full rabble. Wow. Ooh. I love that cover. That's a gorgeous cover. That is Rabble. an awesome cover, actually. It's rad, dude. Ooh, Rabble. Rabble is the uh, main arch nemesis for Miles Morales' Spider-Man. All right. Okay. Yeah, she's in the that a, That's a great set of books there. All right, guys. I do now, gotta go. All you got to do, make sure, Comic Vet, is that my mystery box is better than the books you just got pulled from a superhero. <laughs> later, later, Caroline. Good to see you. Love Thanks you for guys. joining, Caroline. Um, take care. Oh, um, meow, meow. Bye. 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 Yeah, you Bye. know what's her name again? Uh, Miles is. Uh, I keep forgetting it. You just said it, and I already Rabble? forgot. <laughs> Gravel. Yes. You know where her problem with Miles is? Is anybody reading that book? You it's know why a she hates Gravel's a woman. Yeah. 
it's something he he, he he disrupted her powers or something or no no it's because he I got chosen man. for the school voucher school instead of her oh, that's good. why what I thought bitch. that was like I thought that was a weird reason uh for them to be rivals but yeah that's based on Miles getting selected for that special school instead of her well, women have the weird reasons for being mad at men. Oh, here we go. Lady F, come back. We need you back. <laughs> Keep this dude in check. So good job, Chris. Congratulations. I'm just saying. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. You know? So those picks were okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's only because one time that I did win... And Chris picked the six books, and there was only like one Marvel book. They were like all DC and independent books, and like one Marvel book. And I gave him so much shit for that. I know it's random, but I, like I just like I just like doing it. It's fun. I don't just, see a reason. As long, why as, he he play as, with long as he knows, you know, as long as he gets it. Yeah, I think hey, the coolest hey, no, one out of all those were the Flash book with the TV cover. I was, I was, that was, that was cool. <laughs> they were cool. That, that, uh, the. The biggest book in that bunch actually is the is the um, Huntress. Yeah, mm. yeah the, the, the Huntress book is actually <laughs> worth some money. Uh, and that's the one I could care less about them out of all. Right, I, I like the first 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 one. I like the, is, uh, the Flash one. Well, I mean, no, that's not true. I mean, come on, that's a collector's item. It says so, so you know that. <laughs> but, <laughs> if, if it says it, there has to be the. Right. Yeah, that's how it is. Yeah, that, that book, that book right there. That's a. That's a, that's that's a actually, gorgeous looking. Gorgeous looking exactly. cover. It's nice. It is a yeah, nice looking. Um, that one doesn't even write collector's item on it. I know, but it's a, but it's got a barcode. Hmm. Yeah. The, only, the only uh, the only thing I was disappointed I didn't pick out an X Force one. <laughs> yeah, really. I know what's that? or a DC Walmart pack, but, or a DC uh, Walmart pack. There's going to be a J. This is actually a really good you, book. The, you you, you mark my one. words. There's going to be a day when those X Force books, the ones that are still in the poly bag, are going mm -hmm. to hold some value. Because everybody's yeah. ripping them open one after the other out of the poly bags to get I'm engraved. And all, that stuff. Yeah, I'm just buying all, so. all those poly bag books, at one point or another, you're going to see there's going to be a change in like collecting where people are going to want them back in the poly bags. That's how it used to be back in the days. You didn't why, would you, poly bag. why would you want a book in a poly bag when you can have it in a 9-8 slab? It doesn't make sense to me. Because it came from the manufacturer in that poly bag. It, it's original and complete. That's why. Yeah, I, don't know, hey, I, I buy them in bulk that way and I turn around and uh, give them away. Same way know. with the Spider-Man ones, the McFarlane ones. Yeah. yeah the, the ones in the bags are becoming rarer and rarer. As you, I used to see them by the dozens in the in the cons. Now I rarely do I see them in the actual poly bag anymore. The, the one the ones that I always remember was the uh the Midnight Suns run that actually came with like part of a poster. Yeah. You said you'd make up the giant poster with all the different things, but I never ended up getting all of them. I think I missed out on yeah. like dark, dark dark old one or something like that, I think. But I had I think all the rest of them, but I don't know where the posters went. Unfortunately, I, I got a few of those uh, number twenty eight, the Midnight Sun one for the the one that, that has like I don't know some fucking uh, Midnight Sun appearance in there, and um, I think I have like two or three of them that are still in the poly bag. I refuse to like take them out and get them slapped. I, I just want to keep them in the poly bag. There's also like the Dark Knight one. That's the first uh, Victor Zaz, Shadow of the Bat, Shadow of the Bat. Yeah, there's a lot of those in poly bags too. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, whether in or out of the poly bag, that book never got the love it needed. I know. I know why. The first appearance of a who's considered a a, a medium size uh, villain. I would call him more than a medium size. I mean, he was on. Well, he's not one, He's not a major. He's not one of the major guys, you know. But he is a significant. Uh, he's a second tier. Um, you know. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Rogue, second tier rogue. That's fair, but he did get a lot of uh, media action through that Gotham show. He, he was in every season of that. Um, he's yeah, a very in, uh, he, he briefly popped into Gotham. Uh, what was it? The Gotham. Right. What was the one they did recently? Gotham Knights. Uh, uh, I never one, watched it. the ones with the kids. Uh, like the, he was a different actor, obviously, but he was briefly, briefly in that as well. Never watched that one. Random question: Can you still slab them in the poly bags? Nope. No. 
No, they, they won't do it. They remove it from the poly bag in order to grade the book. They will do, it. and they disregard the poly bags too. You don't even get the poly bag back after no, time. But they'll, they'll, but they'll mark it as removed from poly bag on the label. Hmm. So, don't go. Can I come off a book that up for a birthday from non comic? Can you repeat that, Kyle? Showing you what he what he got for his birthday. Oh, okay. It was his birthday? On Tuesday. Oh really? How how old were you? Thirty seven. Thirty seven. It's a spring chicken. Right. No, he said, he, said, he, said, he said 25. Look at this little kid. <laughs> now, I'll wait till you organize yourself and then... then have, stick around, though, because afterwards we'll do another giveaway. But, then, but I, That way I, I have I, plenty of room in the box to add new books to the box. <laughs> I, really feel, I really feel strongly that the poly bag thing is going to make its way back. I also feel that the... The trading card and the poster inserts, all that stuff they used to come in there, it's going to make its way back as far as uh, completionists are concerned. Oh, we got a. Look at that. What is that? Super. Uh, that's an old. Oh, oh. That looks old. Oh, that, that looks crispy. Look at that monkey man on the cover. I love freaking gorilla covers. <laughs> Always have. Always happy birthday to Peter. What's that, Marcus? What'd you say? Fluffy and logging. Is that tra trade paperback, huh? Very cool. Very violent series. What if... Uh, what if? Yeah, unless there's like a card or something in the poly bag, I really don't see a reason for it because the slab replaced the purpose of the poly bag. Well, a lot of them have cards. A lot of them have uh, posters in there. Some of them stickers. Those it makes glasses. sense, but like, yeah, the, the, how many books came with the uh, 3D glasses? Only the 3D books, yeah. But I'm just saying, a lot of them are missing it because they were open. Oh, there you go. look at that some Spectre action. Spectre, <laughs> Marvel, Matt, everything okay, Matt? <laughs> mm. Yeah, you're hilarious, Matt. You're You're freaking hilarious. Happy birthday, CJ, though, seriously. Mother. <laughs> it's not my fucking birthday. Uh, it's his me. birthday. Tell him happy birthday. Oh, that's a nice cover. I told him his birth happy birthday before his birthday. Well, there you go. <laughs> He's using three different oh, accounts now. Yeah. Tell him, not me. What the, what the hell? Uh... <gasps> Uh, no, but that was I, it. That was that was dope, man. That's an awesome that call, was, uh, Kyle. Very, very dope. This is from Mon Comics. Oh, from Mon, no, eh? That's awesome. You know what? I recently came across now that you said the 3D glasses. I, re I recently came across an old uh, Three Stooges. 3D comic. I didn't even know this thing exists. And, and I didn't even realize it was a 3D book until I opened it up and I saw that the, the glasses were were still in the um, the center fold. Hmm. Uh, you've, got, I, you've, got, I am, you've got the link, John, if you want to jump on. I, I forgot they actually used to do that, where they actually had the, the glasses that were actually embedded in the book itself. Yeah, it was like a tearaway thing in the middle, like the same with the... Uh... Mm -hmm. They did it with some of the Spider-Man books, I think, as well, with the cards. They do, like, promo sort of tear-away sort of cards in the middle of the yeah, book. Yeah, that's a, that's what's ruined my Ghost Rider 2099 from getting a 9-8, is the damn oh. cards that are in... Well, flare cards, middle. right? Yeah, inside the middle, they're thick cards, and they sat on well, stacks. They got a, a horrible line, and it's a thick cover. But... Right, I wonder how many giveaway. of those are actually missing the cards. Like, if they, they have a record of... 
which ones have cards and which ones don't. Because yeah. I'm sure that some kids probably pull those cards out. Sure. A lot of kids did. They did stick them in our spokes. Spidey, let's do another giveaway. Uh, uh, I remember my favorite thing to do is used to get the cereal boxes. And remember, they used to have, like print cards on the inside of the box. I just thought I'm about to get whatever toys in the bottom. No, they, they actually used to print hey, out on, the open up this box. Where's the, where's the container I can put all the cereal into? Mom would go, you're not dumping that out so you can get to the toy at the bottom. I'm not. No, I just want to make sure it doesn't go stale. I swear. <laughs> there, there's plenty of eBay uh, shippers that, that are using those boxes to send out their, their comics in. Have you had a cereal box uh, shipment come to you? No, I have had it. I only get I got DiGiorno box though. Oh, lucky you! Happy birthday, Kyle! There you go. There's your new hashtag, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little it's a little light, but we'll still use the hashtag. I'm gonna enter this one again, and if I win this one, this time. Send it to Papa. Indeed. Papa. Sorry, Kyle. You missed your luck. You got the first time. Now Papa gets it. You got Dave's in the house. Ow, ow. Number one. <laughs> Hopefully, there's a whole bunch of comic pornos if Papa wins in there. There's no comic book pornos in there. The closest well, might have, have been that Michelle Gero, Michelle Gero, Gero, Geller cover. Uh, are there any Catwoman's in there? Um, I don't know. There might got, be. He's got a hard on for Catwoman. No, so there might be. Got... Well, there you go. The... That's the wrong hashtag, Matt. Stop spamming the chat. <laughs> Another hilarious guy. Everybody but the freaking... It's not my fucking birthday. <laughs> I got 13 watching and 12 entries, so there's still one person missing, and Matt's... Well, it might be me, because I have the chat popped out, and uh, I'm, not I'm not entering my own giveaway. Obviously. So, so Marcus, what day are you getting to Charlotte? Thursday night. Or actually, I think during the day, Thursday. What about you, uh, Rob? Uh, Wednesday. Oh, I'll be there on Wednesday. So if you want to get some dinner or something like that, hit me up. If, roger, roger. My wife will be with me. I don't bring my wife with me. I, well, it wasn't my idea, Rob. <laughs> mm. I was going to be out picking up my other kid from school. Let's go bang. Round and round where she goes, where she stops. Well, oh, random uh, internet knows. Fish. Oh. Again. Wow. <laughs> if I'm gonna have to pay shipping to Canada, at least I get to well, actually not I can ship to this US. Hey Rob. Yep. <laughs> this seems slightly rigged. I uh, you know the Canadian that he's done some monkey digital uh rigging. That's right. I've I've secretly worked this all out in advance so that way I don't actually have to ship them to him. Instead, they just stay right back here in the box. <laughs> That's a good idea. Now but now he says give it to Kyle. So now there I have to pay two it. shipping charges instead of one. Thanks a lot. Got it. It's all right. No worries. No, we're giving it to Kyle. That's what he said. All right. Uh, well, guys, so, we'll get, we'll get Marcus um, to pick this one. So no, so I'm gonna let Marcus pick for Kyle. So Marcus. Are you there, sir? I'm here in front. Hopefully the all cat so once come head from the front, we control pop the back or we can do back to front. Back to front. All right, you just tell me when to stop. Stop. The book in front or behind my finger or both? Behind behind. Behind. Okay. Stop. Okay. Front, behind, or both? Both. DJ Lynx is in the house. Okay. There we go again. Stop. Okay. Front, back, behind, or both? Behind. One with behind. 
minutes four. We got two more books. Stop. Uh huh. Both. 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 Okay. Now, CJ, the bonus yes, book. Sir. Tell me when to stop. Right there. Right there. That's sweet. In front spot. or behind? Well, we got to go from behind. <laughs> oh, he is, yeah. he is very comfortable. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see what's coming Kyle's way. Hey, Rob, I'll cut you my new address to God's moving. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Kyle's moving. Yeah, that's right. Uh, okay. Business time. All right. Uh, Superman, Batman, Vampires, and Werewolves. Oh, okay. Issue number one. Ooh, that's DC cool. love. Got it. <laughs> Do you dare enter the house of mystery? DC Ooh. again. I'm nailing it. There's Marvels here. Uh, this is first full anti vision. Shiny. Like <laughs> Gotta love the shiny. That's cool. Some Venom. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Del Otto cover. It looks like Del Otto. Oh, hold on a second. That's our Venom on the cover. That was somebody else. That was Carnage. So, oh, here you go. Poor Mad Spidey's going to be sad. Or to see these come out for you, a DC guy. But here you go. Here's the champions. This is first yeah. Dark Star and the uh, Yuri Petrovich, who becomes the fourth Crimson Dynamo. Oh, that's cool. That's that's cool. I love that stuff. <laughs> oh no, I think I think I'm gonna have to leave now. The way he's laughing. Oh, <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> that's a two with Dracula fifteen. That's a nice one. Awesome God, cover. And this one's a great cover. This one's good. This one, <laughs> you're gonna like you're gonna like this one, Kyle. Uh, this is it is a, it is a collection of reprints. Okay. So comic vet. It is Captain Marvel Adventures number 18, Captain Marvel Jr. number 12, Captain Marvel Family number one, and Captain Marvel Family issue 10, all inside this oh, beautiful, cool. very cool, beautiful looking book. Cool. Look at that, Mary Marvel. So young That's and innocent. Beautiful. Another DC banger. So there yeah, we go. Cool. Very you, familiar. Did, you, you did very well there, Marcus and CJ. Congratulations. Uh yeah. Chris yeah. is I did the Chris best. regrets it. Yeah. So Kyle, yeah, just hit you did okay, CJ. I, did I, okay. I ship them out priority so they get to you in about two days. So just let me know where to send them to, and they'll get there in two in two business days. Marcus, I did fantastic and you didn't ruin it. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, so you've, you've gotten rid of clo close to 30 books. Well, yeah. So we did five giveaways of seven books. I got I pulled 35 books out today. Mm. Nice big chunky. Uh, so, yeah, I have a bunch of room now to put books, which is good because I've got. You've got books up the wazoo. <laughs> a lot of books here. Yeah. All right. Let me. Uh, so. I watched X Men '97, episode five. Yes. Did everybody else see this? I have. Yeah. I have. Did everybody enjoy it? It was fine. I'm not a big X Men guy, so. Well, it was. But did you enjoy it for what it was? Sure. All right. Best X Men episode out of the entire animation series. I have new one or the or including the old one, including the old ones. That's the best episode. Uh, be, uh, the new best one seems eight. to be pretty good. Yeah, I'm listen. The last one I was not thrilled with number four, episode four. I was like, Yeah, what the fuck is this? And uh, episode three was like a kind of letdown after first, first, uh, second. It was not bad, but it was not like, eh, you know, I'm not into the whole storm on her journey to get her powers back thing. You know, and I'm not into the whole let's give Jubilee her own uh, uh, episode kind of a thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm not into that. Like, I, the, those were my hey, most hated episode when they featured one character and not, like, have the whole team. I like I like having 
multiple characters in there. And Magneto's not dead, by the way. But the, 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 storm, the storm thing is a very it's a it's a the life and death storyline that a lot of people loved reading when it came out in the books. Yes, but I, I don't mind it as long as it's intertwined with other storylines simultaneously. Like they yeah. keep jumping in and out of it. If they give a whole episode to that, it's boring for me. And I'm expecting it. It might be the next episode. I'm expecting it to go down the storm journey. And I was like, on a, on a little side note, I was actually quite shocked to hear Matt, Mr. Comics 89 this morning on Only Slabs, actually say that he enjoys more of the recent X-Men comics more than the old ones because they're less confusing. And I'm like, for my understanding, it's totally the opposite way is that all the old ones are less confusing than the new ones. Yeah. First of all, you have le the old ones you have less to follow. Yeah, you've only got pretty much one series until the 90s. No, listen, for the longest time, from the 80s on, you had multiple titles. You had X-Men, I mean, Uncanny. You had New Mutants. But you didn't have to read New Mutants in order to understand the Uncanny. But no. it helped. And then you had X-Factor. For the longest time, those were three. Then they added Excalibur, which, again, didn't really... It didn't matter if you read Excalibur or not. It didn't mess up Uncanny for you. Yeah, where this is where X Men took the dirty, nasty road when they when they started the Jim Lee series, and then they had two different X books with the main characters running simultaneously, and then they started all those mini series going on, and then they just it went haywire from that point forward. Uh, but th during the eighties, it was not confusing at all. It was actually very unless unless you find Claremont confusing. He can become confusing sometimes with some of the odd things he chooses to write, but well, you go, you go, Silver Age and Bronze Age. It's only uncanny, and that's it. Well, Silver Age and but going into Bronze Age, a good portion of that was only reprints. Mm. Yeah, from like the like yeah, or well, from issues. What was it like mid sixties up to the from sixty four to ninety three. Yeah, to the nineties or whatever, and then they uh, did JSX one and ninety four, and then mm -hmm. continued it on. So, and then they so, had yeah. some of the best stories after that, like you know, like Days of Future Past, the Phoenix Saga, and and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I think from ninety four up until I want to say until like the two eighty one, hmm. more or less. You had the nah, maybe up until 290, you had the best run of X Men, uncanny mm. X Men storylines mm. ever told because that was all the Claremont stuff, of course. Because everything was like it was fresh, it was new. Mm. The the mute, the the fall of the mutants, the the mutant massacre, uh, the dark phoenix saga, uh, the uh, 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 days of future past, all that stuff was fresh. It was firstly mm -hmm. in, uh, first introduced during that run of books. After that, it, you had a lot of like going back to the, the well and revamping and redoing and re, like, you know. And then the you know the Krakoa stuff was is interesting. I'll tell you that much. It's interesting. But the biggest problem with the X Men today is you took away the urgency. If you could bring back every single X Men character and resurrect them, there is no urgency. It doesn't matter if they die. Because you can bring them right back. You put them in the freaking island, island and bring them back. So yeah, what was the urgency? That's, that's comics, though. That you know they always say that nobody. Uh, yeah, but that's on a level. I'm saying you literally kill one character and bring them back the next day. Hmm. It, it, like there's no like, will they? Won't they? Will they? Won't they? No, there, there is no doubts. We're just gonna bring them back. Hmm. It makes no sense. The best storyline that that the X Men had in the past twenty years. I have to say, is the whole uh, 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 the Wanda No More Mutant storyline, where they basically wiped out ninety percent of the freaking mutants out there, ninety eight percent of the mutants out there, and there was literally one hundred eighty seven mutants left on the entire. Was that, was that was that House of X? Uh, uh, no, no, that was um, not House of X. So was it House of X? I thought it was House of X where she literally like, yeah, maybe it's like, House of X. Yeah, yeah, she like she like destroyed like yeah ninety five percent of them or something. Best storyline because you basically gave them a new start, 
and you, you got rid of the all the exit stuff. Mm. And you gave them the urgency. Now they're in survival mode. Now, now there's something, there's stakes. Mm. You know? They they had a freaking character that was that, that was flying around in the middle of uh uh the no more mutants thing, and all of a sudden he falls into a volcano because he he lost his powers. Another person drowned while they were losing their power. Like urgent, crazy, dire stuff was happening during that stuff. It was really good story storytelling. It's a shame. Mm. Yeah, I like that they've established stakes in this show. I hope they don't uh, take them away. That's the, best part of, that's the best part that they did introduce, Marcus. The the fact that they, they, they continued the same urgency. They, ha they had that urgency in the first the original five seasons. There was something important happening yeah. every time. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't just like, you know, let's let's do an episode beginning to end and then what to grow on. At the end, you know, it was it, 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 it was like, you know, holy shit, what happened now? You everybody watch this episode right now. That anybody that's into it, you know, because not if you're not into it, you're not into it. But if you're into it, everybody's literally, literally sitting at the edge of their seat waiting to see what happens next episode. And here's the thing they can get fucked because next episode they're gonna see Storm going on her freaking journey or some other character on a solo uh thing. I'm, I'm down they're gonna for make, it. They're gonna make us wait for another one or two episodes before we see some like real stuff happening. Good. Let them tell a story, man. The one thing I will say though is, I like the fact that they they're doing a great job with this X Men thing. But the funny thing is, it overshadowed how great of a series Invincible was. The Invincible finished, and you see nobody talking about that series. And who was I it? think Invincible overshadowed itself with the way they released it. I, I think it was really a bad idea to do it. That was weird. Did. Like you got like what, yeah, they should have continued. Episodes, they, and then it was like months, and then another four episodes. Yeah. And it, was... it, it should have been. It should have been uh, consecutive. They should not have given that uh, four month break, whatever it was. But at the same time, it was so good. It, like anybody that watched it, that was such a good series. Like the season two. Again, finished with a great cliffhanger. No spoilers. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, I, I think you're going to enjoy it. Yeah, I only, I only just finished it last weekend. Did Did you enjoy season one? I, yeah, I, I feel like I need to watch it again to even remember. It's been so long. I feel like you'll enjoy season two even more. I think and I actually you're... enjoyed season one better, I think. Maybe it was because of the break that might have screwed it a bit, but... I think, I, and it's for me because I don't know like sweet FA about Invincible. Like, I know a few of the character names, but that's about all I knew going in. So I was totally blind and I really enjoyed season one. And then season two seemed a little bit more discombobulated a little bit, but I still really enjoyed it though. I'm going to tell you, Invincible is, is very similar to the experience I had when, when I was watching Walking Dead. I didn't have any prior experience reading any Walking Dead of significance. Same way I had no prior reading of Invincible. So I went in blind, and I enjoyed for what it was. And I've gone it, since then watching these these shows and started reading this stuff, and it's connecting better in a better way for me. Mm. I'm not sitting here scrutinizing each episode like, oh, you didn't get it exactly. His hair is really gray, not dark gray uh like you know like all the stupid things people love to poke at when they're watching this stuff i watched it blind and i enjoyed it blind. and i'll tell you something a lot of the star wars stuff that i've been watching i'm enjoying it because i have no freaking idea what the previous history was mm. so i'm enjoying it for what ahsoka I, I i really enjoyed that show i had no idea who the hell ahsoka was or any of that i didn't watch clone wars i didn't read any of that stuff I enjoyed the shit out of that. Boba Fett that everybody shit on, I enjoyed. I, I liked it as a series. It was an enjoyable series. I like black freaking Chewbacca. He's my one of my second favorite character. I like regular uh, Chewbacca. What's his name? Chris, black Chris Kirzan. Kirzan or whatever is. What's that? Black Kirzan or whatever you want to pronounce it's it. Craig Krizantin or something like that. Something like that. I don't know. Black Chewbacca. I like him. <laughs> I like him. I like him. I like Chewbacca. These are the characters I like. Mm. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I was like, like, and I haven't seen a lot of the Star Wars stuff either. So I can see where you where you're coming from because I haven't watched, I haven't watched the Clone Wars cartoon. I haven't watched um, Bad Batch. I haven't watched. I haven't watched I, a I, lot of it. I really enjoyed Ahsoka. I loved Mando. Third season was a little weird, but it was I could still enjoyed it. I enjoyed Mando. Um, uh, Boba Fett was all right. Um, I really liked Ahsoka. Yeah. Um, what else? I haven't watched Andor. Everybody kept saying it was a bit too, it was more analytical than action packed. I haven't watched the whole thing, uh, but I started watching it and I'm going to continue watching it. But it gives me more of like, uh, I don't know, like a Blade Runner kind of vibe or something like that. Like it gives me like a sci fi future. Uh, it gives me a different vibe altogether, which I like. I don't have a problem with. But the thing was, going into all these theories, other than watching the base. Nine or what is eleven uh movie releases that they had. Other than watching that, I didn't watch any other Star Wars stuff. Oh, the Christmas special I watched and whatever it came out on TV back <laughs> in the movie. You know, but other than that, I that, that was my that, that was my experience with, with Star Wars. I read some of the old 70s stuff that came out, but I, I didn't want read the dark horse stuff, I didn't read any of the new stuff. So, like, I didn't judge it in anything but the visuals and being able to follow the storyline. Mm. You know, the only thing that I will uh, make a comment on a lot of the Star Wars stuff, they expect a lot of the people to, that are watching that they should already know some things. I don't know things already. You know, That's I, the problem with Star Wars, I agree. They've gone too much into requiring you to do homework beforehand. Mm. Yeah, and that's a little problematic. Like, I don't want to have to overthink it. It's I want to watch it and enjoy it. Because that, that was probably the problem with Ahsoka was like I knew I knew the character Ahsoka and I knew basically what she was about, obviously because she was in Mando season two, uh briefly. But I I didn't know who, you know, as a Scarlet or whatever her name is, and the the tentacle head chick, you know, the green chick and and like all, they, were, they were all from Clone Wars and stuff, weren't they? Uh, Hera was from Rebels. Uh, Rebels, sorry. Yeah, so I, I haven't seen, I haven't any, seen any of that. So I didn't know anything about those people. And, and with Ahsoka, somebody had mentioned that to me that she was in uh, Mandalorian. So I started watching Mandalorian simultaneously with Ahsoka so I could try to figure shit out uh, at one point. And, and they finally connected with me. But, you know, they, they should get... Like if you're gonna uh, like rehash something from a previous uh, series or a previous movie, just give a little like two minute summary or like understanding who the fuck is this? Oh. Yeah, uh, just so we what, know. For what I understand, Ahsoka is before Luke Skywalker or after, and uh, Mando is after. Uh, yeah, that that's the other thing, like what Kyle was saying. It's like sometimes the, the if you know if you don't know enough, you don't know the the timeline enough to know. Oh, is that before this or after this? Or and it, it, it can get confusing if you don't really. All know of this is taking place after the return of the Jedi. Hmm. Yeah. Well, here's the problem. Like, if you get somebody that watches an episode or a movie. Just random. They've never seen anything else Star Wars. And they're just watching that one random episode, that random movie. They're going to be completely lost. Sure. Mm. Completely lost. Unless you're watching The New Hope. That's you're, that's you're the problem. That's, that's the thing that you run into with shared universes, right? They're great in that they really get people hooked in and they, people become vested in it and will watch almost anything you put out. But they're bad in the fact that they make it difficult for people to overcome and get and become new people into it it's the same issue that co things that comic books have all the time right is and why they're constantly trying to reboot things or do different things is because the history this long established history becomes daunting and prevents new people from wanting to try to jump in in the middle of stuff well i think that's the major holdback that star trek has had for many many years that's because why they keep star trek different series it is Star Trek is super super oriented in knowing the the legacy and the mm -hmm. the the high like if you, if you ever watch a Star Trek movie, 
If you don't know these characters, you're like, what the fuck the, is my the movies? The movies, sure, because the movies are spun off of the TV show. But from a TV show's perspective, I think that Star Trek does a very good job of making the individual series stand alone on their own. Yet they'll pay, you know, they'll plant Easter eggs and crossover pieces to other um, to other sh shows that previous shows or something you don't need to know about them. But it's kind of cool. They're kind of like Easter eggs for those of you that are in the know. But they do a good job of making individual series stand alone from the rest of the... You could watch it without any other knowledge. And that's true because, like, Next Generation was able to hold off a whole new group of people that never watched Star Trek. Yeah, you could, you could sit down and watch DS9, Voyage... With it. I mean... Sure, there's some shared elements and stuff that cross over, but you could get it. You can pick up the gist of what's going on super quick. It's not heavily reliant on you having done your homework. Whereas, like things like the, you know, when you talk about Star Wars, just like these new movies and stuff, when they came out with the newer movies, it was super reliant on you having done your homework to understand certain element points. Um, but. Are we doing congratulations, or Chris? Are we doing another giveaway? Because I'm we're, freaking hot tonight. Let's go. No, we're not doing another giveaway, but we do have to restock the giveaway bin. Oh, oh here we I, go. I said I'm out. No. <laughs> so Who's I've gone through. He likes in there. I've pulled what's going to go into the giveaway bin. So this is what's going in. Uh, we're going to go uh, with this uh, Black Lightning issue number four. This is Ooh. the first appearance of Cyclotronic Man. Okay. They made Black Lightning in the 80s? No. This it's is like 70s. What, 78, 78. Is that 70s? 70s. Late 70s, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. We're going to put in a Ravage number 2099, number one. Stan Lee Love, let's go. Yeah. We're going to throw in a Mighty Thor, oh. the uh, first appearance and origin of Stormbreaker. Yeah, Chris, uh, you need to pick that book for me yeah. next time. I don't know about that one, man. <laughs> <laughs> The Savage Dragon, number one, first Barbaric, Ricochet, and Johnny Nitro. So, uh, also, that's the uh, number one on, for the ongoing as well. Correct. Mm -hmm. And the better of the covers. We'll yeah. throw in their uh, Resurrection oh. of Superman in the Polly oh, bag. Oh, the Polly bag. Everybody wants that one. That's right. <laughs> and all the crap that's in there. Uh, Black <laughs> Magic, on. issue three. Oh, I've never heard of this title. That's another one of these DC um, horse things that were going on. Horse. Uh, horse. We get horse. throw in some yeah. X Men. Oh, like, first oh. cameo of Bishop and first cover of Bishop. Yeah, I don't. He know has got. Why hasn't he gotten any pop from being an X Men? You yeah, would think see, he'd that get shouldn't some be pop. in there because he's about to pop. We'll throw now, in now Rob. No, first Rob, Gambit? No, no, I literally what? had this book in one of my mystery boxes. You can't be giving it away for free, man. I, I still Arthur need Adams that cover. book. I, I have 266, but I do not have that book. So that's in the giveaway, Ben. Yeah, you'll have to put, pull that one out for me too, Chris. <laughs> but Silver Hawks, number one. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, you, uh, you fan. Yeah. Spidey, I do have the, that annual, but I don't have 266. Facsimile. Facsimile. No, <laughs> I was about to get really mad. <laughs> it's the F perfection, <laughs> fake. <laughs> first, you actually uh, made a facsimile of that. Yeah, just recently. Yeah. First, uh, first Talia Ghoul. See, Morgs, this is where you need that Digger Jim that the uh, content. Oh, <laughs> it's a reprint. Alpha Flight, <laughs> Alpha Flight Fifty One. This is the first Jim Lee interiors for Marvel. Nice key. It's a nice book. He's got a little run in those alpha flights. Juno becomes Silver Surfer. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> I understood that reference. <laughs> first, well done. first appearance of Juno. What number is that? Uh, this is number 104. Okay. Some uh, fighting forces. Oh, what is that? Is it an animal? It's a big no. It's a big Nazi submarine. Holy shit! They're in a little raft. Oh, I thought I'm it was like some sort of crocodile. They think, or something. They think their luck has changed, and a Nazi submarine is yeah. coming up from below. I'm not so. getting any raft with the losers written on the side of it. It's like getting on a ship <laughs> named the Titanic. You don't do it. When oh. Jimmy Olsen, Jimmy Olsen sells out Superman. 
<laughs> what a that is ball. awesome. Look, look, those two guys are dragging away Superman. Like, come on. Some of those Jimmy Olsen covers are great. Uh, Jimmy Olsen's a atomic bomb. Like, and bell bottom. Please. Look, his arms are more toned than Superman. Is he wearing bell bottoms and he has yep. like uh, Popeye arms? Yep. All he needs is the anchor. There you go. Uh, some G.I. Joe oh. action. Oh. That was my first ever G.I. Joe book uh, I got as a kid. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's the first yeah. appearance of in it. No, there's no first appearance. In this, <laughs> this is the it's second too, appearance too of like Countdown or something like that. But It's, it's too, too late for first appearances at that yeah. point. It's they a key because of it. First I, appearance I, I, of Gwenpool in the story. And for and then first Wolver, uh, Wolvertini and uh, Shocket Raccoon. Yeah, is this is that the second Sadarsky print? run? Is this Sadarsky? No, is that the second or the first print? This is um, first print. I think it is. It says ends in one, okay. Because on I print. thought, I thought this the second print was the only one that had that little bobblehead in the cover of uh, of uh, in the bottom. Well, the barcode indicates the first print, so but first Gwenpool in story. That's why I was asking. I didn't know. Yep. We have a uh, DC Walmart pack going in there to replace uh, the one we pulled out today. You've got to get rid of that pallet. Um, we'll throw in a spectacular Spider-Man. Vermin. It's the Vermin, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Death he... of Vermin series. Very underrated character. A rat like human. Yeah, G.I. Yeah. Joe 63. Yeah, CJU is the backbone to the Death of Kraven story. Yeah. <laughs> Some it's awesome awesome by Gaslight. Oh. Minor key right now. That's cool. Square bound too. War Machine number one. First ongoing yeah. series. This is the embossed cover variant. Shiny goodness. See, that, that might looks... be the best foil cover from that era. I was just going to say that oh. looks fantastic. It's awesome. That, no, that I'll, love the, I'll love the Punish, uh, Punisher 75 with the silver north. That is well, cool. That That's good too. But the I'm talking about the completely like the complete the foil covers. That one ASM 375. This one's really nice though. I do like the mix of the foil plus the embossed cover. Yeah, I love that. Uh, it's either that or the West Coast Avengers with the red Mephisto cover on there. Oh, either yeah. of uh, Michael Turner, oh. Superman, Batman. That's awesome. Oh. And uh, how about Supergirl issue five, Michael Turner? I, I don't know why that's going in there, but I'll applaud Michael Turner every day. That, that's, is that like evil? Yeah, Supergirl? it's the. This is when they introduce shortly after they've introduced issue three. They introduce Black Kryptonite, which splits uh, a Kryptonian into two, with one being good and one being evil. So, oh, kind of like Superman four. Yeah. How about. Woo! Mr. Ric Flair. This is my only pass to talk about wrestling while doing comics is because I'm doing a wrestling comic. I'm dangerously close to getting the pull, so I'm going to move that one off. Is that an ongoing series? Is that an ongoing series or one shot? Uh, Scout Comics, so God only knows. I thought it was four. CJ? Was it four? I think it's a limited series. I don't know. but uh, I have no idea. Transformers issue 61 or oh. six, yeah 61 this is the first appearance of Unicron and the first Primus hey, hey baby you want to get down with me Shepard to get one now my side, my baby, one. Oh, no a wrong hey, Primus how, how come it doesn't say more than meets the eye on there does it say it I don't see that no it doesn't say it no more, more than meets your mom first got hit. him <laughs> ripping first issue baby let's go Keon some Canadian love right there. And then from the Mad Spidey collection, uh, some Doctor Strange, Master of the Mystic Arts, issue number three. Why? Like, come on. Wait, why? Because he already has it. Because. Tales to Astonish. Come on. Come on. First, first cameo of Lord oh. Seth. We're not putting that in the giveaway box. We absolutely are. Come on. Defenders issue 100. Oh, love that. Sense. I love that book. Come on. It's look, one of my favorite that. Defenders covers. Hulk with the Pete Rose haircut and everything. Come on. 
<laughs> um, Ghost Rider issue 68. This is the origin of the Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider. Oh. They reprinted that cover on original Ghost Rider Rides Again, number one. I have to rebag a couple of these ones that came from Mad Spidey's, but uh, especially this one, because this one, what I love is the sticker they put on here to identify it is definitely not the grade of the book, because it says, the sticker says very fine near mint, and this book is definitely not very fine near mint, but we gave one of these away before, so it's, it's only fitting we get another one of these, because... Chris hates when we give away books like Steranko books, um, 12 cent Steranko books. Yeah. You, you could literally just take that to heroes and get like, come on, man. Like, Craig, we could take that and get. And the last, the last yeah. book going into the giveaway bin Journey into Mystery, issue 124, an iconic Kirby cover, the first Queen Ula, second appearance of hercules uh and thor reveals his identity to jane foster yeah all i have to say Very is cool kyle book. kyle like i hope that you enjoyed me gifting you that pack because i will never gift another only slabs giveaway again <laughs> if i get it man look at then of course chris we found out this was for mad spidey okay all yeah. right yeah rob and i talked about that earlier yeah mm. So there you go. That's what's going in the giveaway bin. <laughs> Frig. And, and that's and that's the problem with having books that you don't know what you bought from like three, four years ago, sitting in a place, and you finally organize and you go, crap, I've already spent money rebuying a lot of this stuff, thus going through it. And <laughs> as I said to Rob, giveaway bin or C3, you you dealer's choice. <sighs> make it and that's, continuing to make uh, only slabs the premier giveaway show. We may not give away the single biggest book, but we give out the consistent greatest giveaways. <laughs> and that's how you ended up with that Consist jungle action book. Consistency, <laughs> baby. <laughs> oh, there's some great vote, stuff in there. These people don't vote for our show on on CBC Awards. <laughs> we know, should have like, our own award, best giveaway. Yeah, bin. Like yeah. <laughs> Often imitated, <laughs> but never duplicated. <laughs> well, where, where would you categorize yourselves as your show is concerned? It's just best an ongoing part, series. Best ongoing, collaborative, because it is yeah. collaborative. Yeah, it, 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 it falls into both categories. Yeah. Both. I don't. I wouldn't consider our show a special event because we got tagged in that no. last year, right? Well, I think special event or ongoing or it was something or special event or collaborative or something was like it was like a combo. Well, it can't it can't be a special event because it's right. no, no, but that I'm saying last year that category was a combo category. That's why C3 was like up against only slabs and up against in the mix and up again. Yeah, it was like it was kind of well, weird. I completely disagreed about the the that even being in any category. It should have been awarded something on its own for its merit. Again. And left just, alone. Or just spoke about that's all. Yeah, well, I, I, I personally, I would have given it a five-minute segment on the award show, give it its accolades for what it was, maybe put to, together something special just for that 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 cause, and not put it in a position to have it compete. Like I, I feel like having something that's done for a charitable cause in a competition. Cheapens the cause in my in my print opinion. Sure, we can talk about it. Austin LeMay print, eleven by seventeen art print, featuring Sp uh, a Spider Man looking character for copyright sakes. Is a Spider Man looking character? He's got no uh, legs. Yeah, he's got no legs. Got um, no legs. It's just the top. He's a top. Yeah, it's uh, quite, it's quite a torso. There's a handful <laughs> of these left. They're twenty dollars. <laughs> Available on uh, djlinks.bigcartel.com, and uh, all the proceeds go to Comics Curing Cancer. So your chance, again, there's was only 50 printed. There aren't going to be any more printed uh, of these prints. When, once they're gone, they're gone, and we move on. He so really did a wonderful job on that. I love the innovation he used uh, putting that together. The the webbing around the ribbon is really a nice touch. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. It was it, it was really really innovative. Austin is a phenomenal phenomenal individual community artist. There's no doubt about that. 
So yeah, the uh, the webbing is very reminiscent of uh, some early McFarlane stuff. Yeah. He, he did Large. love to wrap the wrap the webbing yeah. around a lot of stuff. So Large eyelids too looks good. Hmm. No, what I'm, what I'm going to be interested to find out, and I know whether Rob knows or not, and I don't expect him to reveal anything, whether they, the original is being done, hand done, or whether he did that digitally, if the original has been done pencil and ink or just pencil, whether that's going to be available in C3 or not. Um, I can tell you that, yes, the pen, it was done in pencil and ink originally and then colored digitally. Mm. And the original, I believe, will be available during C3. Probably in the mix, and DJ will bid $750 for it. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And nobody else will be like, get an even, an even and, lick in. And I will be in there shill bidding the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> So there's there's gonna be uh there's definitely it's gonna be very cool. We got we're gonna have a whole separate art auction this year, Mad Spidey. Um, yeah, I remember you saying you're gonna you're gonna so because we're gonna get rid of the wheel, um, and instead we're gonna do we're gonna do a an art auction separate from the comic book auction. So that way, um, it doesn't necessarily uh make it an eight hour auction, which kills everybody and makes it so nobody can really watch and see everything. And some of the some of the people who are really into art obviously are is a different buying group than some of the others. Yeah. So if we can make it easier for yeah, them to know yeah. this is the auction for the art. And if you want to show up for this one, great. People can show up to both. But if you're only into one thing and not the other, then that's great too. Are you going to give up free bid yeah. opportunities? I don't know that we're going to have we've talked we haven't talked about that and i don't know that we have it all depends on whether or not we can even get the mechanism in place to do, be able to handle all that you know we're still kind of go in the um we're still in the early ages of our getting into this that's true it, it, it takes a lot of effort to, to be able to handle a lot of that that's kind of uh yeah stuff, especially if you've got multiple previews on the, each piece yeah. Do you think getting do you think getting rid of the wheel will detriment a little bit to the impulse minimal. buyers? I think it'll be minimal because yeah. the reality is is most of the, the the idea behind the wheel originally was I didn't know that the shows were all going to have their own sets of prizes and all these other different things. And mm. so it was kind of like an idea, well how do we get people to donate during those shows? Um that we're you know doing the entertainment was kind of thinking it was more like the traditional pledge drive for over here in America we have public television where they would do these pledge drives and, and they would pause throughout their program and say oh hey why don't you uh, you know donate and you know at certain levels you would get certain things but instead of doing that we we're going to say once you donate above this level you'd get into this prize wheel to get these prizes that was the original idea and then what ended up happening was a lot of the shows ended up pulling out their own various prize wheels or other similar type of th or mini auctions or other stuff. And it became, okay, well, since they had a mechanism for raising money that was working on that, all that ended up happening was we had all this stuff that was being sent in that was being relegated to this wheel and just giving out extra stuff to people mm. that really de didn't help us to raise any money. Whereas by taking that stuff and instead having used that as part of a more auction stuff or just dishing it out to some of the shows to use in their stuff, so we could have used it more directly to raise money rather than just be giving out extra stuff as thank yous, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm only, I'm only thinking because I did it, I did it like obviously not the the first year when Cardboard Crazies run it, but the mm -hmm. second year when you took over. Like, I was like, well, I have to think about currency conversions and bullshit right, right. whatever like that. So I'm like, I haven't got enough money. But then it's like, I was like, oh, okay, well, if I donate 30 bucks, I'll get on a wheel and I might get something really good sort of thing. You know, it was still for charity and that, but it was still an impulse buy at the same time. So right. I think that's why I did it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, oh, I can afford 30 bucks. I'll just buy something for 30 bucks. You know, and I think there are a few people that are on limited budgets that might be like that mm -hmm. instead of relying on all 
the big spenders. Well, and that's exactly like, so the, the individual shows, like for example, let's take Gary's show, right? Gary's show mm -hmm. had stuff where like any you made any donation, like over like five bucks or something, and mm -hmm. he had his own set of prize things that he was doing, right? And yeah. so the different shows had different elements at different price points that they were doing things. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just it just thinks that well, yes, there are going to be there's some that will lose because of the wheel. Some people mm -hmm. would maybe somebody donates 40 and doesn't kick in that extra 10 bucks to hit that $50 mark or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I think overwhelmingly we can take the, those items that we would normally allocate there and by auctioning them off or, you know, as buy it nows or whatever we're doing things that we can make up for, we're going to make up more than make up for that is my, yeah. is my thought Doc, i can say that yeah and, and also we can take some of those things and instead of saying we can put some of those things and say okay hey you're doing one of the shows during our stuff here are items that you can use however you want to do on your show to raise to help raise the money right so then it, it it becomes more instant out of that versus this now you have to tune this other wheel and the, and the yeah. truth be said, the truth be said that um, a lot of like the people that are going to donate, that were going to donate for the most part anyway. The big auction was on Sunday after the wheel anyway, so it wasn't like it was giving people instigation to bid up their 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 bids on on the big auction just to get to like fifty bucks or whatever the case was. Yeah, that was anyway. done on purpose. That was on that was on purpose because we were doing a cumulative donation of fifty dollars so if you donated five dollars on this show and twenty dollars on this show and twenty five on this show if you'd cumulative had hit the fifty you'd get on the prize wheel and then what we and so we didn't want the auction revenue mucking that whole thing up because the auction was completely different beast but uh um, well, but yeah I mean, it, but yeah i know what you're saying yeah i don't think it really made that big of a difference to most people as yeah. far as if they were going to donate they were going to donate the biggest thing was the wheel was conceived of for one purpose, and then that purpose wasn't actually needed. So instead, instead, it makes more sense to say, "Hey, let's try it this year." Not having it, if it doesn't work, and all of a sudden we see no people really loved it, and we didn't have anything great. We can always come back to it the following year. But I think that it's more important that we find a different way to utilize those items to raise income, and then have the split that auction use that that night so that we essentially we have the friday night in the mix auction and then you'll have the saturday night art auction and then you'll have the sunday day comic book auction i think that's smart a way to go about it so it, it gives a little bit of a wear from the fatigue of mm -hmm. doing it consecutively it's and a long auction otherwise i i saw you guys i'm so yeah, like, bad for you that was like, was like yeah, uh, you know, uh, I was there for the most part the first time you guys did it well, during yeah. the entire auction. Uh, last year, I, I just because of work reasons, I wasn't being yeah. able to be around, but I was jumping in and out, and I'm like, what the fuck? How are they, how are they handling it? Being on it, and I was, and I was sick. At work. I started. I was start. I was sick that uh, this last one for the first part of it. I was not feeling well at all. So thank your God, brain, my your brain becomes mush. I mean, I did the. I mean, I did the overnight uh, for a stretch uh, last year. Yeah, yeah, you did that. That's crazy. By the time I was done, my brain became mush. I was yeah. like, "What the hell?" Yeah. No. For, thank God, my wife was not doing anything that day. Was able to swap books in and out, and I was able to set up a second camera and stuff, which which was nice actually, being able to have the second camera for like the featured items that were like, here's what's an item that's an ongoing bid for a period of time prolonged bidding meanwhile we can continue to do other items because that really helped with some of those really big items too so anyways yeah it's going to be uh once uh you know we're starting to get i'm starting to get a couple things and people reaching out and some stuff and then hopefully you know once heroes is done we'll do our start doing our big push for items and uh start start bringing that stuff in and before you know it it'll be the beginning of october and it'll be time Whew. Yeah, first year, twenty four hours, crazy. Yeah, I don't, I don't doubt. I don't know how you guys did that, Roscoe. My hats off to y'all. I mean, it could be done in shifts, 
effectively, but it's got to be done in shifts. You can't have uh, one guy doing 24, 40 hours straight. You, well, that was what you, they did. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. They, you, your brain is like done after that. I remember Roscoe actually going on fine ticks after he was done with the whole thing. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? At that point, you're you're on your like fifth wind, and you can't you can't sleep now because your brain doesn't know what yeah. to do. Zombie mode. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. You're you're running on fumes, and like mm -hmm. you know, what kind of fumes? Who knows? Roscoe told me <laughs> a case of water and dub. <laughs> hey, hey, what? <laughs> I gotta. Oh, that reminds. I gotta try. I gotta talk to Pete. Uh, see about scheduling my. 2k giveaway in about two weeks and congrats well, by the way on hey, 2k thank you i'm hoping to do it like after only slabs that way it's a time that's conducive to <laughs> to, to everybody except for the apac region but australia it won't be as bad because it'll be after after only slabs but i mean but if you're in thailand it would be suck but I don't have I don't my demographics in Thailand and India and uh, far um, or Western China. I don't I don't have I don't have high um, in Eastern Russia. I don't have great demographic reach there. So I have a huge demographic in Bangladesh. Well, there you are. Why? Yeah, well, right, right, your Russian porn bots have all been taken away from I, you. So. I, 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 did I ever tell I, you what, what ended up happening? <laughs> the I I, I'm not going to call up the person individually that did this to me, but what I ended up finding out, like in the early days, maybe like a couple years ago, somebody thought it would have been funny as hell to do a Google Ads uh, thing on my channel directed to Bangladesh. And to, I think the Philippines or something like that. What are these things? And all of a sudden, that? I was getting all all of oh, coming in in like a different languages. I'm like, what the hell is going on over here? And then I finally figure out what the hell it was. But that you was fun. It out? They told me after like about six months of me complaining about like, uh, uh, why do I have to cater to to these demographics? But. Yeah, it, it's, it, all, it's it, all it's all Gorgon's fault. Yeah, pretty much. You know, <laughs> it, it, if it gave me a, a healthy supply of of uh, of, of uh, new people, it would have worked out well. But it didn't. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> and you don't want that kind of crowd. It destroys your channel. Exactly. So, be interesting is uh, there's a race there's a race going on like. When I had done my PGX to CGC conversion video, I had sent when I sent those books to to uh, CGC on the same day I shipped the books to CBCS for the same type of thing. The CGC books came back. We recorded a video. We ran it a couple of weeks ago. I've since boxed up another shipment to C to CGC. Sent it off. CGC's received it. They're in the middle of doing the press on it. And I haven't heard anything from CBCS other than that they had sent it to the pressing room. Still, so it's like Why? I, it's possible. I don't know, but it's possible that I will end up getting the second shipment back before CBCS comes back, which may that will just illustrate the turnaround time lunacy that CBCS still experiences, and it's obviously not because people are going to them in droves. Um, why are they so consistently terrible? Why? I don't, I don't understand. Know. Like it takes a harder effort to be so terrible than to actually do your job right. You know, it's like, funny. I don't was, understand. There was just that one period during the pandemic where CBCS was like their turnaround time was king of the mountain, and they quickly, very small window. They quickly slipped right back down the side of that hill. They were like Steve Largent. They taught us how to fumble the ball. Steve Largent holds the career record for the most fumbles in the NFL. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification to people who have absolutely yeah. no idea who that is. He, he was and a quarterback. So he, he was a quarterback and he had small, smaller than average hands. So he ended up fumbling the and he played in inclement weather, a lot of wet weather in Seattle. So he fumbled the ball a lot. So but, he was a Seahawk, is that right? Yeah, Seattle Seahawks. Yep. Yeah. So that's the uh, 
you, you know, it would be bad enough if they just took very long. Or my well, the, what, what makes it worse is their customer service is so egregious. Like you, you call them up, and it's like, what? am I talking to human beings now? What the hell is going on what with them? Like, that, right? That's the one thing I'll give CGC credit for, and and like beyond the, beyond everything else. They have great customers. They might not always have the answer. They might have incompetent people on the phone, but they will be pleasant to you on the phone. They'll try to get you answers. They'll try to appease you. They'll do the best they can as far as customer service is concerned. I got to correct myself. I'm sorry. Not Steve Largent. Steve Largent was a wide receiver. I was confused by that. I was Dave, thinking he Dave, was Dave Craig was the, was the quarterback. Who did it? But now it turns out Dave Craig doesn't have the record for the most fumbles anymore. You know who does? Patrick Mahomes. No, Brett Favre. Hey, <laughs> fuck off, Chris. <laughs> Brett Favre followed by Warren Moon. Dave Craig has yeah. fallen to third overall. But so I was thinking of Dave Craig. Household name Craig. <laughs> Dave Craig. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the Silver Age Spidey submission to come back. That's the one I'm the most interested about. You you notice the the the, the common theme between uh, uh, Favre and Moon, the freaking cold weather. If you they played both, in that freaking cold weather, your hands would fumble a lot of balls too. Are they both chase Warren, heads? Warren, Where? Warren Moon or who played? Warren Moon? Didn't he play in Minnesota? He played in, in, in a uh, dome. Vikings. He played in the dome. Was it, was it always in a dome? I thought back then they didn't have a dome. No, he played in the dome. He, he played, played for the in, Houston Oilers. He played yeah, in the CFL. I think he did. Edmonton I think he did. Wait, did. Didn't Moon play in Minnesota? It wasn't yeah, he invited in the dome when when the that dome that where the roof collapsed. Well, see, because from the cold, it wasn't the cold. He was in the dome. How do you know? Were you were you a scientist that you didn't know a yeah. collapse from the cold or not? I have heaters inside domes. Like my city literally has. One of the most famous domes on earth. Yes, it has a freaking heater. Like, come on, man. And the heaters do the job. You don't, I don't, you don't freeze your ass off. Wait, they're running around. What do you think that they're like? They're, they're did you see so, them running around with long sleeves on? So the first ten years he played in Houston, then he played three years in Minnesota, two years in Seattle, and then two years in Kansas City. I don't remember those last two. Well, Kansas that. City. Now, now hold on. So in Kansas City it was in 1999 and 2000. He played one game in 1999 and threw th one completion for 20 yards. And then in 2000, he played in two games where he completed 15 passes for 200 yards. So, yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised you don't remember him. Yeah, I was watching the Chiefs back then, though. I'm surprised I have no recollection. He was probably him. backing up at that point in his Mark, career. Marcus, were you, were you watching him? For some bizarre reason, I, I only associate Moon with uh, Minnesota. I don't know why. I don't know and why. Either. Either. I only associate him with Houston. But I associate him with the NFL. I didn't hear what you said, Chris. Oh, what the up, Edmonton Rude? Eskimos? Do you remember Montana being the Chief there? I do remember that. Of course, I remember that. Didn't he also yeah. play for the Canadian League for a while? He Moon? played Warren Moon played for the Ed, Edmonton Eskimos. I literally yeah, I just said that. that. <laughs> yeah, he did that before he did. before he came to the NFL. He was up there. Yeah. Yeah. What he you got to know, CJ, about the Kansas City Chiefs is they have a long history of taking on former 49er quarterbacks. Uh, oh, yeah, Steve they, DeBerg, Montana. Joe Montana, Alex Steve Smith. Bono. Yeah, they've they've done very well for themselves in picking and, off and, people. And Australian next one. rugby player. Well, I'll tell you, Montana played like a champ that year. He was with a uh, freaking. Uh, oh yeah, he almost took him. Yeah. He, he did really well. The only reason the Niners got rid of let Joe Montana go was because Steve Young was not, had been sitting there for so long, so patiently, and was costing money. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that money. They, listen, that's the way to do it. I always say with the they did it the right way with their quarterbacks. Uh, Green Bay did it right with their quarterback. Only everybody just went with back-to-back -back Hall of Famers for quarterbacks. You know, you know what the problem with that is? Is it ruins your fan base for the next twelve quarterbacks that come that are just okay or average because your entire fan you have generations who grew up with ex only expecting Hall of Fame quarterback and can't figure out why you can't get another one. Well, I'll tell you what, 49ers, since their heyday. When they had Young, they had Montana. Yeah, they had some down years. But did they really have 
horrible years like other teams? They had some they, real bad yeah, years. Jeff yeah, Garcia, they, they, they never the Detroit Lions. Oh, Jeff Garcia yeah. was actually one of the bright spots at quarterback. But uh, don't gentlemen. forget, you know, they had like Drunken Miller at QB at one point. And they had, I mean, Russell. for a while, there was like a different quarterback every year. It was, Garcia was great. I like Garcia. Jeff Garcia was actually a fairly good quarterback for the CFL yeah. cast off. Hey, Jeff Garcia played for the San Jose Spartans when I, the San Jose State when I was there, butter. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, it's funny you say he's a CFL cast off because if he stayed in the CFL, you think he would have been happy to keep him, right? He went for the he went for the bright lights and big titties of San Francisco, man. Like, Everybody, they, if you want to play football that has four quarters, not or for four downs, not three. Uh, well, no, well, people want to play more team more exciting to to pay the money. They, they want to make they money. They also want to know if I ran for 100 yards. What do you mean I ran for 50 meters? I don't know what that is. They don't do <laughs> meters. Oh, that's right. Canada can't decide either. They're like yeah, they, they well, still, one, they still one play foot in the to, metric system and American one football foot in that way. Yeah. And, and Canada yeah, takes a old. big chunk of their salaries. A huge chunk of their salaries as far as well, uh, we do that what they make. California too. Yeah, What's well, up, Kyle? It, it's not a smart move moving from New something. York or to, to California. Geno Smith. Yeah. You got a guy, Kyle? Yeah. All right, uh, brother. Thank you, George. Happy, uh, happy belated birthday. I'll hold on to those books until you contact me. I will. Make sure you make a video of opening that box. <laughs> Geno <laughs> Smith is not in that category. <laughs> Former first round pick, Geno Smith. Who cares? You know how many first round picks sucked? Geno Smith was oh so overrated. You know what I love about the draft every year is what looking and watching for the New York Jets fans to be so excited about it's time for them to pick and then yeah. just get pissed off at whoever their team picks. The it's Jets like a, a right, a right every bad. single year. It's like the Browns. That's why you know why the Jets uh, are so bad at, at uh drafting. Because they got the jinx of New York. They, 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 they're not playing in New York. They decided to keep our freaking name. They pretended they're New York teams. And they're playing they in play the same place that the New York Giants play? That's Literally. right. There's they're only both one New York team. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, only one freaking New York team. They're the only freaking non-traders. They're the only ones that pay New York taxes. I wouldn't say non-traders because they <laughs> almost ended up in Toronto. Like let's be almost honest. doesn't mean anything. They played games in Toronto. It's okay. Exhibitions. There's been teams that played oh, in Mexico you, too, and in England. They put regu it's regular okay. season games in Mexico and England. You know uh, they're, they're making them. You know they want to make it an international sport. That's okay. That's smart. Morgs, can you highlight Roscoe's last comment there? Rosky. Okay, so everyone's caught up right now in the fact that the Bills traded away. Uh, Whatever his name was. Stephon Diggs. Yeah, I'm not saying his name. But quietly, the Bills went out and Are got... Are you serious? <laughs> the Bills quietly went out and got Curtis Samuel. Is Curtis mm -hmm. Samuel Stephon Diggs? No. But Curtis Samuel put up excellent numbers fantasy-wise for the last three years on the Washington oh, Redskins matters. with no quarterback <laughs> there. So imagine what they can do, what he can Let's do with it. Josh Allen. How about this? Would you, like to, would you like to yards. overpay... Let's just clip this. 800 yards unless he gets would hurt. you would you like to overpay for a wide receiver or we've got an extra one mm. hey, no the bills traded away that problem oh, oh, chris, oh, chris yeah, you're not making a good argument and i hope our cause by if telling you don't us know who curtis samuel is numbers. you don't know the yeah. nfl i got no problem with the player but fantasy league you're numbers okay. is not it's not a good <laughs> argument <laughs> i don't know who any of these people are no. i'm also Listen, the bills hey the we bills? signed a rugby player <laughs> i'm just <laughs> happy <laughs> I'm just happy we have a team that's competitive every fucking year. That's what I'm happy about. Because I went from nothing, nothing, like nothing. Oh, you know when we would be competitive? When we're up for a good draft pick, and then we get really competitive just enough not to get the good draft pick, and then lose. I just that's, wish that's, the Niners that's what would happen. Move, would stop, <coughs> sign Ayuk and move Debo. Let somebody have Debo. 
You'd, you'd rather I, get rid of Debo? I would. Debo's yeah. got more years, more miles on him. The way that they use yeah. him in the multi the multi facet role, you already got McCaffrey can do that. You're you already have a um, <laughs> you have other players who can do that kind of stuff. I would much rather see uh, Debo move on and feature Ayuk as who's the younger player as your primary who can help stretch the field and get those plays and then fill in some other, you know, like the guys that they got as well as draft some other folks to be some of those second, second, third options there. Cause you're still going to have, you know, McCaffrey out of the backfield for catching passes. You're still going to also have, you know, Kittle coming out on tight end breaks for stuff. So we still, you're still going to have great options. If Kittle stays healthy, I think last season was the first season of five years. We actually completed in full season. Debo yeah, Samuel for the last two years has been true. injury injury riddled. Well, I understand yeah. that. It's like I'm happy yeah. to move on to Debo and we keep Ayuk. That's my that's me. Well, they I know it's not a popular because he's doing I, the tour right now. He keeps saying Debo, and all I want to do is watch the the movie Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Debo, I you can't have Ayuk. them both. That's just my personal choice. I remember yeah. when we drafted Josh Allen for the uh, that year. I scream out, finally. My son jumps into the room. He's like, why are you yelling? And then I'm like, look at these freaking morons that passed up on this guy. I remember like yesterday saying that. Everybody was like, he sucks. That's why he got passed up. I'm like, all right. Well, that We finally got a quarterback. We finally got a freaking quarterback. Yeah, so do we. Kelly. Everybody well, passed. Him on. If you guys can remember that draft, because the, year, the years before, the year before, the Bills traded back. And they traded Kansas City their pick, and the and the Chiefs ended up taking Patrick Mahomes, and the Bills went back and got Tre'Davious White. The next year was the year that they planned on taking taking a quarterback. The national media was panning Josh Allen, just mm-hmm. panning him like, "Don't waste it. He's not a first round pick. He's inaccurate. All these problems." Flash forward seven years later. <clears throat> making the playoffs like six of the last seven years, uh, taking the division four years, being stopped by Mahomes twice now. He's still inaccurate, but my God, he, he has the strongest arm and throws the, the fastest ball in the NFL. Like, yeah, the, met, the metrics said prove it. Before. We looked up the, the metrics stats, prove it. throws the deepest balls in the NFL, and it wasn't Josh Allen. If that's a, the definition of a shitty quarterback, I'll take him. No problem. Oh, Give me the shitty quarterback. So here's the thing. Like, Marcus and I chat privately sometimes. And, like, like I know I know Chiefs fans get nervous about Josh Allen the same way that Bills fans get nervous about Patrick Mahomes. Like, he, I mean, he you, guys probably, you guys probably get more nervous, though. To be <laughs> no. Yeah, because, because the Bills, <laughs> it, it's not like Mahomes – Here's the thing. It's not like Josh Allen has lost. Oh, he knocked it, him it, out. Or it's yeah. the, de- the Every defense. Time. Bills defense set them down, and then the kicker went wide right this year. 13 seconds was the, the kicker Bills went defense. wide in Buffalo? No. That's only happened twice. Oh, okay. Every time we play the mm-hmm. Bills, I've come to the – I mean, every time we play the Chiefs now, I've come to the point in my life where I'm like, oh, what the fuck? Oh, what the fuck? Like, the, the, the Chiefs get the what the fuck reaction out of me now. Like I like I can't watch a game with them. Like I walked away from the game the other time, and I was like, "Oh, we won. Okay, get, get, let's get ready for the freaking championship." They freaking lose. I'm like, "What the? F- I can't. I can't deal with this with the Chiefs. I don't know what what's in their barbecue. I don't know what the hell it is that they're doing over there. They they got they got the jinxes. They put the Gavorka on us. I don't know what the hell they did. To us. But every time we play them in the playoffs, we got their number in the real uh, in the regular season." Why the hell can't we beat the shit out of them in the playoffs? I don't understand. Yeah, the you, guys, you guys Go don't ahead. have our number in the regular season. Oh, stop, stop it. Seriously? Stop that. If MVS <laughs> just catches the ball, oh, game yeah. over. We win like we should. Another one. But I'm fine. We and got your number in the regular season. season. Drop that ball. In the you guys playoff. can have the regular season. That's fine. I don't need. Yeah, that. okay. we, that's fine. But I'm I just saying you for for, for t- the, the the fact that we, we we got your number there, and for some reason in the playoffs we got the Kavorka on us. I don't know. I don't know what the hell. It's, it's, I'm just gonna say this. I'll say that Kansas the, City. The Bills just get congratulations on putting together yeah. a good team. The Bills just get out coached in the playoffs. And, and Brett Veach, we trust, man. I trust him. I think I the RGM Brett Veach has done a crazy it's good, good job. It's good when 
it's good when different teams get a chance to be dominant for periods of time. Yeah, of course. I think we would all I, agree I, that we hate the Patriots. So, yeah, I don't I agree. I agree that they're a great team. <laughs> the Kansas City is a great team. I'm not going to take that away we from them. We let go oh. of Tyreek Hill and then went and went. But we should have had right. one by now from them. We That's should have won one by them by all these years. It's not your fault. It's like, why did Carl Malone never win? You know, it's not your fault. Freaking why did Steve Nash, why did Steve Nash never Kelly win? Kelly and Thurman jinx on us. I don't know. I think they, they put the jinx on us. They're you like, come hey, up you didn't win one. You're not going to win one. <laughs> the, you know, you might call it a Jordan-esque era. Stop that. It's Stop not that. Charles Stop. Barkley's fault. <laughs> Dude, it, when, it comes, when it comes to the bill, it doesn't matter what era it is. If you want to compare the teams, the Bulls to the Chiefs, okay, but don't compare, don't compare to him to Jordan. Come on, Mahomes to Jordan? Oh, I no, will. He's gonna lead the bloody no, league. No. Mahomes is no Jordan. <laughs> he's not gonna lead oh. the bloody league in passing. Yeah, I, mean, like, no. I, I mean, Jordan was he's leading the league Super in Bowl. points and defensive. Free. Like he was both sides. He, he definitely stands he's out Jordan. as a quarterback. Like a he's Jordan. Of he's a great quarterback, but he's not the Jordan of quarterbacks. He's number one in the league. He's I'll give him Jordan. that. He's not the today. Come on, I might give him that he's the next Brett Favre. He's not even the Tom Brady. Dude, he's gonna catch Tom Brady. He has more super. He's on a better pace than Tom Brady right now. I mean, it's just the beginning. That's fine. We don't need to argue about it because y'all are gonna be here three years, four years. Here's, five here's years what I will give you. Gonna understand? Here's what I'm gonna give understand. You. You're going to be so Marcus, sick of me. It's going to be ridiculous. Our Chris is going to block me on Instagram. Here's where I'm going to get him. This thing on. I welcome it. You know I welcome it. Marcus, I will give yes. you this. That he may be better than Brady simply because I haven't yet had seen uh, your quarterback trailing in the game have to then hand it off to the kicker to then win the game for him because he couldn't do it himself. I saw I saw Tom Brady do that multiple times. Ask Vinatieri, could you please win the game for us with a 50-yard fucking field goal because mm -hmm. we're running out of time and I can't get it done? Happened at least two of his Super Bowl wins. I haven't seen that yet out of the Bu Buckers, Buckers won some games for us. But the thing say, the ooh. difference the difference between I said Super Bowl. I said Super Bowl. The difference between Mahomes and Brady and, and his own players on his own team will tell you this on Brady's team is that when Brady was winning those early Super Bowls, it wasn't him leading the team in any way, shape, or form. He was even the best quarterback on the team. Whereas, whereas Mahomes has led every single one of our Super Bowl wins. He's been the man every single one of them, and he's younger than Brady. You know, in terms of how many Super Bowls he's gotten three far quicker than no granted. Now, granted, he did have to, he did well, he didn't have to rely on his kicker, he did have to rely on poor coaching by the Niners, uh, and make a decision. That was overtime. terrible, but that was terrible. you know, that's our own fault. It's not this, no, fine Brady. not saying that we would have won because if it had gone the other way, it just could have been different. That's all. I wouldn't know. We were Brady. going for two. Imagine though, we were if you guys had scored a touchdown and then we scored a touchdown, we were going for two, which was would have been the most nerve wracking thing ever if that right. had happened. That's oh what I said. It's not. God. It's not a guarantee that it would have that that the outcome of the game would have been any different. It's just there are several points in the game where things would have been very di would have been more interesting if certain things had happened. Among other things, that was one of them. But uh, you know, hey, we lost. We lost. This is how we define Brady. I wouldn't call him one of the greatest. However, mm -hmm. I might call him the best consistently strong quarterback throughout his career. No, Brady's the go. Brady, Brady's the go. He did the same shit over and over. He did it really got well. The most, he's got the most Super Bowl rings, but I still I think it's he's, he, he was consistently yeah, exactly. strong. He was consistently strong throughout his career. He did what he did. He was no Montana. He was no Aaron. He was no Montana, Montana didn't win a Super Bowl with the Chiefs. What's no, that? He didn't win the Super Bowl with the Chiefs, but neither did Tom Brady. No, but Tom, Tom Brady, Brady did, Tom went Brady to another team. Tampa. Won, whereas Montana couldn't do that. He didn't go somewhere else and win. So, I mean, I, I, I wanted to keep with Montana myself. 
but you can't keep it with Montana. Brady's the go. You can't argue. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. Oh, no, here's I, the thing about not, that, I'm going to disagree. Montana had a freaking uh, – freaking, uh, <laughs> so he's he's gone. Here's gone. the thing, though. Uh, and the tr- and truth about that Chiefs thing. Come back. And, can, we remember, talking, can we remember any of those receivers? Because Tampa had Godwin and future sure. Hall of Famer Mike Evans. Like yeah. – and they broke and Gronk came back. And that defense was they had that defense more than anything. That defense gave Mahomes fits. Plus, we didn't have a line. But, but, they, they just but the Chiefs went too. But football. the Chiefs went in the playoffs deep with the A uh, in the AFC. But speaking of this year, the A the Super Bowl again will come out of the AFC. Like the quarterbacks now that are lining up for the AFC teams, man, it's incredible. Beat like, your heart out, Brock Purdy. Are you all trying to get the consideration of medicine? And the treatments and the science that the players are being helped with right now to, uh, to for the longevity of their career. Montana didn't have that in the eighties, going in the early nineties. It was way different as far as the the way their bodies held together. The guy was basically held together with freaking scotch tape. You this know, is why you can't. That's right. Errors. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what's fun about every sport, right? When you talk about different eras, there's always people's memories of certain players or certain colors, certain things. And then also there's the rules changes and the way the game is played and everything else is completely different, whether it's baseball, whether it's football, whatever else. And that's where these conversations become fun. But in the end, at the end of the day, the answers are that these are the players who are the best of their era, the best of their, the best of their time. The, I and think they, that the players now are always the best of all time. It's always true that the players now are better than the players in back, like man, you, you you'll watch, though, oh, putting those players today. Take take some of the players that played today that are playing right now and stick them back in the game in the 1950s. They're bigger, faster, stronger. They may be, but they will every. be broken so no, hard. <laughs> I think I think you're wrong because they're so much bigger and stronger. But that's why they're breaking mm. themselves. A lot of them are breaking themselves where they have these random just joints fall apart and stuff because. Their muscle, they built themselves up so much that they their muscles are beyond are at the edge of what those tendons and ligaments can hold together. And so it doesn't take much. And all of a sudden they're oh I blew out my knee. Oop. I, yeah, blew out my I don't knee. think you're gonna convince me that some dudes from the 1950s who probably had a second job were gonna crush they anybody. cut off their own finger to get back out on the field. You're, yeah, you're not gonna come like the players if today put, are always better than the players before. It's always if, player. you put, if you put a man of the physique of Will Chamberlain in the NBA today, do you know what he would do to and if they let him foul the way he did back then? Do you know what he would do to these players today? I reject would, any argument like this. Any argument I reject. Well, I they're mean, all they're all pussies now. That's by you, you, You're saying that, 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 that they would that the players today would be better. Take Will Chamberlain and put him in today's NBA. He would put get Jordan. he would get body. He would get bo- he'd, he'd take, actually still be really good. Will, take, Will would translate really well, actually. Let me take a quarterback like Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes and stick them behind the behind the lines with the wide receivers and stuff in the 50s and the players hitting the way that the players, those guys were hitting those quarterbacks shit back then. Because it's better coaching today to, for protect. I'll tell you what, put, the, put that well, freaking these guys are training like they've never trained before. They they have supplements like they've never had before. They I have don't diets what like you train with. Before. You see there Lawrence no Taylor coked up no running at you, you're done. Jordan could have never Jordan I'll be right back. Could have, Jordan could have never been at the top of the league for as long as the has been at the top of the league. You just it, it, it would have been, he was at the top of the league for 13 years straight. Marcus, do you think if Jordan didn't right. retire for two years after his father Incorrect. was assassinated, if he didn't, if he didn't take those two years mm-hmm. off after he's assassinated, that the Bulls wouldn't have gone eight straight? I think that, that that's I a legitimate I, question. I'm not asking you sarcastically, by the way. I think Elijah Wan could have beat him. Yes, absolutely. Both times, could. both times the Rockets. I mean, it's, it's hard to say, but yeah, I think that Elijah Wan and that team absolutely could have beat. And the even Bulls. if that I was would have been case. cheering for the Bulls, and I would have wanted them to win eight straight, mm-hmm. absolutely. But not. I don't think it's necessarily true, and we'll never know because yeah, Jordan. Even if that was the case, Jordan, he would have probably still made the finals, right? You agree? Because on that? we'll never know because Jordan couldn't take the heat at the top for that long straight. Period. Well, I wouldn't incorrect. say that, man. I think, I think his father's I will. assassination. I, will. I think his father's assassination yeah. really played into it. He just had to get away from it all, dude. Right. He, and, he was and he gambling. Was 
Come he on, was on top. He, he had no problem being on top when he came yeah. back. If you think, what do you think that every every NBA player doesn't have doesn't play that or or have like all these sides? No, I think they do, but I think game? I think that I think that Jordan's was so extensive that it became a problem. Yes, I do think it. It doesn't make any sense for him to retire. Even if he lost those two years, it doesn't make any sense. And that. he lost those two years, he would have still made six out of eight championships. Yeah, but the thing is, yeah, can LeBron end, say that? In the end, I'll, but one thing we can't say factual is he never lost in the finals. Exactly. No, and, and I think we're, right. getting, we're getting away got from my six MVPs. Six we're MVPs getting... in the finals. That, that's a big deal. There was nobody even close to how good he was in those. No, 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 no. But the point Marcus is trying to say, I'll give him this: is that LeBron's longevity and like the the whole spending a million dollars on your body, brilliant move, brilliant move. That's how he's able to play this long. Is that you can't compare eras. Jordan would have done the same. But he didn't because he was. Jordan did play for a long time. Like people, like not as long as he hasn't been at the top for as long as LeBron. But the other thing is comparing. It's not. Why, I, how is this even an argument? Comparing body I don't even understand. Talks. Compare the guy. I don't even understand how there's pushback to that. Okay, so it's, no, it's, I'm just saying. Not, it's, 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 he didn't play as many LeBron years. Has, how could he be a top uh, as many years? Okay, Look, this is my point. You're making my point with me. Thank you. I appreciate I'm just, that. I'm just CJ. saying, from my from my point of view, being over here and being an NBA fan, obviously not being able to see as many games or go to games as you guys have been able to do living in the same country. Watching Jordan on TV and what he accomplished and what he had to get through to get there. Like you're talking about going through Detroit bad boy days, like literally getting, you know. All of them would have gotten destroyed by today's players. The bad boys would have gotten destroyed. Back in those days, it was a more physical game. Look, there's a clip clip of Jordan doing a Oh, I got fouled. There's a clip of Jordan doing a simple behind-the-back dribble. And you can listen to the announcer saying, whoa, 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 we've never seen that before. This is amazing. Because it's a different era. They they would have thought Kyrie Irving was a fucking witch if he played back then. Because you cannot compare eras. They're all stacking on top of each other. So everything that Jordan did, the players now are stacking on top of that. And stacking on top of that. So they're just at a higher level than Jordan and all of his peers were. So he's anybody that comes in and says that the old guys are better than the new guys, they don't know. He, what here's the difference. They Jordan really was don't. being Jordan. Jordan was being Jordan. All the players today want to be Jordan. There's a di- that's the difference. Yeah, again, you can't. You're you're making different arguments from what Marcus, I'm making. Marcus, my only I don't think you understand is, that. My only point to this is that if somehow if if we were to sit down and actually debate the two, and I don't think we're doing this here. Because you just wanted to make a point on how long. Yeah, you his, can't his compare his eras. Is my was. only point. Yeah, you guys wanted to be, you is, you guys wanted to be something else that it's not. The only thing, yeah, I, the no only thing I point to about Jordan is is offensively gifted and the domination that he was offensively. He still won Defensive Player of the Year numerous times. That's his my era. point. In his era, right? Yeah, against Larry Bird. Against in, Magic Johnson, in his, in his against era. Isaiah right. Thomas, the best player Magic of Ewing, his Charles era. Barkley. Come on, man! You, 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 you're devaluing the guy. Mm. He could play today and, and be easily scoring forty points a game. Mm. I, I can say I can say both sides of the story. Like I could definitely say Marcus's thing because it is, you know, a lot more athletic game now, and obviously the long ball game has changed a lot as well now because everybody's shooting threes and that. I'm just saying you can't take out the physicality difference between the errors. The uh, players I now, because the, the the players now are bigger, faster, now. stronger. The players the now refing, are bigger, faster, stronger. The refing all is them. different, though. That's the point, though. In the, the bad boy era, are bigger, faster, stronger. The and they're emotionally the softer. Let a lot more go. And they're emotionally softer. Now, yeah, here we go. Yeah, this, that, well, they are. Not in, CJ, they are. Not in, that's, that's not, not a point, though, because there, there was, there, there's been crybabies. Come on, man. Crazy. Who's the biggest flopper? Who he, LeBron is the biggest flopper since Kurt you, Rambis. Come on, you, Magic, you sound Magic like every old person. In <laughs> ever, you sound like every old person ever made in the history. Am I wrong that he flops? Do you understand that? You sound like every old person ever. Like your Did argument, you ever see Jordan flop on the floor and cry to the referees? Every old person ever. Ever. And I refuse I, to be that. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan would I'm get back up and dunk on somebody. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The guy flopped. Listen, if I had to build a human being, a specimen, 
to look like a, they, a basketball they, player, they, I would take all, LeBron's era has a crack. Like I said, Magic even stops. Even Magic stopped and like looked at the ref. Like, come on! Like they all do the crybaby stuff, man. It uh, that's not like history. That. Not all I'm saying is refing not was flopping, different man. than what it is now. Hmm. Not the flop. I will say the like. The thing about the Jordan debate that just that I understand and I, I'm okay with it, I just let it go. Is that when I watched the last dance, do you know how many times I cried? How many times I had goosebumps like just crazy hair on end goosebumps watching that? The way that that Bulls run made all of us feel like it changed. It just it's it's a part of our life. It's a part of our growth. It's a part of our era, and we'll never let it go. And I understand that. Can I, I, can I say one thing? One, one thing about the, the last dance. Jordan. I loved it. I love the last dance. But I'll say one comment. They shamed the Aussie. That's all I'll say. They did. Uh, they did do. Uh, what was it uh, Longley? Like, like Longley? He should have scored more than eleven points in that first quarter. That's the problem. <laughs> they didn't even put him in the whole bloody documentary. Well, that, that yeah. because he didn't score any more points. That's why. It doesn't matter. He, he was still scoring. part of championship run. He was well, still part of it, 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 it physically makes me feel ill to defend Jordan as a Knicks fan. I, it really like hurts me to defend him. Uh, didn't sound like it to me. I despised the guy it growing like up and watching. It. It's not like you were really into it to me. I was really into basketball. I was oh man in the nineties. I'm 80s, talking about defending was, Jordan. You were full throated. I'm not defending him because you know I, I mean. can't. I can't. I can't stand by and watch, like, and just because I hate the guy, take away anything for his greatness. He was fucking awesome. I'm not he taking really away from awesome. his greatness. You just heard me talk about I cried and I goose. I'm not taking away from his greatness. I'm just saying that. The era he played in is a lower level than the era they're, that's playing right now. But the, but that's the, well, you, and that will you, always be true. Choosing, that, that will never not be true. You're picking and choosing where you find it to be a lower level. Because if you take the same players from that era and give them the kind of medicine and the kind of science that they have today, they'd be different okay, players. We, well, Marcus, we, I, we, hold on. I do have one legit point in what you just said. So for the prime – so. They, there's a, there's a Sports Illustrated article that when you take Michael Jordan's opponents from eight when he was age 23 to age 28, and in that period he only got the that was the first three rings. When you take that same period of LeBron versus uh, LeBron's age period, there the NBA produced more Hall of Famers than than LeBron's has, and LeBron's now what pushing 40. Yep. That so that. That is also an interesting point that there is still the so you can't say the quality was better. That's why after reading this, I refer to the refing was different. The refing is much very tighter different. today, very yeah. tight today. That that's why, like when people say, Oh, they're softer crybabies. No, nah, man, you got you can't use that as an argument because, like I said, magic, arguably the best passer in the history of the league, would stop the bloody game and look at the ref. Like, how come I how come I'm not getting a foul? And it's like, funny you here, 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 before you go, CJ. I just want to respond to that. Let me just say yeah. one thing real quick. And the the difference, like you talk about Jordan's time, but like here, think about it. Think about the years that Jordan played with the Wizards that we don't even count. Those years, LeBron is still the best player in the league. So think about that. The years that Jordan spent at the Wizards, when LeBron was there, he was still the number one player in the league. So was After LeBron Aaron. was LeBron the best player in the league, or was Kobe the best player in the league when when uh, Michael Jordan was with the Wizards? Yeah, I was about to say that as well. Because that one, I will argue, because I, Kobe I had multiple rings at that point when when Jordan was playing with the Wizards for that and he was winning and full of games. Jordan had yeah. retired and. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just saying, no, like he makes a valid point by saying that no, when but we my, don't talk but, about Jordan, but when analogy, Jordan played with the Wizards, but I would argue that Kobe was the best player in the game at that point. My analogy wasn't when Jordan was like Jordan with the Wizards and LeBron at the same time. My analogy is the age of Jordan in the longevity of his career at the end, playing for the Wizards was not anywhere near the best player in the world. Whereas LeBron, at that same point in his Marcus, career, come on, he come on, is man. the best player in the world well, at that point. His in time. idea of working out for he came so, back from so that point in time when Jordan had fallen off, and we don't even <laughs> count that part of his career anymore. 
LeBron is still up dude, there doing it. Come on, so dude. That's, 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 that's not a valid argument. argument. It's an extremely valid argument. That's not a yeah, valid argument. Is, is yeah, it not? Okay, is, if it's not valid, is it true? Is it's it true? not valid because, yeah, it's also true because that he was retired was, was, was still yeah. athletic all through those uh, through 35 through 36, 37, 38. Michael Jordan was just a regular citizen at that point. He wasn't a professional athlete. <laughs> That's a nice cop out. <laughs> no, it's not a cop out. That's not a cop out. Man, out. He's not. He's not. He wasn't a professional athlete. His idea of working you, out was. Are you saying you can't? You can't compare. Are you saying you can't compare? Are you saying you can't compare eras? Is that what you're saying? You can't compare those eras. I never said eras. eras. <laughs> I never said eras. I said refing. That's a terrible. That's a terrible cop out. It really is. Oh, okay. And you also have to. Oh, Jordan was just a. He was just a regular citizen when he was playing with the Wizards. Come on. No, no. <laughs> I said the years before he went to the Wizards. How long was he retired after the Bulls till he came, till he moved back into the Wizards with three years. Was, with ownership? Three years of not three doing years. anything. At least just playing baseball the first time around. What was he doing for those three years? Eating tacos? We don't know that. We, I'm, I'm sure he was golf. still playing basketball in all of those. Not years. a competitive I think, level. I think that argument is irrelevant. The fact that wasn't a professional athlete. Your, your argument is that it's not fair because LeBron kept playing all of those years. And no, I'm not Michael saying Jordan, I'm saying it's and not Michael fair Jordan to compare Jordan break. That, if you want to compare the two, compare the two at that certain age and say that LeBron was a better player at say 40 than what Jordan was at 40. Okay, LeBron's played all the way through his 30s. Michael Jordan did not. Michael Jordan so retired. You're saying, so you're saying wasn't LeBron a professional stayed, athlete. So LeBron stayed at the top for a much longer time. I, I agree. That's not what I'm saying at all. <laughs> yeah, you're using you using your argument. <laughs> no, I agree though. though. He did. He stayed at the top a lot longer. And, and, and by the way, uh, are those left. years are those years that LeBron was 23 to 28? Who dominated the NBA during those years? Okay. The Celtics. And the L and the Lakers. No one cares. The Jordan versus LeBron did is so, and, it's never, and I, I never ruled that I never Le make LeBron an quite a few about times. This. My only point was that you can't compare eras. I don't want to argue LeBron versus Jordan. Rob. So I asked asked Gemini here to compare the stats from a 38 year old Michael Jordan and 38 year old LeBron James. Okay. Not so. <laughs> what we have here, games played, LeBron James played more games, 57 to 49. Michael Jordan played 36.9 minutes per game versus LeBron's 34. Points per hated, game. Hated conversation. Points per game, Michael Sorry. Jordan 24.8, LeBron James 27.5. Rebounds per game, Michael Jordan 6.1, LeBron James 8.1. Assists per game, Jordan 5.2, LeBron 7.2. Steals per game, Jordan 1.5, LeBron 1.1. Blocks per game, Michael Jordan and LeBron James, both of them about half a block per game. Field goal percentage, 41.8% for Jordan, 518 for LeBron. Three points. Three, very well. yeah. three points, Michael Jordan was shooting 0.2 percent the three points of course three points were not really a big part of the game back then the way they are today they were when he they were when he was with the wizards though they, so, they not not to the same too. degree but not but still but, but i'm not but i'm supporting your argument here nonetheless 37.5 percent compared to 0.2 percent from the three-point line uh for lebron at the age of 38 so from a pure if we only looked at it at the age and the stats that they churned out not comparing anything else, eras, how long they're away, or anything else. Marcus is a is one hundred percent on point with his statement. But that's unfair because LeBron or because Jordan was just a regular citizen. So that's yeah, no, unfair. because he so came now, back now do age thirty five and thirty six because Jordan didn't. No, I don't want to argue this anymore. I don't even care. And the, I don't even and care because people only think because nobody changes their mind in these debates, right? It's always a waste of time. No one changes. No, that, their no, mind. no, no. That that no, that's not true. That, that's it that's, is very when it comes to LeBron versus Jordan, true. no one ever changes their mind. That's not true. It's that's super not so, true. if I were to look I'm at I'm not going to change my mind on that either, Chris. If you if you look at everything, yeah, now, see, you're just shooting yourself in the foot at 35. <laughs> the difference, the difference is uh, again, actually, not as bad as you're going to think it is. Uh, so the points per game, uh, 
Michael Jordan does have 28.7 compared to LeBron's 25.3. Both, I'd take either player on my team. Up that kind of more points. of a score. Right. Rebounds per game, uh, Jordan was 5.9, LeBron 7.8. Assists per game, Jordan 3.5, LeBron 10.2 per game. There's Steel, where LeBron is. On steals, steals per game, 1.7 Jordan to one per LeBron. Blocks per game, they each had a half a block per game. Uh, field goal percentage, Jordan 46.7%, LeBron 45.3%. Three-point shooting, Jordan at 23.9, LeBron at 34.4. Jordan so, was that low? That's surprising, actually. So the one, the big, one takeaway from this is I'm going to argue now that LeBron has gotten much better defensively in his 30s. Like, for people that always argue, like what I mentioned earlier to Marcus, is that a hey, Jordan won a couple defend defensive player of the year. Not a couple. Well, nine. Okay, oh, nine. Wow. But here's the thing, though. Like what Rob just said, LeBron's gotten much better <laughs> on both sides of the court. <laughs> no, nine defensive <laughs> players of the year. There's a difference. And when you're comparing the, the rebounds, Six nine or six eight versus six four, six three. Yeah, they're very. They become statistical washes, really. Uh, negligible. Yeah, and, and that's oh, a, so. Now back to age. There's one last one I'll do. Age thirty. Okay, just again to to kind of put this in scope of what people keep this in mind. So in that year, uh, at the age of thirty, Jordan scored thirty-one points per game. LeBron twenty-five point three. Don't go there, John. <laughs> Re rebound rebounds 6.9 to 6 assists per game Jordan 5.9 LeBron 7.4 so we're establishing throughout time here it looks like LeBron is much less selfish with the ball no I wouldn't say, say I wouldn't well, say that he's Jordan, doing more assists Let's yeah, just Jordan, is, Jordan was yeah. the scorer that's what he was steals, yeah, he again, from forward. a steals that's perspective why. Jordan stands at 2.3 steals per game versus 1.6 Blocks per game again, they're oh, they're both up higher at 0.7, but I mean it's <laughs> so they've statistically from a blocking standpoint they've been consistent throughout their entire lives equally. Uh, field goal percentage: Jordan 50.4, Jordan 48.8. Three point shots: three 35.1 for Jordan, 35.4 for LeBron. So. When you look at them at age by age, and if you don't look at anything beyond just the pure stats, uh, there's arguments at any given point. One's better at one part, one percent, but they're both statistically at the top, right there. It would be very, would have been very interesting if you could have gotten them both in their prime on against each other. It would have been really, really interesting because they're both phenomenal players when you look at them. From at an equal equal footing standpoint, oh, God. <laughs> here's a great stat we could yeah. look at: How many games of Game Seven did LeBron win in yeah, the finals? Again, oh, I'm not on, I wasn't getting into any that's, that's of those. Like, that's not fair. That's like saying, There's "Okay, the let's compare." I'm using more college careers. Like that, 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 I'm using more than. Hey, Beckerman it says not, it, it's not Jordan's fault that LeBron never made it. To, uh, that he never made it to Game Seven. I, I'm just saying. No, it's fine. Dude. I'm Jordan's using market the logic. You're, you're you're right. Jordan's the best, but uh, Beckerman uh, mentions nothing divides men of different generations more than this question, and it's true. Unfortunately for me, is like I disagree with my generation because, and I understand it. Like I said, when I watched the Last Dance, I had goosebumps. I cried. I get why we're so attached to that Jordan run. It was amazing, and LeBron's never reached anything near what that was. He's Listen, I could take the argument by Kareem like Abdul-Jabbar could arguably be called the best player ever. Or Will Chamberlain could be because it's sort of the the best player ever. I could I could look at that argument. I could also they look at argument <laughs> that LeBron that LeBron could have that argument. However, there's one thing that the, all those players that we just mentioned didn't have the mindset that Jordan had. Game four, the Who intangibles you, you just can't measure it. <laughs> no, you can measure it actually. Put the ball. He's got. In he's the, got those intangibles. Yeah, he's got that fire. There's no attack. All right, take game four point score. No, I mean, this. Like, we've had this. 
we've had this argument a million times. Like I, these arguments, yeah, there is a statistic a on that. Times. Like I don't even give a fuck. Like I don't want to talk about this anymore. I will. Like, I, I will. Nobody I will, changes their mind. It's it's like it's fine. So I you're so using arguments that CJ, benefit you. CJ, no I shit. Added, I added Kareem at age thirty to the same matrix. He does not well his points <laughs> well his points per game are comparable to LeBron. When you get to everything else, right LeBron dude. and jo LeBron and Jordan stand out beyond Riker Kareem. is the answer. Not really. Oh, oh, sure although not. although Kareem hmm. shot from the field I really like that at question fifty seven percent. Let let's you argue why fuck, House of Slaughter is better than I don't know why Boston we gave up this guy. Because oh, people, sorry. Because people thought it looked weird. There's All one right. more player I've mentioned. I forgot to mention as far as a dominating <laughs> presence, Shaquille O'Neal. He's the most dominant player ever that I've ever he, watched. Play. He is by far. If it wasn't for his free throw problem, he was. If it wasn't code. for that, yeah. I don't think there would be any argument. He'd be the I, number one player of all time. It's yeah, true. I think if it's he could make true. even 10 20 percent more than what he made, and he, he could play have, now. He would dominate now. You know, he that he's the well, best. He's got what, shape. Was, what was more like of a disaster, Shaq with that. the Celtics or Jordan with the Wizards? I would that take Jordan mean. with the Wizards. I what was a, more of a disaster? What was more of a yeah, disaster? Yeah, that was more of a disaster. The, 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 Shaq, Shaq well, the last the time we, we saw real Shaq was in Miami. Okay. That was real Shaq. Kirk is not because like John. John I'll fight you about that, John. Kirk is not the right answer. I'll fucking fight you over that. But <laughs> and, and I will tell you one more thing: the most lethal player ever to step in the uh, in the NBA was freaking Larry Bird. Ellen Iverson. Scariest. I was gonna say AI. Yeah. Ellen Ellen Iverson. Yeah, he wasn't consistent enough on the scoring though. He didn't Remember, have a time to back him up. Larry before. Bird will tell you he's gonna score, and he scored. That's what kind of asshole he was. Tony Stark is the clear answer. Don't talk about Natasha like that. She never had a VD. She's clean. <laughs> Daredevil got a lot, got around too. Um, hey, hey, Stark, I want to argue why House of Slaughter has been better than Something's Killing the Children over the last twenty issues. AI twenty issues. Only I mean. you two are going to be able to talk about that. I don't honestly, know I idea. don't. Yeah, honestly, I'm behind. I'm a little behind. I'm like on 18 or something, so I'm okay. still working on it. I stopped. But I would, I would definitely disagree with that, though. I don't give a like. I don't hate it, but I don't give a fuck about Jace. To tell you the truth, I don't give a single fuck about. Have it. you read anything? Have you read that anything that about Bait? I, I Bait is all right, but he doesn't really make sense either. You know. Like it doesn't make sense. I just want to want to say a real quick shout out to AI for being able to bring us these kinds of stats when I was able to quickly be able to sit there and say, Let's compare go, these AI. compare these players at this age, bring up their stats, <laughs> and then just add Kareem to the mix. Okay, just, yeah, Allen Iverson's on, the best. On, he, he does a great job at that. Better pound for it. pound, pound for pound, Allen Iverson might have been the most exciting player to watch. Vince That's the best, Carter. but the Vince most Carter. exciting. He was Vince heavier. Carter. Did did anybody here actually pound say, pound. say Jordan in the game? Just just for arguments, just just curious. I never watched. Yeah, I've, seen, I've seen Jordan yeah, in, 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 in the Madison Square Garden. Just once. I seen it. I seen freaking Jordan torch us at the Garden time over time again. Um, I was not I happy. If you guys can remember the year that the the uh, the Bill the Bulls won seventy three games. They came to Toronto when the uh, Toronto just drafted Damon Stoudemire, and they were still playing actually in the dome. And the Raptors shocked the world and beat them. I was were there. They, were the Raptors or the Montreal that beat them? I thought Montreal shocked them. Montreal has no. never had a basketball. Game. No yeah, Montreal. what are you talking about, Montreal? Toronto, Toronto, Toronto and Vancouver. Vancouver. No, I'm thinking of another oh. shitty team. Vancouver uh, was the Toronto other one. Might yeah. have been one of them. Yeah, but Toronto yeah. upset them and beat them that year. And in fact, I can remember watching a play where Damon Stoudemire actually threw the ball between Jordan's legs. And that ball. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Dragula, as far as Ali versus Tyson or Sonny Liston versus Tyson, I'm going to give you the same answer as before. You can't compare errors. Mike Tyson would knock both of them the fuck out. Was it Camby in that team too? Camby yeah. was yeah. there. Oh, Marcus yeah. Camby. Yeah. Yeah, Camby was there for four years before he went to uh, the Knicks. Dude, 
Well, yeah, all right. You just you mentioned Tyson. Ty, Tyson's another one that people love to have the argument. Well, who was the greatest of all time? I'll tell you this: Tyson was one of the scariest human beings to walk into the ring with. I think, I think everybody that walked with a fight, it was all mental. It scared the shit out of people before they even belly even rang. I think there's been a, a, the biggest struggle that people have with Mike Tyson is Mike Tyson wasn't really respected the same way that a lot of other boxers from different generations he was were. feared. Only now is he now getting respect. But then he like he had the rape allegations in the prison time and all that stuff and stuff so outside of the ring. Like, oh, yeah, the holy the holy field stuff too. Like it's only now I feel like he's respected. Whereas he like that that general respect where people would just argue, oh yeah, he's better than Ali I'm or sorry, Ali is better than that, him. So, yeah, so Ali Ali him. Prior to his Ali argument, to beat him. Yeah. It, it, prior to the original imprisonment, he was very well respected. The guy had his own freaking video game. Yeah, people loved him. They, they he was on top of everything at that point. Here and is they, and they stripped the, him down because they dropped him and, and punch out continued. Here is yeah. the uh AI's opinion. If you care, <laughs> uh, this is a classic hypothetical matchup between two heavyweight boxing legends in their prime. As I said, at 24 years of age, take each boxer at 24 years of age. Um, Mike Tyson's strengths are devastating punching power, arguably the hardest puncher in heavyweight history, incredible speed and agility, nicknamed Iron Mike for his power and speed combination an aggressive fighting style known for overwhelming opponents early. His weaknesses would be that his shorter reach, he might struggle to land clean shots against the taller opponent. His limited stamina, he fought best in short bursts and could struggle in longer fights. And he was susceptible to counterpunching. His aggressive style could lead him open to other punches. Muhammad Ali's superior footwork and movement known for his rope-a-dope style using movements to tire his opponents. His faster hand speed could potentially out-jab Tyson and land more punches, and he had an excellent chin that could withstand powerful punches. His weakness, less raw power, not known for a one-punch knockouts like Tyson. Uh, his defense could be susceptible to aggression. If Tyson got inside, Ali could struggle. Uh, stamina could be could decline in later rounds. While good, it's not on par with Tyson's early bursts. Prediction. This is a close fight on paper, and here's how it would probably play out. Early rounds, Tyson might land some hard shots due to his aggressive aggression and speed. Mid-rounds, Ali could use his footwork and jab to frustrate Tyson and tire him out. Later rounds, the fight goes the distance. Ali's superior stamina could be the advantage. Who wins? Well, it's a tough call. Many experts lean towards Muhammad Ali based on his footwork, stamina, and ability to avoid Tyson's power punches. However, a well-placed early shot from Tyson could end the fight quickly. Ultimately, it depends on how well each boxer executes their strategy and how they handle the fight's pace. Well, they failed to mention any ear biting. You know, it this, was, to, this was uh, at age 24. Seven, I, round didn't, seven, I hadn't done that yet. My money on well, he hasn't blossomed into the ear biting yet. Because like round seven, right now, he'll take a ear off. He'd be frustrated. <laughs> If it, went more than, if it went more than three, Tyson, I don't think, would have a chance. But I don't see no, it going more than three. Well, well that's basically what they're saying. Short, rabbit short fight, you know, it, could, it could happen. Tyson could, Tyson could end it early, fast. But if it goes longer, it's probably, especially at that time in their, their careers, Tyson wasn't, wasn't going that many long rounds, whereas Muhammad was close to it. Again, it's one of those things. It's hypothetical. We don't know that Tyson but, couldn't go long. Right. We it's all hypothetical. He had displayed he that he to. didn't have a tank. He exactly. Have yeah. But, you know, that's just. I think he had a tank. I think, I think that's a well-reasoned, though, uh, argument that the AI yeah. came up with. Like people Personally, get caught up in the Joe Frazier, fight too much. Joe Frazier or George Foreman, actually, in his prime, might have had a better chance against uh, Tyson than Ali would. As far as just being able to go back and forth on the punching in the whole nine, uh, uh, George Foreman is very underrated. Mm -hmm. He's a he was a scary heavyweight uh, champion, scary strong. And the reason he lost to Ali was because he Ali was smarter than George, George Foreman. He outsmarted him. That, that that was the big difference. Morgs, can you highlight John's second last comment about Spielberg there? This is interesting because Spielberg hasn't made an action movie in a very, very long time. And Nolan hasn't really made a pure drama movie 
in a very, very long time. So I would say close encounters of the third kind. I was going to say AT. <laughs> <laughs> How about even Indiana name. Jones with a whole new cast? Vampire for sure. I think Nolan could do that. Whole new cast, whole new story, whole new group of people. Start it over, reboot it completely. I think that would be great. Indiana Jones is the kind of franchise that should continue. <clears throat> wow, dude. James Bond it. Guess I'm the only one. <laughs> I, I'm the only one that wants Indiana Jones to have more stories. Well, it's only because it's based on the last two. I'm not talking about that shit. I didn't mind the last one, to be honest. I don't know what. I, I, I did. I finally I, watched the last one. It was okay. It was, I could yeah, see the premise. I, mean, I did that mind first it. Half hour, that first half hour of the last one gave me such freaking nostalgia. Like I, I felt like sentimental watching it. Like I felt like I was watching one of the original I Indiana like Jones. Watching X Men ninety seven issue episode five. There you go. I, think, I, think I, I felt like it was such like nostalgia watching that sequence, and then it went, yeah. But it was not as horrible as Crystal Skull. I think Crystal Skull was the worst movie ever made by uh, for Indiana. All right. So if John's comics with kids were to get into a boxing match with Beckerman. <laughs> Well, I think He's Beckerman a... has bigger hands than him. He could smack the shit out of him. Yeah, but how? But how tall is John? Lady, he did say he's got, that. Lady. He's got reach. But there's a comic book community for the boxing matches, bro. Let's, let's <laughs> with 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 those big oversized gloves, you gotta get like the the fifty ounce gloves or something like that. <laughs> yeah, the gigantic, you know, those gigantic. <laughs> yeah, like those. Those sumo suits and everyone just kind yeah, of almost with the head I head think Beckerman would win. It'd be hard to knock him off his feet, and he's got big hands too. John is six two. Come on, yeah. so what? Yeah, he doesn't have that reach. John's holding much heavier down. than him. Yeah, I said yeah, Mike's not six two. <laughs> you, you ever try to push a fat guy down? It's hard to do that. It, 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 freaking John's a twin. Hey, now, no, no body shaming here. Come on, I'm not body shaming. <laughs> Just talking physics. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I brought it up. The bigger yeah, they are, the harder they pull. I was just joking because John because John said we were done talking about sports. Well, John's a twig. I think Hi, John, how are you? John missed the whole thing where we answered his question about Spielberg work. Yeah. You're all no. done now? You jumped up to say hi, now you're gonna run away. <laughs> <laughs> I already fed you. Can, can confirm. <laughs> how how tall how tall is Beckerman, Marcus? He's five, like, he's like four six. He's like four six. He's, not, six. Six. he's not. He's not five he's not nine. nine. No, he's, he's not quite, tall. The, yeah, he's short. He might be. Five. He's probably like five five or something. Something like that. He's yeah. not five five. No, maybe no, five, he, he, he could be the body. He could body. He could do the body. Nah, body. he's not a tall dude. He he's not a tall dude. He's like under average height. I'm, I'm he's boxing, not under average. I, 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 I bet he's five. I bet he's five nine. No, he's not. Five, nine. He's five, yeah, five, there we go. Yeah. Try, to the the kid out, Try to help the kid out. <laughs> well, he's a little taller than the one. That's so, he's that's five so nine short. when he's standing on 1980s yellow pages. <laughs> <laughs> what a cute little dude. Chris is a tall fucking dude. I didn't expect you to be that fucking tall. I, 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 I what, are you, what are you eating over there? I told you guys I was tall. My, t my father was taller than me. Yeah, but usually My people that say they're tall you usually lie. You, you, you're actually tall. What'd you say, Marcus? So my dad was 6'5". I always thought I was going to be 6'5 growing yeah. up. Yeah, my dad was, was, was 6'4". My, my, my mom is 5'2", and my dad is 5'8", and I'm 6 foot. Are you, You're 6 even? Yeah, I'm 6 even. How tall so are you? About 183 centimeters? <laughs> 183 centimeters or something yeah. like that? Is that what I said? Yeah, 183. Yeah. yeah. How tall are you, Marcus? I'm six foot. All right, you're a good height. I was supposed to be you? six foot. So. What about you, Rude? You look like five nine. Five nine. Oh, are you an average height? Six with boots. Right. <laughs> I know how tall Rob is. <laughs> I am taller than DJ. That's all I get. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. He is taller than DJ. 
I believe and the worm. Right. He's taller than the worm. And, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, Remy's, the worm Remy's wife. Small. Remy's wife is a shorter lady too. Yeah. Well, even even yeah. Beck Beck yeah. Beck's five 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 six. Yeah, Angel's shorter than Becker, man. Yeah. What are you six two, uh, Chris? No, no, I'm six one, and I got a dad bod, so that, that's... we're about the same height. You and I. Yeah, me, right? yeah. I yeah. think I think you're a little bit taller than me, maybe. But you got that hair up top to make you look taller. So mm. hair makes a difference. Oh, you got quite a bit of hair <laughs> on top of your head, too, you hippie. Yeah, <laughs> the sides. I'm sorry. So Rob doesn't like it. Dive that shit so off. I, I never let I never let mine get that long. I never Chris is it. sporting the Rodan of Road uh, Warrior do with the hair on the sides. Yeah, Road Animal Hawk. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's yeah, gonna Road Warrior. Beats. Road Warrior with uh, Mad Max, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, wrestling man we're talking wrestling it was called road warriors yeah that might be play the clip <laughs> <laughs> oh that was a fence grab like crazy well there you are then genetics i think help but i don't think they're the end all be all as far as yeah. height is concerned uh, yeah, well, I think in my case, mum mum said her her dad was like six three or six four. So I think that's that's where I somehow got it from. So uh, it's not a missed generation. You got to think the older generation were malnourished, so uh, you, you, you're going to be shorter than us. We should be taller than that, the next generations. Get out of here, John. Get out. Of here. I still I still don't understand <laughs> the fantasy sports ball what all thing. And and Mike, Mike, we're all very proud of you too, man. It's a great way for people to feel like they're connected to the games that are going on without having to gamble on them and or without necessarily having to have a good team in their neighborhood. What are you talking about? What kind of fantasy league you have without gambling? Everybody wants to gamble on the that's the thing that keeps it exciting. There's it's no not gambling. required. Not required, but that's what keeps it exciting. You're gonna yeah, win man. something. Everybody wants to win something. Bragging rights. Yeah, my then a cup of coffee will get you a cup of coffee. I enjoy fantasy football more than regular gambling because I, like I only just do it once a season. Then I have vested interest in all the games that's going. But on. there's a prize. There's a championship at the end. You get something. Yeah, but I'm just saying, yeah. like I'm only gambling once versus every yeah. damn Sunday. You're that's what I would have thought, too, John. You're not. You're not. You're not, you're not competing for everybody to say, I, "Yeah, I'm, you're the winner." I'm being the LeBron versus the Jordan. I'm just, that's that's what I'm saying here. Don't don't go there again, Chris. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried. Good old debate. That's sports D and D. Let's be fair. Like like I hear a lot of people talk about these like fantasy league stuff and that. Like obviously, it, I don't know whether it ever took off over here or not. But it's just I wouldn't even know how to how to begin. But. Yeah. I haven't joined a fantasy league in years. You know why? Because you get some of these mutants from out of space that come into these leagues, and they're freaking so obsessed with the. They drive you nuts. They drive you nuts. I would get calls throughout the whole day. Hey, did you hear about this? Did you hear about this? This guy just got his ass broken. I don't like whatever they're telling you. They're giving you this. Like, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I I said it. Like, I'm like Rob Papil. I would set my team and forget it. And if I win, I win. If I didn't win, and that will frustrate people like hell because I won a couple times because and because I set my team and they win. If they don't win, they don't so how does how do you actually determine? Is there like some sort of computer generator or something that actually puts the two teams together, or how do you actually Dude, make? You have all these maniacs. So they're sitting and watching the health reports and all this stuff. Dude, I don't want to look at all this shit. So I mean, you just have a draft. Of all the event, uh, so you pick a sport and whatever league that you're going to do a fantasy league in, all the active and possible prospects that are going to be in that league for the season gets put into a large pot. And then each team uh, does a draft for each round, predetermined on who on what spot you're drafting in. And then uh, after a set amount of rounds, uh, you then field the team per game, or pardon me, per day or per week in a case of American football, uh, based on positional needs. So if it was basketball, you would have a guard, small guard, that kind of thing. You would have to put out that amount of players, and then you possibly have two, 
two spots where any position can go into. Then you have your bench players, usually for players that are not playing that night. And then over the span of yeah, over a span of seven days, you compete head to head in predetermined categories such as points, steals, blocks, that kind of thing. And whoever's teams that gets fielded per day has the most amount of points in those categories. Whoever owns those category amounts then wins that week. Uh, okay, so it's based on it's based it's on all, like real 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 life players. One hundred percent. There's there's sort of there's thing. no fate. The, the, the fantasy aspect is you're just a fantasy general manager, but you're but you're still using real statistics and real players in live games. Yeah, so I could pick like a Hornets player and a Bulls player and a Warriors yep. player and yep. a, and all that sort of stuff. And then yep. if if all my players basically have the best stats for thing, I win that game that week. Like you got it. Like, you uh, got as, it. I, I got the basic yeah. principle. Now. Think yeah. of it like this: as long as people are like okay, like they're playing like normal people and stuff like that, it, it's fun. Once you get the maniacs in the league, you're like, ah, oh, I can't do this anymore. It's gonna it would drive you nuts. It goes you anxiety. People would freaking call you up and tell you, how could you make that move? And then let's say you lose a week. Then you get everybody making fun of you for that week. Like, it's a fantasy thing. Like, what the hell? You know, like. That's just boys being boys. It's exciting. Yeah, that just sounds like men to me. <laughs> That's just a fake men. CJ, it's, the same, it's the same thing if I'm sitting at, at, at a table with you having a, having a drink. Listen, we're, we're going to talk we back and talk a, shit because we're, we're, we're sitting at a table and we were you. If you out drink me, then you can make fun of me. There you go, because we did Challenge some physical real activity. You forget what I did for a living and what country I come from. <laughs> then, then you can make fun of me Let's because it's off. a physical real you and June. <laughs> it's not fantasy drinking; it's real drinking. Hmm. I'll be your. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think. think I, 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 Pull up American beer versus Canadian beer. <laughs> Listen, you might have doing whiskey, American whiskey, whiskey bourbon whiskey, whiskey versus your Canadian whiskey. Yeah, pull up Newfie Screech and let me know what you think. Hey, Listen, I like that. What, you, you, you might have that in you, but I have the old Greek guy it's drinking in me too. So, okay. you know, the, 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 there's something to be said as far as uh, being able to handle stuff at the bar. June. No, you didn't really come drinking with us. You went home early every day. You went home July? early every day. You went home you early. Went to the I had, hotel cigar, I had multiple drinks. I was out there dancing. What were you doing? You know who shockingly could drink a lot? Who Jim. surprisingly <laughs> shocked, shocked me how much he could drink? The freaking worm. Oh, I, I, I never had a drink. The before. freaking worm could pre uh, drink people half his age under the table. It shocked the hell out of me. I was like, oh, look at this guy. He was stumbling all the way home, but he, he, and farting, stumbling and farting the whole play, way back. But he he could drink his ass off. I, You're I, never going to let him live that down, the amount of farts he was doing. It's not my fault. He was walking. He was literally every step. <laughs> I've Don't never seen that before. He was, oh, he's, oh, he's at the point in his life he just doesn't care, man. I, I hope to get there soon myself. Well, not only that, he was why, doing that's that. That's why Chris has blaming, his own room this year. <laughs> and he was blaming AR. Sure, I don't even care. For his farts. <laughs> I was yelling at, at aggressively <laughs> relaxed because I thought it was him farting. And he let me the whole walk scream at him for for not farting and stopping farting. Because he not stop farting. I'm like, dude, you, you, you're going to drive me crazy when you're farting. Hold your farts until the hotel. Like, what the hell? <laughs> they do me the room when we're all enclosed in a space. Come on. That's dumb. Look it. Something. Hmm. But I was gonna say, didn't no you share a room with him? That there. he heard oh, it. Rob and I. <coughs> are we talk, are you talking about CJ? Worm and CJ had a room last oh, week. Oh, they, he saved some more fumes when he got back to the room all night. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, did you ask him if he worked for the gas company? Holy shit! CJ is emotionally scarred about this. <laughs> you didn't have to read it in. It's it very dramatic. Multiple, multiple, multiple times. The guy that's the most cantankerous man on YouTube is, is emotionally scarred by an older guy having some gas. I'm, I'm human. I'm He's a just human. very dramatic. He does it for the vine. I breathe too. 
I like to breathe oxygen. I don't think that's the Greek in you. I think that's a New Yorker in you that's just venting right now like that. No, the whole story was the book oh, was you, um, venting. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, Rob slides one in the end. <laughs> well, B Bookworm was sliding him out the end. Yeah. Rob, go back me up. You were there the whole walk. He was there with the whole walk. He saw, and Matt was there too. <laughs> Fucking guy, let Matt, me... I don't know whether I'd believe anything Matt says after his previous performance. Dude, the, the funniest thing is he, he let me yell at AR the whole freaking walk for like 20 minutes. I was yelling at him the entire walk. I'm like, stop why farting. You yell at AR. AR is the nicest guy in the world. Yeah, why he, would you yell at he AR? Wasn't, he wasn't saying anything. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. He just kept, he kept saying, I'm sorry. And he wasn't even the one that farting. And, and at the end of the like world, he's like, nice dude. hey, AR why are you awesome. yelling at him? That's my gas. I'm like, what? You let you let him take the hit for you for the whole walk? So that was that was AR's whole comedy skit is he knew it was the worm and he just let it go the whole walk. Yeah, he just let me keep yelling at him the whole way. <laughs> Comedic genius. Fucking AR. <laughs> I don't yell at anybody. I have conversations. <laughs> aggressive, aggressive conversations featuring. No, it just I, I'm very passionate when I speak. That's all. We have conversation. January. I know really the real I'm CJ. Angry for some reason. He's just a big teddy bear. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Like people think I'm angry for some reason all the time. It's, I'm not angry. I'm just like fucking talking. You know, that's how I talk. Yeah, give you, give you. I'm a not angry. I'm just fucking talking. You're angry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I think after five hours, I'm going to call it for me. Yeah. Anyway. That's <laughs> Yeah, I need to go to bed. If we're talking about if we're talking about worms gas, I think we're, yeah, it's it's reached a, a, an all new low. I think that's that's it. Well, that's part of the conversation that I have on my streams. The way you're saying that <laughs> the serious conversation. You're, 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 Yours goes above and beyond that. Are you saying we cater to the lowest common denominator? What what are you saying? Like <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh man, these, these, these are conversations people want to hear about. They want to hear about the community. Oh, tonight was brilliant. <laughs> All right, yeah, I think uh, I think I'm going to call it. Thank you, everybody who joined the panel. Thank you to everybody in the chat. I greatly, greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, let's find something Can, that congratulations to Chris on winning both of the giveaways. Yeah, that's all rigged. So I won this morning, so I can't complain. I think I won I think two weeks in a row. Kyle, yeah, two Kyle weeks in a row. I'm gonna get it. This is I'm going for my third hat. Oh, sorry, my second hat trick. I've done a hat trick before, so we'll try and go for a third one. I haven't. By the way, I haven't gotten you a uh, a quote Dark. yet because I have to actually. I had to. I'm waiting for some different boxes to arrive because none of the boxes that I have in stock uh, would accommodate more than one of those, and it was like. That's just silly. So I had to get some different boxes. No, ah, that's that's all good. Well, well I, I don't have any money at the moment anyway. So it's no, no, no. Again, it was it was not about getting money out of you to mm. ship them out of here. It was just, about just getting you the figure so you have in your mind what you have to eventually. Yeah, what I have to work towards. Yeah. Beautiful. Hey, none of that stuff. Oh, you're pulling out pornos. Now what, at the end, what does this say right here? I'm just, I'm just, you know, like, porno. Porno. just pay respect, man. It's just porno it's, anyway. It's just a comment. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Be safe. And we'll end with this. There are worse things out tonight than vampires. Like what? Like me.